All right. Jim fucking Miller. Here we go. <laughs> UFC 300, we've been talking about this forever, man. Yeah. To be here on Fight Week, just what does it feel like? Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, some of it's just a regular Fight Week um, so far. Um, but it's uh, another big card, right? I, I've, uh, since, since uh, the, like, the Apex and, the, and COVID and all that stuff, I've only fought outside the Apex once. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's awesome to be on another big card. Um, so yeah, like having a bunch of fans in town and and looking over at the T-Mobile and being like, okay, we're going to be in the, you know, in a, in a big arena, big crowd. Um, you know, this this sport was made to be done in front of, you know, thousands of fans, and uh, there's just a different different energy as a fighter that I feel. There's there's positives to fighting, you know, here, small place, you know, in and out. But um, I I do really miss. Uh, the big crowds so it's 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 awesome to have another one of these and we've asked you about the records and all these things so many times but you've always said that what means more to you than any of that is the respect of your peers mm -hmm. and to be on a card like this with all these fighters um i'm sure backstage it's crazy when you're just looking around seeing the faces are you get feeling that respect from like others coming up to you and talking to you in those conversations um well i haven't bumped into anybody really yet uh you know since i've been here i got in late last night so uh yeah, but yeah like um you know, I, I've uh, honestly, I, I feel like I've received nothing but respect from my peers. You know, and 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 um, yeah, that that means a lot to me. You know, like because I, I, I come in here into fight week. I I, I step into the octagon, um, trying to carry myself to a set of standards that I that I feel uh, we all deserve. Um, you know, so it's it's not easy. It's not easy all the time, right? But um, yeah, like uh, I I respect everybody that I've I've stepped across, you know, the octagon from um, because I know the things that they go through. This is not an easy life. It is not an easy lifestyle. It is not it's not easy to do. Um, you know, a lot of sacrifices have to be made, um, and uh, like I I know that everybody else does the same thing that I do, and and uh, I think we're you know, we're, we're more peers than kind of gets made out to be because everybody loves the drama, you know, and the, and the bickering, right? It sells. So you look at, you look at all, you know, reality TV and, and, and all that stuff. That's what, that's what sells. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's something special, you know, to be here. It's something special to set your feet onto that canvas. Um, and, uh, I, I can't let go of that. So I, I try to, I try to show as, mo as much respect as I can to, uh, to everybody that does it. And just my last one, um, <clears throat> any chance this is your last one? I mean, I know nope. the, yeah, the storybook <laughs> is perfect, but if you win this fight too, you're, like, you're more highly ranked than you've been yeah. in years, so that's probably hard to consider walking away from. It, yeah, you know, like for me, the biggest thing is how camps go, right? Um, fight night is, there's always challenges. Um, you know, you, you spend a couple of days cutting weight, you go into a, an athletic event, you know, against somebody who's trying to take your head off. Uh, obviously, injuries can happen. Um, but for me, the 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 thing that's going to force me out, um, if it if it does, hopefully it doesn't, uh, and then I can I can uh, uh, fight until I want to leave. Right? Um, is is the ability to get through camp um, in shape and ready and healthy uh, to perform uh, on fight night? And uh, I feel like I've got things dialed in. I've got a great team. I've got a great coaches, um, and uh, I, I'm using my head. So, you know, I, I, I don't like making mistakes, and, and uh, yeah, like I, I know the secrets for me to, to get to the fight, and that's it, it's really it's really kind of simple at this point. Just stay healthy and be in shape, uh, not do anything stupid. Follow up for JFM. You know, this story of you 100, 200, 300 mm -hmm. has been basically following you since the moment you left the cage at the UFC 200. <laughs> is there kind of a part of you that's almost sad to think, oh, this is like the culmination of that trilogy in a way, that yeah. this story will be over? We won't be asking you about it every single time we see you. Um, I mean, yes and no. It means I, I, it means I hit a goal that, uh, that I, I put on myself, that, you know, and it was, a, it was challenging, right? Like, I, I think I started mentioning fighting on this card in 2020, maybe 2019, something like that, right? Um, and we're here, you know? And 
uh, uh, and I'm performing. And, and when, I, when I first started talking about it, it was like, okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll drag myself to that card, right? Like, because that's kind of what I was doing for, for UFC 200. Like, I, I, was, I was having a really rough time in 2015 and early 2016. And it was like, man, like, let's get through 196 and I'm going to, I'm going to tell every, you know, tell Joe Silva and tell everybody that I want to fight on UFC 200 and, and we're going to call it. Um, so that was kind of the idea is like, Hey, let's see if I could drag myself to 300 and where I was at when I first started talking about it was a different place than I am now. Um, I, I, I feel like I've got like four parts to this career at this point, you know, like a, a, the, the, the pre-Lyme career, Lyme disease, and then like coming out of Lyme and trying to figure out how to make this shit work as a, you know, uh, being over 35 as a lightweight, which is essentially like a, a, the kiss of death, um, you know, and, and now haven't, haven't figured it out, having the right people around me and, and, um, yeah, like it, it's uh, it's cool to be here, and and I'll I'll be happy when there's there's questions that don't involve 300. <laughs> Jim, right here. Um, obviously UFC 100, Mac Danzig, and then yep. 200, Gomi. Uh, now you're facing Bobby Green, and you know third re time you've been matched up. He's been fighting all fourth, fourth time. time, fourth, fourth time. time. Yeah, uh, been fighting almost as long as you, just not yep. in the UFC. So you also finally. Uh, happy to get past you know this Bobby Green chapter of your life too. What? <laughs> you know, uh, listen, I understand that that stuff happens, right? Like this, like I said, this is a this is a difficult thing that we do. Um, you know, when they first mentioned his name, I was like, uh, is this a is this a jinxed fight? You know, like is this is this uh, the Tony Khabib, right? Um, so it's not fight day yet. <laughs> so you know. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, we've had to deal with that in the past, but, uh, you know, like, listen, he, he's an, he's an awesome fighter. I've been watching him for years. I've, I've had the opportunity to train for him three times prior to this. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, it's like, it's, a uh, it's a guy that's been around for a while, a guy that I got a ton of respect for. And, and, um, yeah, like, uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to finally get to fight him. So given that you've had multiple uh, training camps for him specifically, has he evolved much or is he pretty much like, you know, the same fighter from that first booking that you had? Um, I think he's definitely evolved, you know. Um, I think he's like 37 or something like that too. And, you know, it, it, age sucks. <laughs> you know, getting, getting old in this game is not easy, um, especially like as a, as a lightweight, right? Being a, being a 40-year-old lightweight is like being a 50-year-old heavyweight. Um, you know, so he's, he's changed. Um, uh, I've changed as well, and and you know honestly, the the way that I approach this this stuff now is um, I focus even less on my opponent. You know, he does have an interesting style, interesting style of boxing, great head movement, um, but he's still he's still a man. You know, he's still a fighter. Um, if I, you know, if I hit him hard enough, he's going to go down. If I wrap my arms around his neck, he's, he's, he's going to go unconscious, you know? So, um, it's, uh, it's definitely a different fight than it could have been 10 years ago. Uh, we're both different fighters and, uh, you know, I, I know that I can't be the guy that I was 10 years ago. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've moved on from that. So, um, yeah, like, uh, it's, uh, it's a fun fight. It really is. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm excited for it. Jim, I see you repping the UFC 100 jacket. Absolutely. I'm sure you don't get a chance to bring that stuff out, but I imagine your collection <laughs> of memorabilia has got to be pretty special. But is that the kind of thing that you would never, ever part with? Uh, I, we'll, I don't know. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever worn it. You know, like I, I pulled it pulled it out of the closet, you know, and I uh, uh, had to, there's still a little dog hair on it. But um, yeah, like it's been sitting in the closet for 15 years. And I was like, you know what? This is the week to bring it out. And I'm sweating underneath this thing because it's hot as hell. Um, yeah, you know, and, and funny enough, uh, the fighters are getting a UFC 300 jacket. But uh, nobody else on the card has got this puppy, you know. Like, <laughs> it's got my name in it, too. Like, and it still fits wonderfully. Though. Oh, it's an XL. It's huge. I'm swimming in it. I don't know why they gave me an extra large. Jim, down here to your, down here to your right. I know you said that retirement is not something that's on your mind, mm. but given the historical nature of this event and how long you've been competing for, if you can, 
uh, if you can think about it, what has been the highlight of your career? Um, that's a really tough one. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if there's one moment to, to really hang it on, you know, um, it's, uh, there, there have been those, you know, those fights, those performances where it's like, yeah, you know, like, a, obviously that, that first Joe Lozon fight was, uh, a, an amazing fight to be a part of, right? That's, that's like, if I close my eyes, I can still hear the crowd in between rounds. Um, especially it's in between rounds because I get such bad, like tunnel vision that like, I don't really hear anything while we're fighting. Um, and then, you know, the, some, some of the performances and, um, they, they they were awesome and, and sharing, you know, being able to share events with, uh, getting my kids to come to a fight, um, which was, was not easy, you know, since I have four, um, and I didn't want to bring the older ones before, you know, that I brought the younger, especially at the, that time in my career where I, I didn't know how long I was going to be able to fight. So I wanted to make sure that if they all got to go to a fight, you know, like they had all had to go together. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I and I, honestly, I, I, I think it might be better. It might be better that way that, you know, like I've, I've had a really, a, a lot of really cool moments. Um, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, over the years it's, it's, it's tough to pick. So, um, we'll go with that. <laughs> hey, Jim, right here. Yep. Jim, uh, if in a few years the UFC were to call and say, Hey, we have, what role would you like at a UFC 400 if you're not fighting? Have you thought about what you would want? Uh, n not yet. No. Yeah. You know, I like, I'm still, I'm still sitting in the fun seat, you know, getting to do the cool stuff. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. Um, I don't know. Maybe rink our girl. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Marina over here. Uh, obviously, another big fight for you, facing another former world champion. Uh, what does kind of this matchup mean with Jessica Andraj for you? Mais uma tremenda luta para você, enfrentando uma ex-campeã. O que significa para você enfrentar a Jessica Andrade? Oh, enfrentar a Jessica para mim vai significar uma nova chance pelo cinturão. Então, acredito muito que vencendo ela eu vou pedir o cinturão e vai me dar essa oportunidade mais uma vez. Uh, I think that facing Jessica will mean to me another opportunity to, to have a shot at the title. I think that winning this fight means that I can ask for a shot at the title, and that's, what, that's the meaning that it has for me. Yeah, and the timing is obviously perfect with the championship fight on this card. Um, how do you see this whole thing playing out? How do you think you're w you win your fight? And then how do you think this championship bout goes between uh, Zhang and Yan? E o tempo dessa luta perfeito, você tem uma luta contra ela agora, no mesmo momento que a luta pelo cinturão está acontecendo. Como é que você vê isso na tua cabeça, você vencendo essa luta, quando é que isso aconteceria? Acredito que é o momento perfeito é, estar nesse grande card, lutar contra uma ex-campeã e tendo a chance de já, já descobrir a nova campeã do peso palha. Acredito que tudo está tudo indo da melhor maneira possível. E independente de quem ganha ali no, no cinturão, Eu vou chamar alguma garota chinesa. Um, I think it, it, the timing is perfect. You know, being in this great card, facing a former champion, actually getting to know by the end of the night who is the strawweight champion. It, 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 everything's working out great. And what I know is, regardless of what happens, I'm going to call out a Chinese fighter. Right here. Uh, kind of going off of that, obviously UFC 300 is a big milestone for the company, but you personally, was it important to be on this card considering the fact that the title is uh, later on in the event? 
É, obviamente, o UFC 300 é importantíssimo para a organização, mas para você, importante estar nesse card justamente porque o título está sendo disputado é, mais para frente no mesmo evento? Também. Também é, é muito importante eu estar nesse card junto com a disputa de cinturão. Mas uh, acho que a minha maior alegria de estar nesse card é que eu fui uma das escolhidas e acredito que por merecimento de luta, sabe? De mostrar quem, sou, quem eu sou, a atleta diferenciada que eu sou dentro do octógrafo. Então acredito que por isso eu estou nesse evento e ali o cinturão é, é a cereja do bolo. Então está tudo perfeito. Um, I think yes, being on the card at the same time that the title fight is actually happening, it, it's, it's very important, but also to be in this historic event, I think is, is rewarding and I think is deserving. That's, that shows that the, the company looks at me on the merit of, you know, the fights that I put out, the, the, the output that I, that, I, that I do. So um, it's a pleasure to actually have this opportunity and also I think is the icing, the, the title fight is like the icing on the cake. And do you have a preference of which fighter you would like to challenge for the title? E alguma preferência de qual das duas lutadoras você gostaria de desafiar para o cinturão? Acredito que a Ian seria um nome melhor, porque eu já venci a Ian Shaunan, então eu daria chance a ela se ela se tornar campeã de uma revanche, mas independente, eu quero só a minha chance pelo título. I think Ian Shaunan would be the, the best option, uh, obviously because I faced her. I would gladly give her the chance of a, of a, of a rematch against me for the title. Uh, but obviously, any of them well, would be great to, to challenge. And last one for me. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between um, Alex and Jamal? E a minha última pergunta é, o pensamento gerais sobre o grande evento principal da noite entre Alex Boatin e Jamal Hill. Chama, né? Tem, acho que Alex Poitain tem tudo para vencer e, e pegar esse cinturão aí. Chama, right? Uh, I think Alex has everything uh, in his favor to win and, uh, and keep that title. Thank you. Uh, Marina over here. Uh, Marina, before your last fight, you had lost a couple of fights. I'm wondering, as an athlete, has it ever been difficult to keep up your confidence when things aren't always going as well in the cage with the results? É, antes da tua última vitória, você passou por duas derrotas e a pergunta é, é difícil para você, o quão difícil, como é que é para manter a concentração, para se manter é, indo para frente é, quando tem um reverso? É, tivemos um, um período ali meio turbulento, uh, uh, passamos por momentos difíceis ali, e então eu não consegui lutar como como eu sempre lutei. Então eu digo que, pô, a minha cabeça não estava naquela luta, mas como eu estava lá, né, forneci essas derrotas. Então conseguimos consertar tudo que estava errado. Então vocês puderam ver na minha última luta, na minha última vitória, mostrei quem eu sou de verdade, agressividade para buscar a vitória. Uh, I think that it is about the, the moment that you're in and I, and, and I, we were going through some difficulties back then and I don't feel that I, I was in that fight, obviously even though my body was in that fight. Um, I was basically providing, you know, uh, these, these wins and, and, and kind of these losses, but I think we fixed things. Um, we improved things. You saw who I am in the last fight that was, that was there, the aggressiveness was there and always looking for the win. There are several top fighters from Brazil in the strawweight division, yourself, Andrade, Lemos, Dern. What do you think it says about just the level of female talent coming out of Brazil that you have so many top contenders in your weight class? Muito talento nos palhas do Brasil. Você, a Jéssica, você tem a Mackenzie Dern, você tem a Amanda Lemos. Você, o que, que isso significa que tem tanto talento vindo do Brasil nessa divisão? Ah, acredito que as brasileiras viram a oportunidade de, de, de mudar a vida e, e se você consegue se doar ali tudo que você tem para se tornar melhor, você tem as chances. E é isso que está acontecendo. O Brasil está vendo essa oportunidade e está conseguindo roubar ali os melhores lugares na divisão. Um, I think that the Brazilians saw the opportunity to actually change their lives and, and if, you, if you put everything out there, if you, if you do the work and if you give your all, uh, you're able to accomplish things and I think that's why you see so many Brazilians and Brazil, Brazilians have seen and seized the opportunity to conquer this division. James, one last one. Yeah, sure. Marina over here. Yeah. Was there any hesitation taking this fight? I know you and uh, Jessica do have a bit of a friendship or at least there's a level of respect there as well. 
É, teve, você hesitou em algum momento em pegar essa luta, porque sabe se você tem um, um nível de amizade com ela, definitivamente respeito, é, ao, hesitou né, para aceitar isso? Respeito, mas uh, apenas trabalho. Apenas, uh, apenas trabalho eu e ela, não, não temos nenhuma outra relação, apenas relação de trabalho. E isso faz parte do game, né? se tu quer ser a melhor, você precisa lutar com, com todo mundo que estiver na sua frente. Um, respect, yes, um, but it, it's a working relationship. Um, that's that's what we have. The the level of relationship that we have is 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 uh, it's very professional, and I think that's part of the game. If you if you're gonna you have to if you want to succeed, you're gonna have to face everybody. Okay. Thank you, guys. Hey guys. Alexander, uh, yep. welcome back. It's been a long time just to be in a fight week on a card like this. What a way to return, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, almost two years not competing, but to be honest, it doesn't feel like. It feels like for me five, six months. But uh, yeah, what a comeback to have uh, on the biggest card uh, of the year. Or what? Why does it feel like it's been only five, six months? Oh, it feels great. I mean, uh, those two years just put oil in the fire, you know. It motivates me a lot and uh, to compete and to win on Saturday night and to show uh, the world or uh, to remind the UFC and the world that Alexander Rakic is uh, still here to claiming the title. And you were supposed to fight Jan in January, and you know, that didn't come together. Is this a, a better scenario for you against Yuri? I mean, of course, uh, Yuri is better ranked, and uh, I think uh, the people want to see this match uh, against Yuri. Me and Yuri had some back and forward beef on Twitter. So, and uh, he's from Europe. I am from Europe. He is living uh, not far away uh, where I live. So, uh, let's find out who the king of Europe is, and later on, who the king of the world is. Yeah, and speaking of the king of the world, I mean, how do you feel you fit into this division if you come back with a win? Title fight on this card, the champion has changed multiple times since you've been gone. Uh, what does a win here do for you in terms of where this division goes moving forward? Uh, it depends how the fight goes. If I uh, perform very well, like I used to do, uh, could be that uh, I will be next fighting for the title. Alex, right here. Uh, obviously, Yuri's a big name, UFC 300 is a milestone, but was it also important to be on this card given that, you know, the light heavyweight title is also the main event? 100%, you know, everybody is watching UFC 300. Also, though, they're uh, like soft MMA fans, they would watch UFC 300. So the whole world watching uh, UFC 300 and what a way to have a comeback and uh, to win on Saturday night and to ra remind and to prove, uh, prove people wrong who are doubting on me. You also mentioned you had a little Twitter beef with Yuri. Was any of that like legitimate or personal or was it just trying to get him to take the fight? I mean, he, take it, he, I mean, he took it personal uh, a couple of years ago, but I really don't care, you know, since uh, Jan canceled the fight in January, I immediately called out Yuri and asked for February. And he mentioned February, March. And then I said, let's go February. And then he said he could, he can go March. March, I couldn't. So Mick Maynard made the offer, okay, let's do it in UFC 300. And I was 100% in, you know. Was it difficult to start and stop your camp so much uh, ch and the change of opponent? Uh, not so much, you know. I'm, I'm a guy who loves to train. Uh, it's a lifestyle for me also, next to competing. And uh, I've been training all over the year. So it was not even hard.
And what type of Yuri are you expecting? Because obviously when he fought Glover, a lot of people think that's one of the best fights ever. And then his last fight against Alex was pretty quick. So I'm curious, what, what type of Yuri are you expecting on Saturday? I mean, I'm expecting a aggressive Yuri, unorthodox like he used to be. And uh, it's going to be a hard fight uh, for me also and for him as well. Because uh, he feels very good in chaos. And I'm... Uh, I'm a guy who can settle the chaos, and uh, that's going to be an amazing fight. Uh, yeah, we will see uh, how prepared he is for that fight, because I am. And last one for me. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal, and also the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, the main event against Alex and, and uh, Hill, uh, I just hope that Hill is 100% uh, recovered. So. I just hope that he don't take this fight on short, like, like on short notice to just be a, a part of UFC 300. Uh, if this is not, uh, we will have a like a stand-up battle, stand-up war, and may the best man win. You know, both are uh, very good knockout artists, and we're gonna, it's gonna be fireworks. What do you think of the the BMF fight between Justin? Oh man, this one is a is a banger. You know. Um, <laughs> You know, I like Max. I, lo I love to watch his fights. Uh, I love also Justin. You know, the, the fights are excited. Um, if I could make, if I can choose a winner, I would say Max probably. Yeah. Alex, over here. Um, you're on the prelims of this card. Did that surprise you a little bit? I think a lot of fans expected this fight to be on the pay per view. Yeah, we were supposed to be on the pay per view, but. Uh, I really don't care. If I need to fight on the parking with Yuri, I'm gonna fight in the parking. You know, it's a fight. You yeah. know, doesn't matter where. And uh, I think it's gonna be about 700 days since your last fight. I know it's been a while. It's been a long time. Uh, you know, you being off. Is there anything you're looking to show in the cage that maybe you've worked on over the last 700 days? And anything in particular uh, you, that you've sort of added to your arsenal? 100%. I mean, I've been working like the last two years uh, next to the reha uh, uh, rehabilitation. I worked really hard to come back. I worked on all skills what I have, like wrestling, grappling, and striking. And I see the difference. I'm now 32, I'm getting in my prime. And uh, the camp was amazing. I did many new things, good things. And uh, be surprised on Saturday night to see the best rocket you ever saw. And just last one for me, you talked a bit about training and adding some new things. Uh, did you do any cross training? And who are some of the training partners you got to work with this camp? Uh, I brought some uh, young, uh, hungry fighters uh, from uh, Europe, Serbia, Slovenia, Poland, uh, Croatia, uh, Germany. So I had many sparring partners. And uh, they try, all of them, they try to mimic uh, Yuri Prohaska. And uh, yeah, went really good. This, uh, this camp was uh, all about uh, sparring, so we sparred a lot. And air sparring for me was a shark tank. So every round, a new guy came in. Two more. One, two. Alex, I'm curious with the 700 days off, did you keep an eye on how the division was developing, or did you separate and take time just to recover? No, I, I saw every important fight in the top. 10, 15, you know, I've been getting my eyes on it and always communicate with my uh, team and coaches. And uh, man, this long layoff, like I said, it doesn't feel long, but, uh, you know, this just put oil into the fire, you know, this made me like so motivated, so hungry. Uh, and uh, this is what I needed, you know. I'm more calm. You know, I'm a more calm person. I became more calm, like the last, uh, comparing the last two years and now, and more confident. And a calm Alexander Rakic is a dangerous man. And last thing for me, you said this would be for who is the king of Europe. So had a bout with Yuri been something that you had seen possibly that you'd been looking forward to? 100%, you know. Uh, me and him are in the top five. We are almost the same age. Uh, uh, so this fight needs to be happened, you know? And the fans want to see it, especially the fans also from Europe, you know? 
to see who the king of Europe is, and then uh, we claim the world, or I claim the world, let's say. <laughs> Rakic, uh, just back here. I want to know, can you explain a little bit when you had said that uh, his Jiri is not a real samurai, and do you think that bothered him? Because it seemed to give the biggest reaction when he heard you had said that. <laughs> yeah, I, I said he's a fake samurai because, uh, you know, you cannot, be, you cannot become a samurai after just reading a book, you know, what he coach gave it to him, uh, and live this spirit, you know. If you are a samurai, you need to live this for a long time and not for the last two, three years. So that's why I said he's a samurai, a fake samurai. Thank you, guys. See you. Armin, obviously, uh, right here, huge fight for you. These are the type of fights you've been asking for for a long time. So to be here on a card like this, a name like Charles Oliveira, is this just kind of a, a dream come true? Yeah, it's a dream comes true and uh, so excited. And uh, to be in UFC 300 and to fight for the contender number one. Yeah, no doubt in your mind, no matter what happens in any of these other fights, if you win this the way you think you're going to, you're fighting Islam next? Yeah, definitely. Dana White said, this, who win this fight going to fight for the title. And I'm the next. And of course, you don't want to think beyond this. This is a very difficult fight with Charles, but there's this kind of Islam saying he wants to fight June 1st. Would that even be possible to ask you to just turn around in seven weeks? I don't know. I can answer this question Saturday. For sure. And uh, just your thoughts on Charles and kind of where he is at this point in his career. A lot of people have vocalized that they think, you know, he quits in fights and he folds and things like this. Do you, do you see him as that guy or do you think he's, you know, someone different now? No, how former champion can be like this. So he, he was a former champion. He defend titles and uh, the quicker guys can be a champion. So I don't think so. Like, I'm in right here. Uh, Charles uh, did an interview earlier this week. You know, he responded to some of the things you said about him. You know, his, he's obviously limited and he takes backs really well, but nothing really else. Maybe he's not hungry. And he, he just kind of like called it bullshit talk. Do you think you are getting under his skin before this fight? I mean, I got to talk about him, you know, because he doesn't talk about me. I got to talk about him. So I want to like to get people to watch this fight more and that's why I gotta say something about him. So it's nothing personal, you're just trying to... No, 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 I'm just trying to to get more fun to watch this fight. Um, and just two really quick ones for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Jamal and Alex and the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, I wanna say about BMF, I feel like Justin gonna knock him out. First time. And what about the uh, the main event between Alex and Jamal? Main event is uh, I don't know 50-50, but to be honest, I didn't watch their fights because they're not in my division. I just I just watched the couple highlights and uh, like 50-50. I don't know them very well. I'm in over here. You suffered your uh, second loss inside the company in June of 22. It was a very close fight, but now fast forward to April 2024, you're about to fight Oliver and potentially earn the title shot after Saturday night. So did anything change from that night to now? And if so, what changed? Uh, a lot of things changed. I'm getting better every day. I'm just 27 years old, you know, and like I'm learning every day new techniques and uh, uh, I got a lot of experience and I got three more fights after that or four more fights, I don't remember. But yeah, so I feel like now I got better and uh, 
my striking is getting better, my wrestling, grappling, conditional, you know, and uh, also English. Armin over here. Armin, right back here. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Um, we obviously saw that you were training at American Top Team for this camp. Dustin Poirier fought Charles Oliveira. Did he give you any sort of insight uh, on him as an opponent? Did you get to work with Dustin at all? No, I didn't work with uh, Dustin because uh, he had the fight before me. So, uh, But our coach is the same, you know, and uh, they already know what they got to do during the fight. And uh, what mistake did uh, Dustin? I shouldn't do the same, you know, and uh, we work a lot, a lot on it. And um, we watch all his fights and uh, uh, we did good job. So I feel like this Saturday, I'm going to show good performance. Um, we saw Grant Dawson in a photo with you. Who are some of your other training partners for this camp? Yeah, a lot of sparring partners. And uh, I don't want to like say one name because I have 10, 15 sparring partners. And uh, everybody hel helped me. And thank you so much, ATT. And uh, I know uh, Isaac Dalgarian uh, mentioned to me in an interview, he's Armenian as well, he mentioned about uh, getting to train with you at some point. Have, have you spoken to him at all? Obviously, he's a, a tough uh, a opponent in the featherweight division. Yeah, he's a good guy. And uh, we just t text, text to each other, but uh, I haven't seen him personal. Yeah, but if uh, he wants to come to ATT, of course, uh, now I'm trying to bring as much as Armenian fighters in ATT and to train to, to train together. And just last one for me. I know you like hockey. Uh, are you going to be going to the Golden Knights game on uh, Friday night? They're playing the Minnesota Wild. If they invite me, yes. Arman, over here. What sets you apart from other fighters in the division? How do you plan to leverage those skills on Saturday night? Say one more time, please. How how do you? What sets you apart from? division and what skills set are you going to show on Saturday night? I'm going to do my work, you know, what I was training so long, you know, tried to be well-rounded, tried to strike, wrestle, grappling, like, I want to be best on uh, every position and I feel like my skills, it, uh, my skills, that skills I have, I can strike, I can wrestle, I can grapple. So I'm going to uh, tell him what we're going to do during the fight. If Charles invites you to the ground, is that something you're going down on the ground with him? No problem. Armin Road over here. Uh, obviously on the card is your teammate Kayla Harrison. In Miami, you were asked that thing with the fans and it became a bit of an issue. She said you guys had talked about it. Could you just explain a little bit just from your point of view what was going on when you heard it and just everything that happened? No, what happened, we talked, we talked to each other after that and uh, she understood what I mean and uh, now we're good. Thank you. Arman, I know you've spent a lot of your training camp in Russia and you've been training under a three-time freestyle wrestling world champion. How much has that helped you level up your grappling and prepare you for such a high-level grappler like Charles Oliveira? Yeah, uh, in Russia, it's the best freestyle wrestling in the world and uh, train with them, it's, uh, it gives me, uh, you know, I think the hardest training is a freestyle wrestling because they train like a crazy three times a day and uh, uh, yeah, it, ge it gave me to wrestle very well and uh, to improve my condition, especially like resting condition. Погромче. Извиняюсь, продолжая тему России, самой большой точкой величия в легком дивизионе, если мы говорим и о медийной составляющей, и о спортивной, является Хабиб Нурмагомедов. Чувствуешь ли ты в себе силу, что ты можешь в этих компонентах его превзойти? Если да, то что именно для этого тебе нужно сделать? And for our English speaking colleagues, uh, the question was about uh, legacy that left in lightweight uh, division Habib Nurmagomedov and is Arman feel that he can uh, be even greater? If, if we are talking both of sport and media. Еще раз на русском вопрос можно? 
Если мы берем и спортивную составляющую, и медийную, то самое большое наследие в легком дивизионе оставил Хабиб. Чувствуешь ли ты, что ты можешь его превзойти? И если да, что тебе для этого нужно сделать? Ну, превзойти в этой жизни можно любого. Нужно сделать как, как минимум, как он, максимум, еще больше защитить титул. Раз, наверное, 6-7. И быть таким же достойным человеком, как он. И я думаю, что все получится. Но я не стремлюсь быть медийным, как он. Я хочу просто стать чемпионом и защитить пару раз этот титул. И просто доказать самому себе, что я могу быть чемпионом. Обоя. На английском надо? Should I say in English? А, так, что он там на английском сказал? Like I'm confused. А, I don't want to be a superstar, superstar like Habib. I just want to be a champion and defend a couple of times my belt and that's it. up guys Cody over here other side uh, obviously UFC 300 a pretty massive milestone for the promotion you're on the pay-per-view so I guess uh, what are the emotions now that fight week is finally here you know training camps behind you and now you just got the weight cut and then the fight left yeah uh, obviously super excited you know it's a special card I started this sport as a fan you know I know where I was when I watched 100 200 so uh, to be a part of 300 is, is special um, And camp's been good. It was a long camp. They called me before Christmas, so uh, it's been a while. But uh, yeah, it feels good coming down, and and it went quick actually. You know, sometimes camps can drag, but this one went pretty quick. Do you like getting that much notice for a very specific opponent? Like, because that was what four or five months ago. Yeah, it's like uh, 16 weeks. Um, I don't know. I feel like uh, all my fights in the UFC pretty much have been pretty short notice, so it was definitely different. And and trying to taper and make sure that I was not burning myself out super quick was was maybe the toughest part, but. I feel like we had it dialed in pretty well, and uh, yeah, it was nice to have some notice. I could I could do some different things, bring some different people in, so it was good. And when they presented you with Bo, you know, given your background and your wrestling background, was that a name that excited you, or is, are you just a guy that's like, whoever they give me, I'm, I'm down to fight? I mean, I'm definitely a guy that whoever they give me, I'm going to fight, but I, I like to match up with Bo. I feel like, I've said this before, I feel like catching him now is, is much better than catching him in two, three years when he has more time to kind of figure it out, right? He's very green. Uh, he has a lot of unknowns, and, and it's my job to kind of see if he can answer those uh, come Saturday. Kind of looking at his last few fights, do you think maybe his opponents lost before they even entered the octagon, given, you know, all the eyes on them and all the media they have to do and, you know, all the questions like, oh, how are you going to prepare for his wrestling, given that you also have a wrestling background, maybe you don't get that question as much? Um, I mean, I definitely still get that question, right? But it's... Um I don't know if they lost before they got in there, but I do feel like they were happy to be there, right? They were just happy to be there, and uh, I definitely don't have that mindset. Um, and I bring things to the table that his other opponents haven't. So, uh, yeah, I can definitely I kind of agree with that that sentiment. Have you had to bring in anyone specific to prepare for him, or like bringing an old college like or wrestling guys, so, you know, kind of mimic him? Uh, so I brought some some wrestlers in. Uh, Garrett Lindberger, he's a Sadiq Yusuf's wrestling coach. He's a brown belt in jiu jitsu, two time D2 national champ. I brought him for him in for a couple weeks, and then Nick Maximov, who was actually my UFC debut fight, uh, I brought him in for a few weeks. So I had some some good looks, some some strong wrestlers. But you know, at Factory X, we have a lot of solid big guys, so I, I had a good camp all the way through. And where were you for UFC 100 and 200? Uh, I was at my house hosting pay-per-view parties, right, with all my wrestling buddies. Uh, and the last one for me, uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event and the BMF fight? Uh, so the main event's pretty cool. You know, uh, Jamal Hill and I fought on a lot of regional shows together. We actually held the same regional belt, so I've, I've known him for a long time. And uh, to have two Michigan guys 
on the main card of, of UFC 300 is is pretty special. Um, BMF title, obviously, you know, both those guys are legends, and and I'm looking forward to it. I, I couldn't even tell you who I think is going to win because they both are so special. Hey, Cody, go over here. Uh, quick question. You, you said to him that uh, Bo's former opponents were happy to be there, and that's not your mindset. I'm just curious, what is your mindset if that's not it? Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm a different problem for, for Bo to figure out. And, you know, obviously when I say I'm not happy to be there, I'm happy to be here, right? UFC 300, huge card, great opportunity. But I'm not just happy to be here, right? I'm here to win. I feel like I can compete very well. I feel like uh, I've obviously had my ups and downs in the UFC. I've been a little inconsistent. So... Um, that's kind of why this fight's narrative is what it is. But when I put it all together, I'm a real problem for anybody. Cody over here. How's it going? What's up, brother? Uh, nothing much. Uh, obviously, um, you know, there's been a lot of sort of back and forth online. Is, is this personal at all for you going into the fight, some of the stuff that he said? Or is it just another fight for you? Uh, I mean, I always laugh when people say fighting's not personal, right? It's, it's personal. You're trying to knock me out in my underwear in front of my family. It's, it's got to be a little bit personal. Um, but no, I, I don't take it too much to heart. I feel like... He's a very confident guy. I feel like that's one of his superpowers is, is he's, his confidence is untouchable. Um, and so you don't know what you don't know. The guy's never been hit in the face. Uh, so it's, it's fun. Fighting's the best thing in the world when you're running through everybody, but it's a little different when you're the nail. And, and he doesn't even know how he'll react to that. And you've had to overcome a lot of adversity in your UFC career. I know it hasn't been that long. Like, how much will that pay dividends just in the sense that, you know, you've been in bad spots. You, you had, you know, a situation where you might not be back with the UFC. How much are you sort of feeding off that, being like, look, I'm still here and still uh, getting it done? Yeah, you know, I, I, one thing that I'm happy about this fight, I feel like it's the first fight in a while that I, I'm not fighting for my job, right? And, and that's a huge pressure that people don't really talk about. And so to kind of be able to fight without that pressure is huge. And then as my boy Dustin Jacoby always says, you got to go through it to get to it. And I've grown up in the hardest organization in the world. I've, I've never ducked fights. I've never said no to fights. In fact, I probably stepped up when I, when I shouldn't. Um, and so that's kind of a reflection of, of why my record is what it is and, and where I'm at. But I do think it pays huge dividends. You know, I've been the nail. I've been the hammer. And uh, I'm excited to show that on Saturday. Has there been any Bo fans in your DMs? I know this does <laughs> seem kind of, per you know, like there's a lot of excitement for this, obviously. And I'm sure you're getting a lot of people saying you're going to lose your big favorite. Like, how have you dealt with that sort of going into the fight? Yeah, I feel like a lot of Bo fans have been in my DMs saying I'm going to lose. And then even maybe some Cody Brundish fans have said I'm going to lose. So <laughs> it's all right. Uh, but yeah, I'm just excited, man. I feel like, uh, like I said, it was a great camp. I'm ready to put on a full performance. I still feel like I haven't put on a, a true performance that really shows my, my potential and, and what better a spot than UFC 300. And just last one for me, what's the vibe like in the gym right now? Brandon Royville getting that big win a few months ago. You got Jonathan Martinez now fighting Jose Aldo. Like there's a lot of opportunities at hand for the gym and I'm sure you're sort of feeling that going into this fight. Yeah, you know, Factory X is a special place. You know, I feel like sometimes a lot of these big gyms with a lot of UFC fighters are just buildings, and then you have your own separate team in there, and, and you figure it out. Factory X is in that way. You know, our culture is we're, we're a family. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of excitement for everybody, a lot of excitement uh, for my boys and my teammates. We're all pretty close, and, you know, they're all blowing me up this week telling me to get it started. So I'm excited for it. Cody. Cody. What's up, brother? Um, double girl dad. Um, how is Kingsley? Kingsley's good, man. She's uh, She just turned three, which... Seems crazy, you know, I feel like, uh, I don't know, I think it's corny, like people always say time flies, but when you have kids, it really flies, and, and so, yeah, she's three, my, my youngest will be one soon, so it's been great, though. Um, as of right now, you're the biggest underdog in UFC history. Um, I guess, does that give you motivation? Uh, I don't know if it gives me motivation. I think it's kind of funny. You know, I talked to some of my teammates, uh, like Rob Wilkinson. He's a PFL champion. I talked to Anthony Smith. I'm like, D you think if I got booked to fight you tomorrow, you would be a bigger favorite than Bo Nickel? They're like, probably not. So I think, you know, sometimes the odds, the odds are what they are, but sometimes I feel like it's just more a narrative of, of what people think. Um, because at the end of the day, Bo Nickel's never been hit. So for him to be that kind of favorite, it just seems insane to me. Uh, obviously, I'm a little biased, but seems seems pretty wild. I know people think he's like the second coming of Jesus Christ in MMA, but uh, I just don't see it. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Cool. Hey, Cody. What's up? Um, so this is a massive event, 300, <laughs> list of huge fighters, and you're opening the main card. What does that um, mean to you? I mean, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I know I caught a lot of flack for it. I think people forget that I just work here, right? I don't make any decisions. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to apologize for it. It wasn't up to me, and... Uh, just gives me a good, op better, even better opportunity to kind of make my mark. Cool, thank you. Yep. Cody, Bo has five first round finishes. There's not a lot to study. So in your preparation for this fight, what was the keys for focus on you to be your best? Because there's not too much to focus on Bo. Yeah, you know, Bo has a lot of first round finishes. So do I. I feel like I have, I think I have more first round finishes than his 
previous opponents have combined wins in the UFC. Uh, so yeah, it was just me focusing on myself, really. You know, as long as I show up and, and do what I'm capable of, I don't really need to worry about what Bo's got. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. test. Cody right here. Uh, obviously a massive fight week for UFC 300, big milestone. You're accustomed to big cards, so I guess, uh, Bo, like, what are the emotions now? Like, you know, fight week's done, fight camp's done, just gotta cut weight and get in there and fight. Excited, I think that sums it up. The excitement, you know, all the hard work's been put in. We're here healthy, hungry, and, and motivated to go and perform, open up an amazing card in UFC 300, uh, and just grateful. Well, I was going to bring that up. Like, you know, Dana announced that you guys were kicking off the card like a while ago. Did you, were you aware of that before he even, you know, he said it on ESPN or whatever? And do you like kicking off this card? You know, this is a first for me, fighting the first on the card. Um, but, you know, we're making history. There's never been a matchup in the UFC that's two former world champions kicking off of a card. So grateful for the spotlight. Grateful for the opener of the amazing card, like I said, with such amazing athletes. And also to draw people in early, you know, they don't want to miss this fight. And you both called for this fight, and it's not always the, the UFC will book a fight that, you know, both guys want that far out. So when you called out Davidson and he called out you, were, was it just a matter of time before this was, you know, rebooked at Bantamweight? You know, I called him out. He doesn't want this fight. Um, so let's get that clear. It's a, it's a fight that's been in my mind for a while. You know, I was supposed to fight him nearly four years ago. Obviously, I got COVID really bad. I had to pull out the fight. And, and focus on getting healthy. And it's been, you know, 
an uphill grind to get back to this point. You know, but I stuck true to myself, believed in myself through the ups and the downs, the adversity, what life throws at you, and everything comes full circle. And uh, we're here, fight week, and uh, I'm more excited for this fight now than it was scheduled in the past. Is that just because of what he's been saying or where you are in your career or like what makes this more important? Because that original booking was supposed to be a title fight and now it's, you know, you're kicking off this card. You know, for me, it's, uh, it's a fight that I've, I've wanted for so long, you know, and to have those feelings that taken away from you from COVID, um, to be back to fighting for a world championship, um, you know, so, so those feelings still have motivated me and, and give me, you know, such drive to this camp and this call out and this visualization of my last fight to call him out. You know, he came up and had a successful debut win at Bantamweight. And uh, I feel good here. This is my weight. And I'm here to remind everybody that I'm the best in the world. And I'm sure people have asked you that, but you know, he's, you know, he's called you mentally fragile. He's called you this and that. Do you think he truly believes that or is he just trying to sell the fight? Yeah, truly, he's trying to sell the fight. And also, I've been there. I've been there where I had to talk, where I wasn't mentally uh, prepared to go on there. I'm always ready to fight, you know, physically. Mentally, it's, it's, it's the biggest thing, you know, that I feel like I've really honed my skills. I work with the UFC uh, sports therapist, Micah, and we've just been consistent since moving out here. You know, it's something that I never thought I needed to do. And some of, the, some of my hardest sessions were going there with him. You know, over training, over sparring, over the grind, constant grind. Um, it was always driving to those sessions, knowing that I had to, you know, open up about my thoughts, my feelings, and I've never been one to express those. But you know, he's helped out a lot tremendously. Um, you know, not in just my athletic career, performance-wise, but life as well. So be able to balance all that together, and and stay, you know, engaged in the moments and the times and so I feel like that is a huge um, thing that I've worked that's different you know nothing's different in my speed my power my vision you know um, it's my mental fortitude that's been what's keeping me here and keep me motivated and understanding this is what I w love to do and I think that's what's really relit the passion and the, and the, and the love for the sport so there's a time in my life when I was in my career that I was just kind of going through the motions you know fighting the fight you know I'm fighting because I want to fight. And that's, that's me being real and honest with myself, with everybody. Like, I'm so excited for this fight. This is a fight that I've called and wanted. Um, you know, going back to your question about Davison, I've been there where maybe he lacks a lot of confidence. Maybe he didn't prepare ready uh, like he needed to. So he's trying to get into the head game. And that's maybe his out. Hey, get in Cody's head. I'm going to win this fight. And that, that's just, if that's what he is going off of to be victorious on Saturday, he's going to have a long night ahead of him. Uh, and just last one for me, uh, two quick ones that unrelated to your fight. Can I get your thoughts on the main event and the BMF fight between Max and Justin? Main event, um, super excited for that. Jamal, you know, what a, a journey he's had to come back, you know, from being a world champion, finally being a world champion, to the injury, to, you know, I've seen him at the PI, you know, with his rehab, you know, the way that he's been just, you know, diving at it, making one to come back, and then they, you know, they call him for the Alex fight. And look at his career. I mean, he's, he's fought the who's who. He's a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal fighter. Uh, just that's going to be a, an awesome main event. Um, you know, and then the BMF. I mean, you got Max Holloway, who's a fan favorite. I'm a huge fan of Max. And Justin Gaethje is just, I think he's really hitting his peak in his career over his last few fights. You know, we spoke briefly on the things that he's done um, to help get him catapulted to where he's at now. And he's looked amazing in his last few outings. So that's going to be an amazing fight and very well deserved for the BMF title. Cody over here. Given that this fight was going to take place during the COVID time and now we're here four years later, what are some ways your approach towards Davison changed since then to now, if it did change at all? You know, I was so early on in the camp when I had to pull, pull out from the fight. So we were just starting to study Davison. You know, he was doing his thing at 25. You know, he was, you know, a very good champion, was having good performances um, there. So we were, we were prepared for, you know, the best, best Davison to date, you know. Um, it was good to see him fight at Bantamweight, you know, to get that read. We, we watched a lot of that fight, you know, and got a lot of information and data that we have used all camp and going to use that in our favor, you know, come Saturday night. 
And your last six fights in the UFC have all been in Vegas between the T-Mobile and here at the Apex. Now that the seventh is going to be here for 300, such a historic card, how has it been fighting here in the fight capital of the world and even putting in work here like you have been at the PI and everything? You know, Las Vegas is an amazing place. Um, it's, it's growing so much. And to be able to fight here in the fight capital of the world is always great. You know, now I call this place home. I'm raising my son here. So it's great to fight in my backyard. You know, they pick me up from my house. You know, I see my son, I see my dogs before I go to battle. Go into the battle, you know, come home. And it, it's great to sleep in my own bed. So it's nice to always fight in Las Vegas and to live here as well. Cody over here. Um, obviously, Davison, a former champion at flyweight, fighting him at bantamweight. Um, you know, what are sort of the implications of a victory here? Because uh, with you being a former champion, that's got to count for something, taking out someone like Davison. Yeah, Davison's a former world champion at flyweight. He's came up, he's, what, ranked eighth in the division? I think rankings are a bunch of bullshit anyways, but he's ace, so he's, he's, in, the, he's in the rankings. You know, that'd be three fights in a row for me. I'm going to knock him out on Saturday. It puts me right back to title contention where I belong. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I know Uriah Faber, your good friend, is part of, I think, Davison's management at all. Have you spoken to him at all uh, just when this fight was announced at all? Because obviously you guys have a long uh, history. Yeah, you know, Davison's been out the Team Alpha Male and trained. Uh, we have a lot of Brazilians that's trained with him and, and coached him, actually, um, from Team Alpha Male. Actually, my training partner that I brought all camp, Alan Blasio, phenomenal. You guys keep hearing this name. He'll be in the UFC real soon. Um, trained with him. He's Brazilian as well. Gave me a good look uh, for Figueiredo. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, with, with Uriah, it's, I'm not too sure with what he's doing with the management, you know, company, but Uriah's my boy, and, uh, you know, we've talked, and we, we train when he comes out, and we always, you know, touch, uh, touch base, uh, uh, you know, throughout, you know, parts of our lives, you know. Moving away from Sacramento was really tough, you know, but I couldn't be far from my son. I miss my team. I miss my, my coaches, and, and, and Sacramento was a, a place that I went out there at 22 years old, 1-0 as a pro, and. I had a dream and, and Uriah opened his doors for me and helped me out a lot. So I'm very forever grateful for him and Team Alpha Male. I mean, I spent a decade of my life. I went from 1-0 to world champion in you know, less than two years with those guys. And, uh, you know, so I'll, Sacramento will forever be uh, a huge part of my life. But, you know, he's always going to be my friend. And, yeah, you know, he's, he's rooting for me and, you know, giving me tips and, you know, just excited for, the, excited for this opportunity. And just last one for me, uh, I'm sure you're excited to see Jose Aldo back in the division. That's a fight you've never had in your career. Is that kind of, you know, hitting your, hitting your radar when you heard that he was coming back of a potential matchup? Because we never got to see you two fight. Exactly. You know, Jose Aldo is one of the greatest, you know, fighters that ever graced the Octagon, WC, UFC. Um, it's funny because now I train with his good friend, longtime coach, Mateus Nakao is my striking coach. So, um, you know, I think that he would be a little, you know, unwavering of one us to fight. And, you know, I have so much respect for Jose Aldo and, and uh, you know, Novi Yanao team that uh, I'm just excited for him to be back. You know, it's an ex exciting fight for him to come back and uh, fight Jonathan Martinez in uh, his home country in Brazil. So I'm happy that Jose Aldo is back. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to my fight against Davidson Figueiredo on Saturday, and that's what I'm focused on. Cody over here. Cody, uh, getting becoming a champion is hard enough. Trying to become a champion after doing a major reset is even harder. Look at Connor, Max, Charles Oliveira. Getting to that championship is tough. Do you believe that we're in the midst of a winning streak that gets you to a title shot? You trying to say this is a comeback? Yes, sir. I think I've been here. You know, I just kind of been, you know. Stuck in my ways, had to learn, had to grow a lot. You know, you guys saw me at 23 years old, 25 year old world champion. This is my 20th professional fight, 15th professional, 15th UFC fight. So you guys watched me grow in this octagon, you know. And honestly, it was easy to become a world champion. That was easy. That was fast tracked, you know. You know, now climbing up this mountain again, it's been a little bit rougher. I found, you know, obstacles and adversity and, and setbacks, but I'm, I'm blazing this trail, which is a different trail along this mountain you know um, so I'm excited you know like I said I called for these these fights these are the fights that I want this is fights putting back in title contention this fight right here you know motivated me and has me driven to go out there and, and perform you know I definitely put the work in and I'm just excited that it's fight week I'm healthy you know I, I pray to God that Davidson has you know prepared well and he's ready for an action-packed fight on Saturday 
There is, there is a lot of hostility between you and the current Bantamweight champion over the years. Is that like a gigantic carrot at the end of the... Oh, that's, that's definitely. He's still the champion when it's my time to, to fight for the title again and regain the title, I should say. Then I'm, I'm happy with that fight because that's going to be a huge pay-per-view draw. No other Bantamweight in the division moves a needle like I do. You know, I just got to focus on winning and uh, everything else will fall into place. Thank you, guys. Hey, Kayla, welcome to the UFC. I mean, you've always wanted to come here and make a splash. I don't know if there could be a bigger splash than you can make at UFC 300. Now, fight week, media underway. How exactly are you feeling about this opportunity in front of you? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I feel great. I'm excited. Um, you know, I've always taken big risks in my career. Um, and this is the biggest. And, you know, UFC 300 versus Holly Holm. New weight class, new promotion, legend of the sport. I'm all in. I'm excited. You mentioned the weight class. I feel like probably everywhere you go this week, people are saying, how's your weight? How's your weight? How's your I weight? know. So how is your weight? Do I need to flex on all y'all? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, my weight's good. Everything's dialed in. I have a sup superb team behind me. Eric Pena, the UFC PI has been helping out. My chef and nutritionist Dara has been making ridiculously delicious meals. So I've been disciplined, I've been dedicated, and um, it's going to show. And we, we hear fighters sometimes say, oh, that's the battle before the battle, right? Cutting the mm -hmm. weight. For you, obviously, it, it is a new weight class. Do you almost feel like once you've got those scales, it's like just time to have fun at that point? Then it's fight night, you can put on the show and, and, and get the job done. I mean, I'm already having fun. You know, like this is the haze in the barn. The work is done. Um, I get to do this. This is a, a thing that I chose to do. Like, I'm not sitting behind a desk. I'm not, you know... I don't know, a nurse, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer. This is my job. I'm a fighter. This is what I chose to do, and I'm very blessed to do it. And um, even, even the shitty parts, you know, it's all a part of the journey, and it's all shaping me, molding me, and forming me into the best version of myself. So this is all fun for me. And for Holly Holm, what do we think of her as the, an opponent welcoming you to this new promotion? Yeah, I mean, I think she's... I... I don't say legend lightly, you know, I, I think that it takes a special kind of person to be 
a UFC champion to be um, in the top 10 for so long, to be, to stay relevant and to evolve as much as she's evolved. She has a super high fight IQ. She's got excellent footwork. We know that she has a striking background, but um, she's evolved into a very well, well-rounded mixed martial artist. And I think she's probably the toughest test in the division for me, so. Yeah, right here. Uh, obviously, there are fight fans that only watch the UFC. They don't really watch other promotions. So I'm curious, have, have you noticed that a lot of fans already knew who you were or you, have you had to kind of introduce yourself to fans or, or anything like that? I think it's a mixture of both. There's been a lot of um, warm welcoming and a lot of people have shown me a lot of love and a lot of people are like, who the fuck is that guy? So <laughs> it is what it is. And what do you make of uh, this UFC Bantamweight division? Because obviously in PFL, this wasn't your division, like you said. How, so I guess how closely did you follow the UFC in this division specifically? I mean, I watched. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a avid watcher. Like you, if I'm not in the fight or if it's not a fight that interests me, I probably don't turn the fights on just because I got two kids and I'm in bed at like 9 p.m. <laughs> every night. <laughs> Um, but I, I watched the division. I've been taking notice. I've been keeping my eye on the pulse, and <clears throat> they need a new queen. Right. Well, kind of going off that, you know, Laura Sanko has said, like, you you were what the women's division kind of needed, someone like this. So do you kind of feel like, like, do you agree with that? Like, the type of fighter like you that is also can speak on the mic and fight like you do is what this division needed? Yeah. I mean, I think that, thank you, Laura. I agree 100%. I concur. Court is now in session. The queen has arrived, and uh, Saturday night's going to be, yeah, my coming out party. Everyone's going to be put on notice. So were you already planting the seeds with Rocky? You know, you kind of guys were tweeting back. I, yeah, I mean, I get it. Look, I get it. If I were Rocky, I'd, I'd fight, uh, what's her face, Juliana. too? Juliana, too. Yeah, if I, yeah, of course I'd be calling for that fight. Uh, and there's uh, two less quick ones for me, unrelated to your fight. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and the BMF fight between Max and Justin? Yeah. Um, well, I don't know Jamal super well, but I've met Alex now, and he's a terrifying individual. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for that one. I think it's – they both have a lot of power, so um, it's going to be – you know somebody's going out. And same with – Justin and Max. I don't know Max that well, but I've known Justin actually. He was one of the first fighters I met when I signed with the World Series. And he's just crazy, like in all the best ways. You know, he's, he's every fighter's like one of their favorite fighters for a reason. And Max too, he's beloved by the people and by the, the fighters, by all of the UFC staff. So you know he's a good human. It's hard to, you don't want anyone to lose that one almost, you know, like it just sucks. But I'm expecting fireworks. Kayla, over here. Uh, right here, good to see you again. Um, I was wondering, uh, Ronda Rousey came out with the book. You obviously were on the judo team and obviously roommates. She talked about having concussions throughout her career. Were yeah. you aware of that or ever given a hint to that back when you guys were competing in around each other? Um, I know. I know that she had. I know that she had one concussion, but that's. That's really, I can remember one time where she, I think she had a concussion um, at a tournament in Belgium, but that's, that's the only one I recall. I'm, I wasn't her doctor, obviously. I was 16 and <laughs> trying to stay alive. <laughs> uh, to ask you about your career, how important is it for you to get that microphone potentially after a victory and kind of let everybody know that you are that new face to watch in this promotion? Um, I think it's more important to get my hand raised and, and to focus on that, for sure. But I think you guys all know by now I, <laughs> I like to talk a little bit. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I just go with the flow. Like, if it, the adrenaline is usually pumping, like, so much after a fight, it's hard to shut me up. So I'm excited to go talk some shit to Joe Rogan and let him know what's up. It'll be good. Last one. In a dream scenario, does this UFC run culminate in potentially bringing back Amanda for that big title fight? I mean, that would be fantastic. You know, I, I think that, yeah, I want to fight the best. I, I, 
she's the GOAT for a reason. And I would love for her to come back and get pissed off enough to to want to come back. So we'll see what happens. But first things first, Saturday night, Holly Holm. Kayla, Kayla down here. Here. All right, Kayla, down here to your right. Um, you gave a glowing review of Holly Holm there and her legendary status and what she's done in the sport. Are you happy to be thrown in at the deep end against such an icon of the sport so early into your career, UFC career? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm... I'm a veteran now, you know, I'm, I'm 17 fights in and um, yeah, this is it. I don't want to, I don't want to be given easy fights or like, I, I want to get in and, and I want to be UFC champion by the end of the year. Thank you. Kayla, over here. Hey, um, you're all constantly being compared to Ronda Rousey, and I'm wondering, is that something that you're proud of or something that kind of annoys you, or maybe a little mix of both? Um, look, Ronda is a pioneer in this sport. She's the whole reason I'm sitting here today. So I'm never going to, I'm not going to take knocks at her or um, be insulted by it. I think the hardest part is that I'm my own person, right? Like... It, I don't know. I'm my own person, so we're, we're just different. But I have a lot of respect for her, and I'm grateful for everything she was able to accomplish in this sport and to help grow it for women and shatter ceilings. And now my job is to stand on top of her shoulders and continue to do that. Hey, Kyla, over <coughs> here. So you are winner of uh, Judo 2015 in Georgia at Pilisi. And actually, can you talk about your transition, how good it works on you, like, uh, from judo to, uh, to going in MMA? Yeah, it was a big transition, you know, to go from just being thrown and to getting punched in the face is kind of a, it's a big change really fast. But to be honest with you, I love it. I loved everything about it. Being a, an expert at something, but a bit beginner all over again and having to figure out a way to make those two come together was... Um, was why I loved MMA. And I'm still learning every day, still growing, still getting better, still making changes and adapting and growing. So I always say that judo is my first love, but MMA is my real love. And last one, what's your opinion about Georgian judokas? Oh my God, they're beasts. <laughs> I love the Georgian team. They're awesome. I remember um, when I won the Georgian, the Grand Prix or World Cup? I can't remember what it was. The, in Tbilisi. Yes. There is a little boy, Nico. Nico, maybe. I gave him my trophy. I want to. I would like want to find out if he's still doing judo because it was my tradition to always give my flowers and my trophy to a child in the crowd. So I want to know if he's still doing judo. But all the Georgian guys are like, um, Lipertiliani. He's probably my favorite Georgian judoka. Yeah. Thank you so much. Kayla right here. Um, what up, Mike? Not too much. Your manager, Ali, had an interesting quote this week where talking oh, about Jesus your star Christ. power. Yeah, he said you uh, you could be Ronda Rousey on steroids. Maybe not the best choice of words. Thanks, Ali. Yeah. Um, the sentiment behind that comment, though, like in terms of your star power, do you, do you kind of agree you can take things to another level here if you do the run you want to? I hope so. I mean, that's the goal. I, I don't... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not comparing myself to anyone or anything. I'm my own person. I have my own path. I just try and keep walking it every day, one foot in front of the other. And the goal is not to be, I mean, look, of course, everyone wants to be a star. The goal is not to be a star. The goal is to be a UFC champion and be so fucking good you can't ignore me. And then to use this platform to change the world how I want to, you know? Like, there's a steps to it. And really being a star isn't a piece of it. It's something that, I guess everyone wants to talk about, but I just want to be so good that you guys have no choice but to call me the queen. Okay, thanks guys.
What's up? What's up, Jamal? Over here, to your left. Right. What's going on? How are you, man? It's obviously uh, been a bit of a break, but you're back. Huge card, fight week again. How's it feel to be sitting up there again? Uh, feels pretty good, man. Feels good. Just ready to get to Saturday, get in the cage, and get my hand raised. Yeah, and you had the little uh, interaction with Alex yesterday that kind of went around. Uh, what did you take away from that? Anything, or was it all just good vibes? You wanted your, your signature on your jacket? Yeah, it was. Just, I just took away the fact that I appreciate him taking time out to sign that for me. It was just something that I wanted to get from this week. You know, I'm just enjoying the time that, you know what I mean, just my time. You know, we, we life is but a vapor, so. I mean, enjoy it. This is one a very special moment, very special car, very special week and, and fight. And uh, I just want to take it in as much as possible. Yeah, and kind of along that theme, you've talked about you know your story and some of the difficult times you've come through in your life. To reach a moment like this, like do you reflect and what you've been through, or do you do that after? Yeah, that's something for after. That's something to yeah. Well, as you said, reflect on the job ain't done yet. Yeah, and just last thing for me, um, of course, endless speculation about the injury and the recovery and stuff. Do you remember the day during your rehab, whatever it was, where you got back in there and you're like, this feels right now. I'm, I'm ready to go towards a fight again. Uh, I've been feeling like I was ready to go for a while, you know, but, you know, I listen to the team, I listen to the doctors, and... So I don't know. I can't really. I don't really have an answer for that. For the simple fact of I've been ready to go since I since I got hurt. When you get in the cage on Saturday, is that when you're only gonna hundred percent get that confidence back in it, or is that not even lingering in your mind? What? I don't even know what how you even came for that question from what I just said. What? Fair. No, fair enough. Am I only gonna get a hundred? That was strange. <laughs> Jamal, talk to me about the mentality for this fight, right? You were the champion. You had to give that up through injury. You didn't lose that through a fight. So do you feel like on Saturday you're defending your title or are you using this as an opportunity to be the challenger, climbing to the top once again? I just feel like whoever wins Saturday night is the champion. That's just how I feel about it. Obviously, when everyone talks about Alex and his fighting style, the calf kicks is something that comes up again and again. I saw you post something on your TikTok sort of talking about those and making light of it. Do you have a strategy in mind for those calf kicks, or do you think, hey, he has to worry about what I'm doing, not the other way around? Um, I have a strategy for everything. You know what I mean? You should have a strategy for everything. You shouldn't want to get hit with anything. So, yeah, I plan on dealing with every weapon that he has. Obviously, you got to talk to your friend Israel Adesanya about Alex. Um, how good a resource was that just to be able to call him up and get some tips from him? Um, that's a... It's an invaluable resource to just be able to reach out and pick, pick, a little, pick at one of the best minds in combat sports and have him who's had more experience with Alex than I think anybody that Alex has ever fought. So it was good. It was a great conversation. Jamal over here. How's it going? What's up, James? Um, the rest of camp looked like it went really well. Um, I know you train with a variety of different partners. Are there any names that you train with that maybe we don't know about that uh, we should be knowing about in, in the gym? Um, you know, yeah, for sure. I'd love to get a shout out to my guy, uh, big dog, Brett Martin. Brett Martin has been my secret weapon for my camp since I since I came into the UFC and since we linked up. He's a he's a heavyweight. He's a he's a big boy. He don't he's a he's another guy who don't get any love just because of his physique and things like that. You know, you know, people talk about my body, bro's got a, bro's body's pretty tough, but uh, his 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 abilities are are unmistakable and they're they're incredible. They keep me sharp. Um, I'm always able to bounce things off of him and uh and learn learn with him and grow with him in the gym you know whenever he, whenever he comes in and he's and we're working we we get after it and he knows me pretty well now so he's able to actually shape out some other challenges and things like that for me and yeah he's been he's been invaluable i've also worked with a couple of the guys uh that were local from uh that fight for the bare knuckle uh, Mohawk, Mohawk, Esteban uh, Rodriguez, and um, Eric Lozano, a couple of tough, like, you know what I mean, they're, they're, they're tough. Esteban's got, he's tall, long, rangy, and uh, <laughs> he, he, he fights. 
And uh, speaking of Michigan, um, how cool is it having Cody Brundage on this card? You both used to fight for Lights Out uh, Fighting or Lights Out Promotion. Um, have you spoken to him this week? I haven't seen Cody yet, uh, but yeah, that is actually actually pretty dope. Uh, they asked me who I, who I wouldn't mind being in my locker room. I told them definitely uh, I, I would like to have Cody Brundage in my locker room. Um, it's 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 special. It's it's definitely uh, special. Just just that for me and him because he was the last fight before Contender Series. He was on that card. We were on the same card before I uh, before I joined the UFC. Obviously, I went went on Contender Series and uh, ended up getting signed. He went on Contender Series and um, was later signed. And now both on main card UFC 300 is. <laughs> is wild. So yeah, that is pretty dope. And just last one for me, not looking past Saturday, but do you have kind of like a timeline of like how often you want to fight this year? Is it just about, you know, opportunities and location and all that? Like how do you sort of determine your schedule after after Saturday if all goes well? I haven't looked past Saturday, so I'm just focused, locked in on Saturday. I want to make sure I get the the result that that I want Saturday and that's the main focus. Jamal to your right. Uh, I noticed earlier you quoted Ecclesiastes saying that life is but a vapor. During this process from the injury now going into this fight, what do you feel like you've been taught most? That is even that even more so. Appreciate the moments. Yeah, appreciate the moments. Just it could have all been over. It really could have all been over for me. Um, there are people, there are athletes who have suffered this same injury who – had to had to call it call it a quits on their hopes and their dreams, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to now be in a time, and was in a position to where the best medicine available was available to me, and I was able to take advantage of that and use the resources to make my way back and come back in a time that people really just can't seem to believe. So, thank you, uh, Jamal. Is he? Jamal here. Uh, you already on? you already fought and won uh, against four Brazilians. Alex Pereira is the fifth, and it's a big name out of Brazil right now. How was the experience to deal to deal once again with the Brazilian audience on social media? The Brazilian audience is different than <laughs> the, uh, Alex's audience, so it's it's been a it's been a different experience this time. I'll say. And I would like to know from you, uh, if somebody told you three years ago that w you would be headlining UFC 300, would you believe that? What would you think at that time? If somebody told me I'd be headlining UFC 300 at the time, um, I'd, I'd believe it. I believe it because I know myself and I know the, I know the uh, belief I've always, hold in my, I've always held in myself. But it would have been, it would have got me hype. It would have definitely had me excited. You know, um, I don't know. I just always planned on being in these moments and being in this situation ever since I was a kid. Like, you can even ask my dad. My dad is here right now, you know. Um, just from the time I was a kid, I just always believed that I, whatever I did, I was going to be one of the best at it. For a time, it was football. For a time, it was basketball. Whenever I sat in on fighting, it was I, – I knew I would be here in moments like this, fighting for championships and able to have an opportunity to put myself up there with the greatest names to ever do it. Thank Jamal Luby. I know the, there's a lot of talk about Alex Pereira's fast rise in MMA coming from the kickboxing scene, but it was just in 2019 when you won a contender series contract. And this time last year, you were originally supposed to fight in a fight night headline and you got the short notice call to fight Glover in which you won and became the first contender series graduate to do so and become champion. So do you think people are kind of putting to the side your fast rise in this sport into now ultimately headlining UFC 300 as well? I don't know. I don't care. It's like, that's not important at all. Fair enough. Like, he's, he's, he's a great fighter. He just, it's just, that was his opportunity to show his greatness. His opportunity came fast. And uh, he stepped up to the occasion, and that's good on him, you know. And I, I feel I've done the same with the opportunities that I've been given. So this is just that next opportunity. Fair enough. Yeah, I was just mentioning because, you know, you also went up through a fast rise. But that image when you and uh, Alex were looking at each other after you beat Glover went around in the lead up to this fight, did you ever imagine that that would be the root of such a thing like a UFC 300 main event? 
Uh, no, because it was just a handshake. <laughs> that was, he was over shaking my, my corner's hand. I went over and shook his corner's hand. So that's pretty much what that was. Thank you. But I did see that he could possibly be an opponent in, a, in the future. And I was excited for it. I wanted him to win. When I got hurt and I had to give up the belt, it was like, all right, what's the best course? What's the, what's the best that could happen now? Because somebody else is going to win the belt. Who better than Alex to win the belt? Like, you know, y'all think he, y'all, y'all, and he is, you know, he's a, he's one of the, he's a two, he's the, what, two division glory champion, two division UFC champion, kickboxing, great, can, uh, hands of stone, bad man, just a monster, dangerous, scary dude, he's, he's all those things, but watch what I do to him. Jamal, first and foremost, I like your shoe selection. Very nice. I know. Uh, wait, wait. You know I tore my Achilles in, in this. In the, in the, uh, the gray ones, was, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was hard for me to put these on today. <laughs> it, uh, and is there any truth that, did you go to the same doctor as Aaron Rodgers? Yes. Well, yeah. Aaron Rodgers went to the same doctor as me. Ooh. Did you guys, uh, you mentioned that you played football. Did you guys have any conversations, you and Aaron? I know he's a big MMA fan. Mm. No, no, no. I've never met Aaron, so I never, I never like talked to him or anything like that. No. Got you. Uh, the Jets could use somebody uh, like you to catch the ball. But uh, speaking of quarterbacks and Super Bowl, like UFC 300 is kind of like a Super Bowl big time. It's going to be a lot of focus on you. Um, on one of your fights on the walkouts, uh, I heard the commentators talking about your calmness and your coolness. Do you believe that you have that that clutch? Uh, the, the attribute, the, the trait that you can just come through in the biggest moments? Yeah, yeah, that's something I, I just know. I just trust myself. That's one of the biggest things that I hang my hat on is the fact that I know I'm, I know that just naturally I, I show up. It's who I am. It's what I do.
Not right here. Obviously, you called for you know Money Moicano wants these these big events, these big moments. So I guess what are the emotions now that you do have a spot on this historic UFC 300 card? Uh, feeling great, UFC 300. Uh, great card, great opponent. I think it's a good opportunity for me. So uh, I'm just honored to be here. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you guys were the last fight added to this card. So were you expecting to be on that card, or was it a surprise when they called you? No, it was a surprise. I was expecting to fight in UFC 301 in Brazil, or, or even uh, on the pay-per-view in London, on, on Europe. I was expecting that because that, that, was, that, that would make sense. But guess what? They call me, and I'm here. Is this the better card to be on for you, 300, rather than those two other ones? Definitely, de definitely is a, is a card that I want to be. Of course, UFC 300, uh, on the prelims, several champions face each other, uh, like uh, Davidson Figueiredo and, and Cody Garbrandt, and I'm fighting on the same card. I wish it was on the main event. I wish it was on the main card, but guess what? It is what it is. And what do you make of Jalen as an opponent? Because obviously, I think we kind of expected you'd be fighting Patty because you guys were talking back and forth. So when they came with Jalen, what went through your mind? Uh, man, I don't, of course I, I wanted Patty because on the paper it was the easiest fight, you know? The easiest fight and uh, I would get more, uh, more people know him. So th that's what it is about. But at the same time, I don't choose my, op my opponents and I, do, and I don't have, time to, to sit and wait, you know? So I'm 34 years old, I have to fight, I have to get money, I want money, UFC 300, what, uh, which card would be better to get money? Of course, Dana White is gonna, gonna raise the bonus, so I want the bonus too. And let's go, I think it's a good fight for me, to be honest. Jalen Turner is tough, but I'm better than him. Did you have to bring anyone to train with, considering how tall he was and how long he is? Yes, I, would, I was training with some 170 guys, you know, tall guys, strikers, very hard to take down, and I will be ready. And I know you, you like to be critical sometimes of certain main events and the apex and everything, but for this pay-per-view, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, man, I when they first started to make the card, I was talking a lot of shit about the card, you know, especially because I was... I wanted to see like John Jones, Conor McGregor, but I think Alex Pereira, he's, he's becoming a star in UFC, and I think in the end of the day, the card could not get any better, and especially for Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje, that's going to be a banger, that's going to be an amazing fight, and I, I'm glad that I will fight and then watch the fights. Actually, last one for me. Obviously, after your fights, you know, you call Moicano wants money. There's a lot of competition for these bonuses on this card. So I guess, how do you uh, separate yourself? How do you win on Saturday? To be really completely honest with you, I don't think I'm going to get the bonus. Even if I finish him, we have 13 fights, 12 champions, and it's going to be tough to, to have a fight better than Max Holloway and, and Justin Gage or... Sarukian and Charles Oliveira, or uh, Alex Pereira. I, I think that the card will be, will have a lot of finishes. So to be completely honest with you, I just want to get the W. I want to finish Charlie Turner and move on. Going off of that with the bonuses right here, I'm just curious, do you think that Dana should do something special for this card? Maybe give everybody who finishes the bonus? 100%. He should do that in every card. You know, it's hard to get a finish on UFC, and I think if you do, you should get more money. But guess what? I don't, I don't make the business. I am just an employee, so whatever they do, I agree with. Back here, Hanato. Speaking of money, I know you have your YouTube channel. You have a ton of things going on outside of fighting. You have the Home of Fight podcast now. So I'm curious, what do you think are some of the best side hustles for MMA fighters? I think talk about of MMA is easy because I have been training since I was, I started training Jiu-Jitsu when I was 10, so I know the sport. I, I, I compete professional MMA since 2011, so I have been in the game for a long time. And, but the problem is some fighters, 
they are dumb. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but some, some fighters, and I don't even speak English, but I, I am trying, but some fighters, they do speak English, but they are dumb, or, or sometimes they are lazy. But guess what? We don't have much time on this game. 15, 10, 10 15 years, and uh, I'm glad that you say huge shout out, shout out to my channel, money, my kind of channel, and huge shout out to the podcast, uh, show me the money, me, Gilbert Burns, and Maddie, I'm doing, we're doing a great work, so if you guys want to check, check it out, great podcast. But uh, to answer you, depends on what you like to do. I like to talk shit, I like to, you know, to make some money, so what's better to do, than, what's better than do a podcast? Hey, Hinato, right here. Um, you mentioned your YouTube channel. And you've really connected with a lot of fans and become a lot more popular, but I know you've also taken a liking to MMA Guru. How much have you learned from him, and how much has that sort of uh, made up your channel? Uh, uh, at, at the beginning, I didn't know MMA Guru. I wasn't on the Twitch, tried to stream in some games, especially because I, I got injured, my, my knee was hurt. And then Everybody on the chat was saying, hey, you have to, to see MMA Guru react to a video. And then, and then uh, I watched a video of him live talking about MMA. And I, and I did my point, and, and I, I called him several words. And then uh, after that, I started to, to, to watch his content. And then I moved to YouTube. And when I, when I did a video about fighters, he... he um, made a shootout, like he's, he sent people to my live and to my videos, and, and that helps my channel a lot. I think one thing people are not realizing that the, today is a new game, completely different. You see guys that don't have any uh, background on journalism, or they just, they, they just are on, on literally uh, their mom's basement, but they can connect with the, the, the public, and, and they do a great job, because they can, Imagine that we're doing this, uh, this press conference right now, and now you, you guys have to edit and have to walk, and that's very hard. But, but for a guy on YouTube, he just take the video and, and talk shit about uh, you know, fighters and, and give his opinion. So I think uh, YouTube is going to get m much more popular in, in, in the next couple of years. And to be completely honest, he's doing a great job. You like him or not, everybody's talking about him. Is that something you'd want to do after your career's done, is do that full time, is just do YouTube commentary? I want money. <laughs> yeah. if, YouTube, if I make money on YouTube, that's good. If not, I will uh, try something else. But of course, I, I like to talk about MMA. It's easy for me to do the videos. I like to connect with, with the fans. And I like the fans, uh, like you say, uh, recognize me a little bit more. And I think it's a good situation. And just last one for me, a win over Jalen, especially a finish, where does that put you in the division? Because Jalen's you know, fought some really good opponents, got some good wins. He's very good, he's very good. But I will beat him on Saturday, and I will be on the top 10, and then we'll see, we'll see. I don't have an opponent in mind right now, but uh, definitely I want to fight somebody on the top 10, I want to get closer to the title, and I want more money. And Otto right over here. Uh, Hinato, big press conference tomorrow. A lot of fans love listening to you talk. Do you have anything special planned when you get on the mic tomorrow? Not really. I never, I never try to plan anything, you know. I, I have my principles. I have something that some, sometimes I, I want to talk about. And uh, what I want to talk about, maybe tomorrow, maybe on the fight day, is, is uh, you have to get ownership of your life because Back in the day, I used to, I used to, I used to blame other people for my for my faults. You know, I used to to give excuses for everything. Nowadays, I am. I, this has changed my life to be accountable of my actions. You know, if 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 I do something, something go wrong, that's my problem. If if something, if I do something, something go right, that's my uh, that's my. Uh, actions too. So I, I wish people nowadays would care more about the accountability. I think that's my message. And then one more question to talk about what Bri brought up. You have your podcast, Show Me the Money, with Matt and Gilbert. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys do talk about? We talk about money and MMA, and we bring some fighters to to 
to do the podcast we, do, we did with Jamal Hill, and it's a very good show. And if you are a degenerate that loves gambling, Maddie is a gambler, and, and he's doing a good job. On the other day, he hit a, a 46,000 parlay with $1,000, so motherfucker is making money. And if you like to, to your opinions about that, uh, watch the show. It's a very good show, and like the first video, we got almost 30K views like in, on the first video, and I think this podcast will be one of the biggest podcasts in, in MMA. We still need a lot of content in MMA, not generic stuff, like good stuff, good productions, and we're doing that on Show Me The Money, and Home of Fighting is doing a great job too, so it's a win-win situation for fighters. Thank you. Just a quick one right here. When you talk about MMA and fights with Gilbert and other people like that, do you kind of see an, another perspective that you might have not seen when you're in the cage? Do you get to learn a bit more just breaking down fights? Yeah, it's different because when you're talking about MMA against a guy that doesn't do MMA or, or, or the fighter, you can see different opinions. And definitely that changed my mind in a in, in couple fights. And especially if you're talking with a guy that like to bet, it's not like uh, a fighter because uh, let's say... Uh, Armand Sarukian and, and Charles Oliveira. If I, if I am giving my prediction, I will try to do like on the technical aspect, right? I will say he's good that, he's good here, and I think he, one on another will win. But when the, when the guy likes to bet, he do like props and, and finishes on the second round and crazy stuff that I don't like. So uh, j just remember, I don't bet, you know, I just, I just go to the podcast and, and, and I gave my opinion about fight. Thank you so much. Right here. Uh, obviously, we've been talking about this fight against Whaley for quite some time, but now that you know it's fight week here on this milestone that is UFC 300, I guess what are the emotions now that you just have to weigh in and then fight on Saturday? Uh, you and Whaley 我觉得这是我的第一场UFC的挑战冠军的比赛,而且我跟张老力打,这个时间和地点都是最完美的,也是UFC300,太完美了。You know, this is my first title fight versus Whaley in Las Vegas, UFC 300, the opponent timing location, everything is perfect. Well, kind of going off of that, I think a lot of people expected maybe you to fight on that Shanghai card when they had originally announced it, but was UFC 300 kind of always the original date that they had told you? So, UFC 没有锁定过目标去打USC300,正好这个时机啊,天时地利人和,你能翻译吗?都刚刚好,所以说,对,这个是完美的。No, actually, I never lock my goal or up, upcoming fight on any location or date or like UFC300, but we just get here. You know, I know, good timing, perfect timing, yeah, so we just make it happen, yeah. And speaking of Whaley as an opponent, uh, like Daniel Cormier has said, she might be the most athletic fighter he's ever seen. A lot of people think, you know, she's kind of this perfect, well-rounded fighter. I'm curious, how do you view her skill set in there? So, yeah, uh, 
，很多人都说，包括 DC 也觉得他是最全面的选手，然后也很壮，运动能力也很强。那你觉得跟他相比，你自己是什么样的选手？嗯，他确实就是给大家，就是。每场比赛打得很精彩嘛，给大家呈现的也是很强，但是我觉得我也很强，我也可以展现最棒的我。Yeah, Willie is a great fighter as every her fight she she showcases to everybody, but I also believe myself. I'm also a good fighter, completed fighter. I think I will show you guys the best version of myself. And a lot of people, obviously, they, they point to the fact that it's the first time two Chinese fighters are fighting for a title. Do you view the importance of this fight, or do you just view it as another card against a champion and you're going for the title? So, now, many people are talking about this game. They say, ah, this game is a Chinese derby. The first time, Chinese players are going to win the gold medal. Is it important for you? Or do you think that the UFC is more important than the UFC to win the gold medal? I think it's important, but if I choose, 还是拿到冠军是最重要的。Yeah, both the China versus China and、uh, get the UFC title are important to me. But if you let me choose one, which one is more important? Get the title. And、uh, last one for me.、Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and the BMF fight between Justin and Max? 那你预测一下另外两场腰带战吧。那个佩雷拉和希尔，然后霍洛威和盖奇。呃、uh,。盖奇和霍洛威的话，我喜欢盖奇，他的打拳我特别喜欢。完了，我选盖奇。完了，还有佩雷拉。So for Gage, Justin Gage and、uh, Max Holloway, I would pick Gage because I I like his boxing. So yeah, I think Gage can win. And、uh, for the main event, uh, Pereira. Uh, Jan, last time we spoke,、uh, after your last win in May, we talked about this potential title fight, and you said that the people in China maybe don't support you as, not, as much as、uh, Wali.、Uh, have you felt that sentiment change now that this is booked, now that you're in this title fight? Like, do you feel like people are coming around to you at home more than they were before? In May, when you won Andal Lado, he asked me, how will the title fight be against Wei Li? Then you also mentioned that maybe 中国的粉丝可能更多人会支持伟力。那现在你觉得大家这个支持度，你们两个相比有什么变化吗？还是怎么样？嗯，没有变化，还是更多人支持他。但是我有我的家人和我的朋友，还有我的教练团队支持我。<笑> Nothing has really changed. Still more people support Wei Li. But you know, I have my family, I have my team. All the people, my people, will support me. To me, that's enough. Jan, I was wondering last year, what was it like training with the LA Rams? Ah, he said you were before to the Los Angeles Rams team. Yeah, yes. Yeah, she visited the, the practice, the training camp there. How was the experience? You think that experience was how? Watching the Los Angeles Rams training camp. I feel like it was so cool. I've never seen it before. Yeah, it's super cool. I never saw or participated in any American football training before.
no C300. Você imaginou que essa, essa, essa é a sua trajetória? Então, acho que tudo tem acontecido muito rápido. né? Para mim também foi uma surpresa, mas, como eu bem mencionei na pergunta passada, eu acho que eu tenho feito as coisas bem e isso tem me trazido até aqui. né? Então, acho que muito só... Sou agradecido com o UFC por todas as oportunidades que me está dando. E eu sou um cara que trabalha duro todos os dias para lograr essas oportunidades. Uh, listen, it, it, was, it was, there was a surprise to, to everything happened, but as I mentioned in, in as my last answer, like, this is the, I do think that I've, I've done a lot of things that, that, that means I've been doing a good job. Um, and that's what brought me this opportunity. So just, again, very happy and very grateful for the UFC to have given me this opportunity. When they came to you with a name like Sadiq, did you like that matchup and what do you think of his skill set? When they came to you with a name like Sadiq, did you like that matchup and what do you think of his skill set? When they came to you with a name like Sadiq, did you like that matchup and what do you think of his skill set? When they came to you with a name like Sadiq, did you like that matchup and what do you think of his skill set? When they came to you with a name like Sadiq, did you like that matchup and what do you think of his skill set? When they came to you with a name like Sadiq, did you like that matchup and what do you think of his skill set? When they came to you with a name like Sadiq, did you like that matchup and what do you think esse es pelear con los más duros. Yo, yo recuerdo que el año pasado hice una entrevista y me preguntaron con quién me gustaría pelear y yo dije que justamente con Sodic o con Alex Cáceres y me llegó la oportunidad de pelear con Sodic y pues bueno, este, me gusta la pelea, estoy listo para eso. Um, I, I really like the opportunity. Actually, I like the fight because, I mean, he's a tough guy, one of the best guys in the division. And I said this, if you want to be a champion, I mean, you have to fight the biggest guys and the, 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 the toughest guys in the division. And actually, last, last year, uh, in, during an interview, people asked me, who would you like to fight? And I said, Sodic or Alex Caceres. And there you go. They got me him. So I'm very happy about the opportunity. Why specifically did you like the matchup with Sadiq at the time? Y por qué entre los dos, o sea, específicamente te gustaba, en, cuando te preguntaron en la entrevista el año pasado, por qué te gustó Sodic? específicamente. Pues yo digo justamente por eso es un, un de los peleadores más duros de la división. Es el peleador que nunca ha sido finalizado dentro de la categoría. Las únicas dos derrotas que tiene ha sido por decisión para una de la de la leyenda de deporte como es Edson Barbosa y pues Arnold Allen que es el número 7 de ranking. Este, yo sé que es un peleador que va para adelante buscando finalizar sus peleas y eso es lo que me gusta. Um, I think you talk about a, a guy who's never been finished in the UFC. I mean, he's got two uh, losses, one of them to a legend in the game, and that's Barbosa, and one has been seventh in the ranking. I mean, this is a guy, just a, a, a tough challenge, and that's the type of stuff that I like. Did you know he's a voice actor for Disney, too, now? Y sabía que está haciendo voice acting, o sea, está prestando su voz a películas de Disney ahora. Sí, algo así vi, pues la verdad es que... Que bueno por él, ¿no? Este, lo felicito pues, por, por ese gran logo que tiene. O sea, es algo que yo creo que nosotros peleadores siempre no, nos gustamos algo aparte del deporte, ¿no? Entonces, si a él le gusta este, prestar su voz para lo, lo, las películas animadas, pues qué bueno, feliz por él y pues lo felicito. Uh, but yeah, I've seen it, uh, and I'm very happy for him because, you know, for all of us fighters, we, we, I think all of us have interests outside of the world of fighting. So if he had the opportunity to, to, to you know, to lend his voice uh, on to animated features, I'm very happy for him, and I congratulate him on it. And last one for me, can I get your thoughts on the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Obviamente, mi última pregunta, mi parte de José, pensamientos generales de la pelea estelar entre Pereira y Gil, y también el BMF entre Justin Gage y Max Holloway. Ah, son, son dos luchas que todo el mundo quiere ver. ¿no? Sí. Acho que la lucha con, con Justin Gage y Max Holloway son luchas impresionantes. ¿no? Acho que son dos caras que llevan mucho tiempo dentro de la empresa, son dos caras que merecen tener esa, ter esa lucha que ellos están teniendo ahora. ¿no? Yo acho que Max Holloway tiene luchado con casi todos dentro del UFC, Justin Gage también. Entonces... É uma luta que eu estou emocionado para ver. Eu quero sair da minha luta, me colocar na frente da TV e estar preparado para ver a luta do Max Holloway contra o Josh Gate e a luta do Pereira contra o Rio. Acho que é uma luta que pode acontecer de tudo, né? Pode acontecer uma surpresa também de Jamal Rio pues, acabar conectando uma mão ali, porque sabemos que nos pesos mais, mais pesados é, tudo pode acontecer. Uh, I think, I mean, the, the fight between uh, Gagey and Holloway, you talk about two guys that have been around this organization for quite some time, giving us great fights. I mean, Max Holloway has pretty much fought everybody in this in this company, and Gagey's been around too, so it's a fight that, you know, I'm really I'm emotional about this one. I really want to finish my fight and be able to watch watch that fight, so I think everybody should be expecting a great fight. And as for, uh, for uh, Pereira Hill, I mean, this is a fight that a surprise could happen because you never know if at one hand, I mean, Jamal could connect his hand. I mean, the heavier you get, uh, the more the opportunity of one hand just changing the game. So anything can happen. Yeah, go over here. 
Una en español rápido. Um, ¿Has estado ayudando al equipo Alexa Grasso en el Ultimate Fighter antes de, de tu pelea de UFC 300? ¿Cómo ha sido esa experiencia y el entrenamiento aquí en Las Vegas antes de una ocasión tan grande como UFC 300? And Diego, you've been in the actually Grasso team for uh, the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, you've been around here. We've seen you in the team. Uh, how has been? How's that experience been of being a part of Tough? Ha uh, sido una experiencia muy 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 buena. Este siento que he aprendido bastante también y conciliar pues este ser se ayudar pues mi equipo este como con el coach de Tofi como como estoy haciendo con Alexa y entrenar también pues me ha ayudado bastante. No es algo que yo he hecho desde siempre en mi carrera. Siempre he ayudado a mis compañeros, mis alumnos y he, y he peleado y he entrenado para mí también. Pero lo que más me me motiva y me deja feliz de todo eso es saber que todo mi equipo está acá en Las Vegas desde hace un mes junto conmigo y trabajando pues para eso. Uh, it's been a great experience. I mean, just to just be a part of the team and then be a, 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 have an opportunity to, to, to see the process of coaching, just like, you know, I uh, able to actually uh, be in the, in, in, in the coaching side with Alexa. Um, I have done this throughout my life, um, always teaching people, and I've, I've done it since, since the start of my career and being on the coaching side. But the cool thing and the most roaring thing is the fact that I've been in Las Vegas here with all my team. All of us have been here for the month, so all together, so that's very rewarding. Y después de esta pelea, ¿has hablado de la posibilidad de potencialmente uh, pelear en UFC 306 en la esfera aquí en Las Vegas para la Noche de Independencia de México? And after this one, have you talked about the opportunity or have you con uh, considered the opportunity of fighting here 306, September, Mexican Independence Day at the Sphere? Uh, creo que sí, o sea, es lo, es lo que busco, ¿no? Yo busco las grandes oportunidades. Si UFC me da la, la oportunidad de pelear en la esfera de UFC 306, este, pues yo estoy listo. Yo estoy listo, la verdad, pues representar todo, todo el pueblo brasileño y pues también toda la, la gente de México, que pues es el día de la independencia de México, para mí va a ser algo muy significativo. Um, of course, uh, it, it, I've, I'm always looking for good fights, looking for great opportunities, looking for the big ones, and that's a, that's a great opportunity too. And uh, if the UFC comes calling, I mean, for me to have the opportunity to represent Brazil and also be there uh, for the Mexican people representing Mexico in is such a, an important weekend uh, for Mexican to be awesome. And a message to all the Latin American fans that are going to be watching you on Saturday. No, pues ya saben, puede esperar el Diego que siempre va para adelante buscando finalizar sus peleas. Ese es mi objetivo. Gracias por toda la gente de Latinoamérica que me apoya, la gente especial en México. Este, pues bueno, aquí estamos para representar. Oh, well, you know, uh, uh, you're going to see a Diego that's always pushing forward, always looking for the finish, always giving his all. So, and also, thank you so much for the support. Uh, we'll always be there for you. Diego, aquí. A gente tem o Charles e o, o Poatan né, no card junto com você. E como todo mundo falou, você já é um potencial astro, quem sabe astro do UFC campeão. O que, que você consegue, o que, que você acha que você pode aprender com a história do Charles e do Poatan dentro do UFC que você pretende seguir na sua trajetória? And Diego, on the same card as you are, you have Charles Oliveira and you have Alex Pereira Poatan. Um, every, everybody already considers you a star and you're becoming a, a, a bigger star by the day. So what can you learn from the stories and the history of Charles Oliveira and Alex Poitain for your life? Ah, I think we can learn a lot, right? They are two guys that inspired a lot of people in the sport, in Brazil in general. I had the opportunity to meet Poitain since 2015. It was a time when I lived in São Paulo. We could also train a little bit together, we met him there. E o ano passado ter a oportunidade de lutar no mesmo card que ele no UFC 295 foi algo incrível, né? Eu pude encontrar ele aí várias vezes dentro do dentro do hotel. A gente trocou uma ideia, conversou e logo também pôs o Charles, né? O Charles todo mundo sabe a história do Charles, é um cara que tem batalhado bastante para conquistar tudo que ele tem hoje, né? E, e ter esses dois caras como referência para mim é algo muito bom, é algo muito bom, algo que motiva bastante também. Eu me espelho neles porque Eu sei o que eu tenho passado na minha vida também para ter tudo o que eu tenho agora. É, e ter e estar tá hoje aqui compartilhando a carteleira do UFC 300 com eles é algo, algo incrível para mim. E muito feliz, cara, muito feliz dessa grande oportunidade. E espero poder fazer jus com o que o pessoal está tá projetando para mim no futuro.
Um, these are guys that have inspired people um, in, in, in the fight game. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to actually uh, just kick it around with Poatum. I met him back in 2015. We trained together. So when I was in Sao Paulo, I trained with him. Uh, also, for I had the opportunity to fight uh, in the uh, same card as his, 295 in New York. And actually, we got we were able to, to exchange some words. And, I mean, just such a great guy. He's becoming a star, a bigger star every day. And about Charles, everybody knows the story of Charles. I mean, all the stuff that he's gone through, all the things that he didn't know how much he's battle to actually get the things that he did. Um, I, I know myself, I know how much I've battled and what I've had to go through to have, um, uh, to, to conquer and, and to, to get the space and where I am right now. And all I want is, I mean, obviously these guys are such an inspiration. Um, I hope to, 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 to continue my path just like them, they are, and, and I hope to do justice to, uh, uh, to, to what these guys have been doing for us. Thank you, guys. I promise the next time my request in English. Max, welcome to Fight Week, but not just any Fight Week, UFC 300 Fight Weeks. You know, you've been atop of these amazing cars before, you've been in title fights before, but does this one feel a little bit extra special? For sure, you know, first things first, you gotta ask Connor, what are you laughing about on your comment, brother? Yeah, I did see that, I didn't yeah, know what's... Yeah, 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 go ask him, go ask him what are you laughing about. Hopefully you can get Lucky Charm shorts or something. Good for him, you know? We are talking, of course, about the floral pattern shorts you've got for this fight. Um, yeah, did post it, Connor did put a laughing emoji on it, but curious how you feel about being able to rep them in the Octagon. I loved it. I loved it, man. I loved it. You know, it came, it, it came together real quick. Being able to use it here at UFC 300, I'll, hopefully, uh, hopefully they leave it for me so I can keep using it every fight. So we see what happens. Do you think that's important for athletes to be able to represent themselves and, and sort of express themselves on ways other than just, you know, their fights? I think it's cool. Yeah, I think, I think it's a great way, you know, put, put a little flavor in it. You know, I guess so. I understand the whole uniform look because we're trying to, you know, go after, like, you know, follow other major sporting leagues. So at the end of the day, I get it, but to have your own, uh, have your own flavor and finally I get mine. It's, I mean, the people wanted it, you know what I mean? Tell, where's Hunter, where's Dana? Tell them, tell them the numbers of the sales because I, I want to see. I'm pretty sure that floor shorts is popping. Justin Gaethje, right, obviously a phenomenal fighter, BMF. When this fight was announced, I saw the reaction with someone was like, oh, he hits too hard for Max. You know, a guy who's never been dropped before in the Octagon. When you see those comments and people apparently being concerned for you and about your career after this fight, do you just think, okay, well, we'll see on Saturday? <laughs> we find out. We find out. You know, that's the beautiful thing. Every time uh, I did any of these interviews, go watch it all fight week. Every time they ask me what is, you know, what is the main thing, what is, when you come to think of Justin, what do you think of this fight? I think of violence and uh, this happens, you know, I smile, you know, I smile. This is, this is what Real Fighters is about, uh, Justin's a BMF. The beautiful thing is everybody has questions and uh, they, we have the answers come uh, UFC 300, Saturday night. Uh, I've been watching your YouTube channel, great content on there. I recommend everyone go watch it. You've been showing yourself bulking up for this fight a bit more than you did for that Dustin fight. How do you feel now walking around ready for a lightweight title fight? Brother, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I, I talked about this earlier today. I hate talking about it, but, you know, that Dustin fight was, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> my, my manager is calling me Muffin Top Max, this whole camp, you know. So at the end of the day, that's what it was, you know, for this fight. And we wanted to put on the right weight, we wanted to put on the... We wanted to be smart, we wanted to be strong, but we still wanted to be fast, so I, I think we found, found a, a very even ground, and uh, you guys get to see come uh, Saturday night. There was a, a quote from your coach on one of your video blogs where he said, uh, Max already has a BMF belt and it's in his chest. Mm -hmm. Do you think, comparing your skills to Gaethje's, that this could come down to whose heart is bigger, and do you think you beat him in that category? We see what happens, you know. We see what happens. I think a, a true BMF is a guy who, you know, who 
who's willing to fight and go in there like gladiator days, you know. And he said it before. If he was a, like I said, when I'm a gladiator, he said it in gladiator. He he would have fight to the death, you know, in a coliseum. So, the beautiful thing is. Uh, we get to find out, man. We get to find out. Attrition is going to be a big thing in this sport, I believe, uh, in this fight with him, and um, we get to find out. Max, we're here. Just one last quick one on the jump up to lightweight. Um, was that a conscious decision after the Dustin fight, like coming off of that? Like, if I ever go back up to lightweight, I have to approach this differently, or was that just a change right now for the Dustin? I mean, the Dustin time, I, I hate talking about it. I hate saying it. We just, they came with an opportunity, and opportunities like that, you cannot, you cannot, you, you do not say no, you know? It was just a time thing. With the Justin one, I think it was like six weeks or whatever, and if you count down the two weeks that you, you, you kind of come down from training week. That's like a four week, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, real fighters stay ready, like I always said. And I felt like I was ready. If you go watch that Dustin fight, there's a couple of things that I had to change. And, you know, the outcome is different, you know what I mean? And now we had 10 weeks, 10, 11 weeks. I don't know what it is for this fight. You guys get to see the difference, you know. Uh, uh, a lot of people like looking in the past. A lot of people like searching for stuff. They keep forgetting what's right in front of them, you know. And you guys are going to see come uh, Saturday night. Justin has uh, obviously famously declared himself the most exciting fighter in the UFC. I'm curious, do you agree with that, or do you kind of put yourself uh, above that? I mean, uh, how are you going to disagree with him? The guy had, what, 12 fights in the UFC, 12 bonuses? Brother, I, that speaks for itself. It is what it is. Uh, I, I, I'm just excited to be sharing the octagon with him come UFC 300 on a big event like this. When you got, when you got a card like this, the spotlight like this on us... Uh, being the people main event already, you know, I think we can still show the UFC pushing, pushing. Every time I see an ad on UFC for UFC 200, it's me and Justin. So at the end of the day, I, my Tim, Tim, Daniel, someone needs to get on the phone with Dana and Hunter, and we've got to talk numbers about some things because uh, it's looking kind of funny. And Justin said that uh, I think the ideal scenario for him would be doctor stoppage because he doesn't really want to put you out cold because he has respect for you. So I'm curious, what do you think of that prediction? I mean, it's cool, you know, it's cool. I, I don't want to put the man out cold either, but it's the fight game. That's what we love, you know. Like I said, for 25 minutes, I'm going to go in there. He's going to come for my neck. I'm going to come for his neck. And, uh, you know, after we can hug it out, you know, go get a beer. I, I mean, I don't drink beer. He can get his beer. Maybe I get a shot with him and, uh, you know, we get a pizza or something. And last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal? I think it's going to be a fun one. I think a lot of people are calling out Jamal just because he only as good as your last fight. And Jamal's last fight was what? Like, I don't know, how long was he out? 15 months, brother. Like, nobody even cares, you know? That's just what it, that's just what it is, you know? And then the, you see him posting funny videos, and everybody keep hating on him. Like, us fighters don't have a life outside of training. So at the end of the day, I think it's going to be a crazy fight. Both of them have, have, uh, have, have crazy power. You know, everybody talk about Alex's power. Uh, and I, I, I think Jamal has that crazy power too. How much time he, he made the man, he made a man in Johnny Walker do like something crazy after getting hit. That's that, that was kind of amazing. So, I think it's going to be a tough fight, man. It's a, it's a pick 'em fight. It's a coin toss, and um, I'm glad that I, I get to be here and witness it. Max, people were uh, very excited by your idea to have Mark Coleman wrap the title. Justin was in full agreement. Any update? Is this going to happen on Saturday? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. But I heard he's going to be here. And I, he'd probably be in Dana White's section, right? So, I mean, even if, if he's there, maybe if I see him or Justin see him, maybe we just tell him go, go in the cage. You know, who's going to stop? Who's going to stop him from entering the octagon? You know, good luck. Justin also said he wants uh, three hundred thousand dollar bonuses for this for UFC three hundred. Um, can you use some of your sway? You've been here for a long time. Are you gonna? Oh yeah, brother. I'm going. I'm going to. When we did a fighter meeting, we always have a fighter meeting. I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm gonna say five hundred k, so we can we can start you know like we can start going back. Okay, at four hundred and three hundred. I'm like final offer one hundred fifty. Come on, this is UFC three hundred. It's huge. The two guys that is pushing the the pushing the fight is asking for it. Why not? You know. Yep, I agree. And I remember you said at one point when you were growing out the hair that you were never going to come into a fight week with short hair again. Why did you change your mind? I mean, just because you guys said <laughs> a lot of people is forgetting who Max Bless Holloway was. They, they needed a reminder. UFC 300 was a, was a time, and uh, you guys are about to see a whole different animal, you know? Max, hey, Max right here. Go ahead. Uh, Max, so uh, I saw on your Instagram you built the Max Holloway Fitness Center and the Why Not Clubhouse for the Boys and Girls Club. I mean, 
Obviously, as a guy who's been very impacted by martial arts, what did it mean to you personally to be able to give back to your community at that level? It meant a lot, you know, I mean, being able to give back to my community at the One Night Boys and Girls Club was huge. I always wanted to do something for my community, so it meant a lot. They, I'm also, they also gave me the health and fitness ambassador of the Boys and Girls Club, so that was huge. But to be able to have that little gym spot in there, to have kids uh, uh, train safe and be smart and, and do the right decision, you know. Like when we went open, I told the kids, a lot of them is scrappy already, you know. So hopefully we can... We can uh, grab that energy, grab all that energy and put it in the right direction, you know, hopefully five, ten years, fifteen years, some kid from that gym that started that gym or even just touched and trained in that gym might be sitting in front of you one day and uh, that would be a uh, mission complete. Max, and then my back here. You've already left such a strong legacy at Featherweight. I really don't know that you have anything left to prove there. Is lightweight going to be your new weight class or do you plan on going back down to 145? Uh, we see what happens. We see what happens. You know, in this sport, having options is always good. You know, and uh, first things first is Justin Gaethje. But um, there, there, there's a fun fight down there that uh, a man keeps talking and I keep hearing, you know. So my only advice to that guy is, like, uh, when the contract come up, sign the dotted line. Don't make no excuses. Max, over here. You fought here in Ninth Island many different times, but this occasion, right? Where does this occasion rank amongst all the times you fought here in Ninth Island, given the magnitude of the event? Oh, this is huge, bro. This is huge. This is the hugest. This is UFC 300. What more can I ask for? Like I said, every time we fight in Hawaii, you guys, uh, every time we fight in Las Vegas, the Ninth Island, you guys see all the Hawaiian flags. You know what I mean? And uh, being UFC 300, being this big, being on a card like this, being on a history card, it's... It's going to be huge. You guys are going to see a wine flag swarm that damn arena, like always. And uh, I'm just blessed to be a part of, the, a part of this. And other than that Box. short amount of preparation from that last fight against Pori at 55, are there any things from that specific fight that you can take as learning experiences in order to get your hand raised this time fighting at 55? Not really, man. Dustin, Dustin and uh, Dustin and Gage is two different animals, you know, two different beasts, two different fighting styles, two different stances. So and two different ways of attack. So we see what happens, you know. I, 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 feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm a vet in this game. I fought a who's who, and um, at the end of the day, this is another guy up there that I got to figure out when I get in there. So we find out UC 200. Max over here. So if you get BMF title, probably next matchup for you is the new champion, Lea Topuria. And what do you think about that? Questionable, that's it. Uh, questionable. That guy, everybody keep asking me, what do I think of Topuria? Uh, yeah, fighting Topuria. He's questionable. I, 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 I'll fight him. You go ask him that question. Ask him that question about me. At the end of the day, UFC, I always wanted to fight for the title. I always want to do this. A lot of contenders, they gave me, they gave me a lot of up-and-coming contenders, and then there's one that didn't come up to, to, towards my way. So you can ask UFC about that. You can ask him the question.
got a big event this weekend or something. You do, and uh, Aljo over here, big fight for you, obviously. Um, how does it feel right now, Wednesday morning, compared to if you were preparing for a bantamweight fight? It's, uh, man, it's night and day. You know, <laughs> we were talking about the weight cut, and I was like, it's almost laughable for me. Um, it's still not easy, but compared to what I was doing before for so many years, this is almost like a cakewalk. I, I, obviously, I don't want to underplay it. It's still going to be a tough weight cut because I'm still super lean. Um, but I got like 15 pounds, which is a lot nicer than having 25. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you said the other day, I think you tweeted it being like, I'm either going to you know, look fantastic or I might look terrible, but like, I'm willing to be that guy who rolls the dice. And that's been the case with you throughout your career. Um, but right now, like, do you feel like this is going to be a better version of yourself or is it too, too soon to know? We're going to find out Saturday night. I, I really don't know. I think the training has been looking great. Uh, we've gotten a lot of good matchups in the, in the training room, a lot of good feedback. I think over, all in all, we've been doing some really good stuff. And I'm proud of the work we put in. And I just got to go out there and perform. And I think if I do that, the best version of myself shows up. And I, I really always talked about this at 35. Um, but I was a little bit more green back then. But there's a lot that I feel like I haven't been able to show in the octagon just because I, energy consumption, the weight cut. Um, I think now we're going to get to see a lot more of the, the flashy stuff and get back to the real funk. And facing Calvin Cater, who's long layoff, serious knee injury, um, you're never shy to throw an oblique kick, shoot for a takedown, things that you would assume would test the durability of his knee. Um, is that something you think about? Like, where is this guy going to be at physically? Nah, hopefully he's healed up, man. I, I don't wish any injuries or anything like that for any of these athletes. It's, it's hard enough trying to, trying to win a fight in the UFC, you know what I mean? So um, hopefully Calvin's 100% coming into this with his, his knee injury, and uh, I'm going to do what I got to do. It's not, I'm not trying to maliciously attack his knee. It's like, oh, I'm going to destroy your knee. Like, nah, I don't have any intent like that. I'm just going to use my grappling, use my kicks, use my, my punches. I'm fighting him everywhere and anywhere the fight goes. And where does a win here kind of put you in this division, do you think? Do you think there's any chance with you know, Max doing this BMF fight, uh, Volkanovski potentially wanting to take some time off, could you backdoor your way into a title shot with one win? I think so. I think if Max goes out there, he wins. I think I go out there and I win and I look good doing it. Uh, Ilya Tapori already said what he said. He said there's no challenger, so why not just skip the line instead of uh, getting in the tough gauntlet of a queue. Um, they, I mean, you'll see, they do what they want, right? So if they offer you a title fight, you'd be kind of crazy to tell them no. So if I go out there, do my job, I look good on a huge, massive card, I think the rest will take care of itself. I was right here. Uh, just even outside of fight camp, is just life better in general? You know, not having that massive weight cut to 135, even when you know you're not preparing for a fight? Yeah, stupid questions don't irritate me as much. You know, so it's a lot nicer. I could talk to my friends and family. I even, I'm in a group chat and they're like, wow, you're talking on a Monday? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, he's like 145 hits different. I'm like, yeah, very, very different. It's uh, night and days, not even comparison. Like normally on this Wednesday, I would need to be about 145 pounds in order to be in striking distance. Um, this morning I was 154.2. Um, so I was kind of, like I said, I don't want to underplay it, but it just feels like I don't want to say cakewalk, but it's a lot easier, nicer, and um, I can enjoy life a little bit more, which I think will give me some longevity in the sport a little bit more than 135. Uh, back in the day when Dustin made the jump from featherweight to lightweight, he said it took maybe a fight or two to feel like an actual lightweight rather than just a featherweight that stopped cutting weight to get to lightweight. Do you feel like an actual featherweight in there, or do you still kind of feel like a, just a bigger bantamweight? I don't know. I, I'm not going to know until I get in there with Calvin. I mean, I've been sparring with big 45ers, Julian Rosa, Dennis Bazookia, uh, Anthony Delemi, um, Kai Kamaka, Danny Gay. I've been, been getting some good rounds. Timmy Kwamba, who just got signed. And these guys, are they're not small dudes. So I like to think I've been having some pretty good rounds, some pretty good looks. And I think that's that gives me the confidence, you know? I, I do think Calvin might look at me like, oh, it's the little guy coming up. But... This little guy is strong, so uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't think he's overlooking me. I'm not overlooking him. I think this is a tough fight for both of us, and it just comes out to uh, who shows up on the night.
I think I saw an interview where you said you expected maybe a top five guy right away, but Calvin was the name they gave to you. Was there any thought of maybe waiting for those other featherweight fights to play out, or was kind of the, the allure of UFC 300 that pulled you to this fight? Definitely UFC 300. But um, I, to wait, I'm only getting older. I don't want to wait much longer. Like, even my last fight, I asked for just an extra month so I could heal up my injuries first before getting into a training camp and, and trying to makeshift the training camp. You know, but it, that's come and gone. Um, I'm already feeling like this was too long of a layoff. I think I had three grappling matches in the time, the time off. You know, I like to be active. There was a point in my career where I had five fights in one calendar year uh, in a 12-month span, you know. So uh, I think this is the start of something fresh and new, and uh, I'm looking forward to being active as long as I'm injury-free, being active and competing as much as I can, try to make as much money as I can, and hopefully fighting for a world title by the end of this year. And the featherweight division obviously has a lot of high-level strikers, but they also have guys like Brian and Bryce Mitchell and Mavzar who are all high-level grapplers as well. So do you think just the addition of you to this division, do you kind of put yourself at the top of that as like the better grapplers at 145 now? Yeah, I'm not going to toot my own horn. I, I think I'm pretty good, and uh, I think those guys think they're pretty good. Um, I think our grappling is just a little bit different the way we use it. So it just comes to see who can blend it the best. I, I think um, I do things just a little bit differently than those guys. And even in Tapori, he's, he's got some solid grappling that he hasn't really shown, but the guy can grapple. Um, you know, I'm not naive to knowing who's the best grapplers in this division. And um, with that said, I let the fans decide who they think is the best grappler and go from there. And last one for me, two quick ones. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Main event, man, that's a tough one. You know, but I'm rolling with my guy, Jamal Hill. I think that's a really tough fight. Obviously, he's coming back from a big injury. Um, Poetan is on a huge wave right now, and he, he's got the momentum. Of course, Jamal just had an injury. He never lost the momentum. So it's going to be fascinating to see who imposes their game plan first. I think Jamal's better when it comes to striking with the hands. I think uh, Poetan's got some really good calf kicks that Jamal just needs to be careful of, and I think if he can negate that with his reach, switch stance, uh, I think it should be a good night for him. And if he wants to grapple, he can actually grapple. Uh, I don't know how good Pereira's grappling is or his wrestling, and I think that's going to be the, the difference in that fight. And then you got the BMF belt. You got the volume of Max Holloway. I hope he gets back to his kicking. It would be nice to see him use all his tools in this fight because Gaethje's coming out with those kicks. Gaethje hits hard. And I don't know. That's a tough one. I, love, I like both those guys. I'm fans of both of those guys. You know, I, I watch them as often as I can. I've gone back, I've watched Max's UFC debut all the way to his last fight, you know. Just studying, doing tape, even before I was even thinking about coming up to 145. It's just, I like to see good technique, good MMA, and um, what better guy to watch than a guy like Max and Justin Gaethje. Hey, I'll Aljo, over, over here. here. Um, I'll be just here. quick, quick Other, question. Oh, sorry. Other than the change of weight class, are there any different things you're going to approach when you're looking at your featherweight tenure when you see those upper echelon guys at 45 compared to the roster at 35? Wait, so what's the question? Are there any things you're going to approach differently now during your 145 tenure when you see the top echelon of guys at the 145 roster? Approach differently? I, I, I don't think so. I mean, still study tape, be a student of the game. I'm not planning on changing any of those things that help get me to the top of 135. I just got to continuously be me and uh, just have the confidence to do what I do in the training room and let it fly on fight night, and I think good things are gonna happen. Uh, looking at the upper echelon, it's, it's a stacked division, especially when you get to the top of 145, there's some real good talent there. Uh, it, it'd be interesting to see how I match up with those guys. And after us, you've made it clear for a bit now that you wanted to eventually make this move up to 45, so did it sting a bit knowing that the O'Malley fight didn't go your way, seeing that potential fight that could have happened maybe between you and Volk at the time when you were both champs at 35 and 45? Oh, 100%. I, I, I'd, be lying if I said, <laughs> I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. Um, you know, it's not like O'Malley's a bad fighter. He's, I think he's a really good fighter. I just think the timeline was very fitting for him. And as a champion, you know, it would have been nice to have the time off that I requested. But, uh, you know, things happen behind the scenes and... At the end of the day, I signed a contract. I thought I could pull it off. I came up short, and the better guy won that night. So it is what it is. I would like to get that one back, especially if I can win the belt at 145. He's talking about, ah, I want to go get the jet and go to Spain. Like, bro, worry about Marab first, and let me worry about Calvin. If I get through Calvin and I can win the belt again, 
I would love to get that one back in, on that skinny guy. I, I would love to get that one back. Last one for me. You finally got your fight at the T-Mobile Arena that you've been wanting to do for a while now. So how did that feel? And obviously on this occasion at 300. To be on T-Mobile? Yeah. First time fighting T-Mobile. I fought at Mandalay Bay twice. My UC debut, Ronda Rousey versus Sarah McMahon, Daniel Cormier versus Patrick Cummins. Um, I'm just... I'm pumped to be on this, man. This is an opportunity of a lifetime for a lot of people. There's a lot of eyeballs, a lot of attraction, a lot of people are going to be watching, tuning in. And if I go out there and, and I show out, it's, it just opens up a lot more doors, even from what I have open now. Um, and we all know how the sport is, is. What have you done for me lately? So if I go out there and do my job in a good way, I think it opens up a lot of opportunities for myself. Algerman over here. Um, we were you ever offered a rematch at 135 after losing the title? Because you had a lot of title defenses. No, I was not. Unfortunately, it was not. I did ask for it, but I was told, you know, we can't do that. <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I just look at championship reigns a little bit differently. Everything matters for me. It's not just the way that you win. It's the storyline behind it. If you go out there and you fight guys that are not ranked and not, that are not the best guys, there's something that just doesn't sit right. For me, as a true competitor, I get the entertainment aspect of it, and I appreciate that. Get your money. But to try to say you're the best or you're fighting the best challenges of all time, it, it, that's the part that kind of rubs me the wrong way when it comes to anybody, not even just O'Malley. You should fight the next best guy in line, because otherwise, what are we doing this for? Like, we tooth the nail, clawing to get to the top, and then you get denied because another guy is a bit more popular or because there's a little bit more of an interesting storyline. Like, I get the business side of it, but the athlete side of it, it stings a little bit, you know? So uh, hopefully, hopefully Marab writes the ship, which I think he will, and uh, just go from there. I, I, I'm not bitter about it. Like I said, O'Malley just took an opportunity that the UFC gave him, and he made the most of it. And unfortunately for me, I was the sacrificial lamb, but uh, it is what it is. Are you ever worried that could happen again in your career? No, nah, because next time when I say no to my manager and to my team, I'm just no, you know? When I say no 10 times and then eventually I, I wilt, you know, I succumb to the pressure a little bit and at the end of the day, I'm a grown ass man. I made my decision, I live with it, but I know if that opportunity came again, I just want to do it, you know? I, I know what makes me happy. I know what the mindset I need to have to go into a fight, and I don't think anyone should be fighting unless you're 100%. I think that's why Izzy took a break, because it, it does take a mental toll on you, you know? And just last thing on 135, what do you, what do you think about Umar Nurmagomedov in the division? It looks like he's going to fight Corey Sanhagen next. Do you, do you feel like that is a tough matchup for Corey? Yeah, it's definitely a tough matchup. Umar's a stud. Uh, Corey's a stud as well. I think the striking aspect is going to play out, because I don't know if Umar's going to be able to get Corey down as easily. And I know he's good when he gets on top. He has really good top pressure, really good control. He's a strong dude. It's just whether or not he could do that to Corey Sanhagen, who moves a lot. Not an easy guy to take down. Um, I think for me, I fought him at the apex, so I kind of had, kind of had it a little bit rigged, you know, right out of the gate. But uh, in a big cage, maybe it's a completely different fight. So I don't know how Umar handles that. But he's a good wrestler. I think he will have a good game plan, and I think Corey's going to have a good game plan as well. Oh. Sorry, just last one for me. Um, I know Calvin has done some training in Vegas before. Had you ever trained with him before, or at least crossed paths in the gym? We, Calvin, Caden, and I actually trained when I was an amateur. Um, I'll let him talk about that. But I was an amateur. I think he was an amateur or a pro. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was doing a lot of stuff I saw on YouTube videos, and it happened to work. But that was 2000, I think, 9 or 10. You know, so we haven't gotten the, time, the chance to train again. I would have loved to. I, I always thought I was going to fight his teammate, Rob Font. I think I trained one of his other partners, some, some skinny guy. I think he also fights at 45. Um, we, we had some light sparring in Nashville when Dennis Bazuki had made his UFC debut and I flew out. But I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of know what Calvin brings to the table, but we trained that one time, and that was years ago. He's a completely different fighter. I'm a completely different person as well. I mean, honestly, I think I could fight to 40 if I really wanted to, the way I'm feeling. Um, will I do that? Hopefully not. <laughs> that doesn't. Fighting at 40 just seems like everything just hurts. A leg kicks hurt. Everything hurts just so much more. It takes a lot longer to heal. The older you get, you don't bounce back the same. Uh, yeah, 
We'll see. We'll see. I definitely think I got a, lot, a little bit more in the tank now. We'll see how this fight goes, and then I can make an educated decision on how much longer I want to do this. It's going to be sad. Sad song. Thank you guys. Davidson. Hello. 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 Hi. <laughs> Good English. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, a big marquee event here at UFC 300, and you and Cody are kicking off the card. So, I guess, what are the emotions now that you know fight camp is done, and you just have to weigh in and fight on Saturday? Um evento importante. Você e o Cody estão abrindo o evento no sábado. Basicamente, não tem muito mais que falta para essa luta. É só passar pelo pela pesagem e lutar. Como é que está sentindo? Eu estou me sentindo muito bem. É, graças a Deus, bem dizer, já bati o peso, né? É, agora é só assistir o, como ele se movimenta, para onde ele anda, que horas ele volta e para que dê tudo certo a minha estratégia na luta. Um, now, I mean, feeling great, um, I pretty much hit weight already, so now it's just a matter of like starting to, to see you know, uh, analyze him a little bit, study him, see how he moves, see what time he comes back from, from his activities and stuff, and just, like, see if the, the strategy that we put on Saturday is going to work. Cody was in here earlier, and he said uh, he called you out, and his words were, he doesn't want this fight, let's make that clear, speaking of you. So I guess, did, is this a fight that you wanted, and when they approached you with Cody, were you happy with the name? Cody was here a little bit antes, hoje, and he said, like, he kind of gave you a intimidation, and you said, ele não me quer, ele não quer lutar comigo, ele não, tá, ele não, tá, ele não queria essa luta. Então, o que, que você acha do, do, do fato de ele ter falado isso logo cedo? Talvez seja... Sim, sem palavra para o que ele falou, entendeu? Para mim, eu luto com qualquer um, eu estou aqui na organização, o que eles colocarem para lutar, eu quero, eu agradeço pela oportunidade, né? E tenho certeza que sábado vencendo o Corigaba eu vou ter a maior chance da minha vida, né? Eu tenho certeza que ele, a organização vai olhar com carinho para mim e vai ver que eu mereço uma disputa de cinturão. Um, it's a, I, I, I don't know what to make of that, I don't know what to say, I mean, not much to say except for uh, everybody knows that I, I will fight anyone. Um, that the, the organization's seen that, that I'll fight anybody in this in this company. And I think I'm just ready for to fight on Saturday because that winning on Saturday means like I have the greatest opportunity in my life right now. And I think that the organization's gonna see me with different eyes and see me with, with some, give me some love and give me the opportunity. When Dana White told everyone that you and Cody were kicking off the card, uh, I'm curious, were you aware of that before then? And what do you think, what do you make of being the first fight of the entire event? Quando o Dana falou que você e o Cody estavam abrindo o evento, é, não sei se você já sabia antes de ser informado, ou é, você não sabia, foi uma surpresa. E como é que você vê a oportunidade de abrir o UFC 300? Eu me sinto muito feliz porque, como... Dana falou né, que ele quer ver a casa cheia desde o início, então é, tenho certeza que a minha luta contra o Cody vai lotar a casa cheia, né? E, gente, pode esperar, o Cody é um cara que é agressivo, né, ele gosta de uma luta calorosa e eu vou dar essa luta a ele. Um, you know, I'm, I was very happy because you think Dana said, I want a packed house from the start. And you have, uh, you know, you can bet, you have 
uh, Cody being an aggressive guy, a guy who likes a heated fight, and I'm going to bring that fight to him. So th that's the fight that we're getting and, and the, fight, the backed house. Well, considering your style of fighting and his style of fighting, do you foresee this possibly reaching the judges' scorecard, or do you kind of assume that you know someone's going to sleep in this fight? Considerando que tem o teu estilo de luta, o estilo de luta dele. Você acha que realmente vai ter a possibilidade de ir para decisão ou nem a gente não vai ter essa oportunidade de chegar para decisão e alguém vai ser vai botar alguém para dormir? É bem difícil chegar à decisão. É, como eu falei, ele, ele é um cara bem agressivo, eu também sou. E eu treinei muito o strike para essa luta. E são três rounds de luta, então não tem como a luta ser tão parada, né? Eu espero que ele não, não fuja tanto de mim. Eu quero que ele pare para a gente fazer a nossa trocação. E vamos ver quem que tem a mão mais pesada. Um, I, yeah, I don't think this fight's going to the end. I think I did. Me look at my style, look at his style. Like I trained so hard on my striking for this. I mean, and I hope he doesn't move around and try to avoid that because I want him to, to stand and strike with me. And uh, I don't think, I mean, listen, it's three rounds. I mean, we don't got much time. We, we, we need to go at it. Last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, yeah, my last question. Pensamentos gerais sobre o evento. A primeira a, a luta pelo BMF entre o Justin Gage e o Max Holloway, e também é, a luta entre o Pota e o Jamal Hill. Bom, uh, Max e, e Just são dois caras incríveis. É, é, eles precisam e eu tenho certeza que vão proporcionar uma grande luta, um grande show da noite. Pota e Jamal uh, também. Conheço os dois, não tenho o que falar, entendeu? E tudo que eu quero é que eles tragam o que o público espera, um show de porrada. Um, I think, I mean, look at this fight between Justin and Max. I mean, look at the, just everything in there to actually be a great fight. I mean, the styles, I mean, they're just gonna go at it. Um, and for the Boatan, for Pereira and, and Hill, I mean, got nothing to say on the on bad to say of these guys. I just, I think, I hope that they put on the show and the brawl and the striking. I mean, the banger that everybody wants. Davidson. Hi. Your first win in the division comes over Rob. It gets you into the rankings. Do you see a win over Cody getting you a title shot? É, a tua primeira vitória na divisão é, contra o Rob Font já te botou no, nos rankings. Você vê essa luta, então, essa é uma vitória no sábado contra o Cody, já te dando a oportunidade de, de lutar por um cinturão? É, eu vejo sim uma vitória, eu dei tudo de mim nos meus treinos, eu treinei muito forte para isso, e o Cody é um cara que tem um nome muito pesado na organização, e eu vencendo ele, eu, eu quero muito que a organização me dê essa oportunidade. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I, I trained a lot for this one. I gave my all in my camp. And I think that Cody's the guy that's respected and seen and, and, and by a certain light by the organization. I do believe that after a win like this, I hope that, that the UFC gives me this opportunity. And one last thing for me, Cody calling you out. Do you see it as something that energizes you or is disrespectful? Uh, yeah, minha última pergunta. Quando o Cody te intimou e falou aquilo que ele falou, Jumar, que você não queria essa luta, ativa ou isso é, isso é uma coisa que, tipo, como é que você... Como é que você... Ah, eu sou muito motivado para todas as minhas lutas. Certamente eu estou mais motivado ainda para lutar contra o Cody, que era um cara que, desde a minha da, da categoria 57 quilos, que eu queria lutar com ele e não deu certo. É, e agora, graças a Deus, vai dar, deu certo, né? a luta está prestes a acontecer, então eu estou muito empolgado para isso, e o meu espírito é, é, é esse, cara, eu quero, eu quero proporcionar a, a luta da noite. You know, I've always been a very motivated guy, a very focused guy on my fights, and as far as Cody's concerned, like, I wanted him back. I, I've, I've talked about him back when I was a flyweight, so it's, I, I've talked about this before. So, I mean, that what I want, it's, it's, uh, I come out for my style is just to, to give people the fight. That's, that's my style. I want people to see a, a, a show. That's what I want to put on for people. Thank you. Davidson. Hi. Back here. Uh, okay. Um, 
I'm not sure if you're paying attention paying attention to the flyweight division anymore, but I just wanted your thoughts on um, Steve Ersig getting the title shot um, and, and him being a relatively new UFC fighter. É, não sei se você ainda está prestando atenção nos moscas, mas o que, que você achou, se, se, tá, se você está inteirado de tudo, da chance que o Steve Ersig teve, com, está tendo agora contra o Pantoja, por lutar por um título, um pouco tempo na organização? Bom, é, eu achei um pouco precoce, mas é, tudo, tudo depende da organização. Né? Se a organização decidiu colocar ele, que seja ele. Mas eu vejo... Dois caras que merecem uma disputa de cinturão, que estão uh, aí batendo na porta, e eu acho que falta um pouco mais de, de mídia dos caras, talvez, né, para que a organização dê essa chance a eles para lutar pelo cinturão, que são dois russos, uh, não me recordo o nome dos caras agora, mas dois garotos que merecem, são muito talentosos. Um, I think this is a little early, but I think that the organization feels that, that that he deserves a chance, uh, so be it. And I, I, I just do think that some of the guys that are knocking on the door for that title shot, I think they need more media maybe. I think just they need to, to push it a little harder. Um, I, I, um, right now, I mean, there's two Russians, your story. I, I'm sorry, the, the, I just drew a blank on the name, but they're the ones that should be actually having the, the title shot right now, I just think. But hey, I mean, he's got the shot, he's got it. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Que frio é isso? <laughs> what, what cold is this, bro? Like, he's cold. Sharma. Alex, uh, welcome. A huge fight card once again for you. Um, do you ever take time to kind of appreciate your trajectory in this company and how far you've come from your debut to headlining one of the most historic cards ever? Well, Alex, a great card is coming on Sabadão. Did you have an opportunity to appreciate how far you've come from the card to lead a card in your career? Não, com certeza, né? Desde quando eu cheguei aqui, é... eu acho que eu fui 
bem recebido, né? mas agora pô, é, é totalmente diferente. Né? Cada luta que passa, é, eu vejo mais o carinho, a confiança, né? não só dos fãs, mas de todo mundo. É, é isso. No, man, absolutely, you know what I mean? I got, I got welcoming, getting here, but I see every time increasing my popularity and the love from the fans with me. Yeah, has there ever been a, a fan interaction or someone who's spoke to you, came to you, that's kind of made you, you know, take a step back in that sense, like when you're really appreciating this? Teve alguma interação específica com algum fã, com alguém que te fez, assim, dar um passo para trás, sentir, lembrar, assim, que te marcou? Eu não entendi. Alguma interação específica, alguma com um fã chegou, algum momento assim que te marcou um pouco, você lembra? Não, aqui é, sempre tem algo. Aqui ainda não, como não saía, a gente não está no hotel, a gente está numa casa, está um pouquinho mais isolado, mas sempre quando estou no hotel sempre vem muitos fãs, né, falando de histórias, assim, é, falando é, de, de álcool, de bebida, né, sabe da minha história e, e, e quer falar para mim que, pô, às vezes é, parou, né? Não, pô, não bebe mais porque viu minha história, viu onde eu cheguei e isso motivou muito e eu acho que é onde que me toca. Well, so far this five week no because we not stay in a fighters hotel. We actually got stay in a house, but we didn't had so much contact with the fans. But in general, man, always wherever I go, whether it's on five week and I'm on the hotel, always a fan, a fan comes to me and say that they were able to overcome problem with addiction or alcohol, like by seeing his story, by seeing the way that he lived his life, and that is very touch motivating for him. You had the interaction with Jamal yesterday where he had you sign the jacket and stuff. Um, what did you think of that? Were you surprised he came up to you and was so friendly in that moment? Você teve aquele encontro com o Jamal ontem, no qual ele veio pedir você assinar a camiseta, sim, foi bacana com você. Aquilo te surpreendeu um pouco de tá, ter aquele tipo de interação naquele momento? Não, não surpreso, mas né, acho que foi bem respeitoso né, é, ali naquele momento. Me, pô, assinei a, a, a blusa ali sem nenhum problema. Well, no surprise, he was very respectful in that moment, so I signed the, the, the sweatshirt with no problem. And what's just your expectation of what he's going to be like in the fight? Serious injury, long layoff for him. Um, how does that affect the fighter that might be in the cage on Saturday compared to the one you've seen on tape? Qual a expectativa que você tem para ele no sábado devido ao fato de ele estar vindo de uma grande lesão? Não sabe se recuperou bem, se não se recuperou. O que você tem em mente do lutador que você vai ver sábado versus o lutador que você já viu nos vídeos anteriores? Não, eu não estou assim, em mente, com a minha mente assim, falando, é, nesse lado que está um tempo parado, veio de uma lesão. Eu acho que se ele está ali, né, pô, se ele aceitou essa luta é porque ele está tá 100%, porque ele sabe da responsabilidade, é, ele sabe com quem que ele vai lutar. Então, eu, na minha mente, ele está bem e pô, eu vou fazer a minha parte. I'm not with the expect, definitely not with the expectations of him just being sitting, sitting out, not training because of an injury. If he signed a contract to fight this fight, he did for a reason. He know the test that he had a have, have ahead of, him, of himself, so I'm very aware of that. And just my last question. You weren't able to defend the title at middleweight. What would it mean to you to get a title defense of this belt in this weight class? A última pergunta, você não conseguiu defender o seu cinturão no peso médio, o que significa você estar podendo talvez defender o cinturão agora no meio pesado? Bom, esse é meu trabalho, a gente está ali tentando fazer o melhor, né? É, foi o que eu, eu tentei, tentei defender o cinturão, é, pô, perdi, né? Mas isso, acho que não, não sou o primeiro que acontece isso, é, pô, é todo mundo ali querendo ser um melhor do que o outro ali, pô, querendo sair campeão. E eu tô com a mesma mente, eu, pô, eu sou um cara muito realista, né? Eu já não entro falando, pô, ganhei, eu sei que eu posso perder, né? Mas a minha mente, pô, eu tô ali para me ganhar. Well, I get there to win, I lost, but you know what I mean? That's part of the game. I don't try to raise not too much high expectations. I got there to fight. I came here with a mindset to win and defend the belt. Alex, right here. Uh, Jamal was in here earlier, and someone asked him, you know, because he has a lot of wins over Brazilians, and they asked, like, like, how are Brazilians this week treating you, the fans? And he said that your fans are a little different than just regular Brazilian MMA fans, but didn't quite get specific. So I'm curious, why do you think your fans are so different from just your casual Brazilian MMA fans? O Jamal veio aqui mais cedo né, e falou, os caras perguntaram para ele como é que é ter tanta vitória assim contra, contra vários brasileiros e como é que é a interação com os fãs. Ele falou que interagir com seus fãs é uma coisa totalmente diferente do que com outro lutador brasileiro ou qualquer outro lutador. Mas não foi específico como. O que você acha que ele quis dizer? Não sei. I don't know.
Now, did you make, do you take anything away from Jamal uh, calling Israel or Israel calling Jamal for, to offer some advice ahead of this fight? O que você tira do fato de ele ter ligado para o Israel Adesanya e o Adesanya ter dado uns toques para ele no seu jogo? É, cara, eu já lutei várias vezes com o Adesanya. É, eu acho que ele fez uma coisa boa ali, né, muito inteligente da parte dele, é, fazendo essa ligação né, por vídeo, porque eu acho que se ele realmente ele vai é, treinar na academia do Adesanya e, pô, é, um, um exemplo, faz um spy ali com ele, eu acho que seria uma frustração para ele. E eu acho que isso não seria bom. Então, a melhor coisa que ele fez foi ter feito uma chamada de vídeo. Eu acho que foi bom. Eu acho que, na verdade, o melhor que ele fez para ele, porque, na verdade, se ele tivesse ganho, ganhou e inspirou o Israel Adesanya, você teria uma grande frustração para ele, especialmente por o fato de que o Alex beat ele tantas vezes. Uma última pergunta para mim. Posso ter suas opiniões sobre o BMF entre Max e Justin? Sim, eu acho que você acha do título do BMF contra o Justin Gaethje? Sim, eu acho que você acha do título do BMF contra o Justin Gaethje? Sim, eu acho que você acha do título do BMF contra o Justin Gaethje contra o Max Holloway? I don't know. I don't know. Alex, over here. A lot of talk, oh, when people talk about you as your fast rise, and rightly so, you've accomplished so much in MMA in such a short amount of time. So if everything goes your way on Saturday during this big card, what are some other goals you want to check off your list when we're talking about mixed martial arts? Pô, pessoal fala aí da sua ascensão muito rápida que você teve no MMA, né? Todas essas conquistas. E o que você tem em mente aí, você ganhando sábado, quais seriam os seus próximos passos? Bom, o espaço é pô, defender o cinturão, né? Eu acho que não, não tem um limite. Quando pô, você é campeão, né? Você vai, as próximas lutas são defesa. Eu não, pô, eu, é, eu não, vocês, vocês veem que eu não dou nome, né? Quem eles colocar, eu vou lutar. Eu, pô, sou campeão, eu não tenho que escolher nada, né? E os próximos passos é as defesas. Não tem, não tem um plano. Well, there's no plan, man. The next step is to keep defending the title, unlimited times. I'm not the kind of guy that call our opponents because I'll fight anybody. I'm the champ. So I would just want to keep defending it. And how would you feel if the arena started chanting Chama during your fight? Como é que você vai se sentir se a arena inteira começar a falar Chama durante sua luta? Pô, eu vou adorar, né? Porque a galera, pô, aceitou isso e, pô, tá muito legal. I'm gonna love, man, because, you know, the crowd accepted that and it's something real cool for me. Obrigado. Botan, aqui, Botan. Cara, você estreou no UFC no Madison Square Garden com o um nocaute, depois de um ano depois você foi campeão dos médios, um ano depois campeão dos meio pesados e agora vai ser o último atleta a caminhar rumo ao octógono no UFC 300, que é o maior card da história. Se três anos atrás, depois que você venceu o Thomas Powell no LFA, você contasse essa história, você, Poitain, hoje, contasse essa história para aquele Poitain, qual que você acha que seria a reação? Well, uh, looking back three years ago, made your UFC debut. A year later, you won the middleweight title. And after one more year, you won the light heavyweight title. The Alex days right now, looking back at the Alex that fought Thomas Powell at LFA before the UFC, what would you tell him? Bom, eu iria ficar muito surpreso, né? Porque, com certeza, foi algo assim, é, muito rápido. Mas, como eu falo para todo mundo, é, eu já tinha uma história, né? É difícil alguém chegar assim, pô, de outros eventos, né? Assim, eventos menores e chegar aqui e, e eles dar essa oportunidade, né? Me deram essa oportunidade, mas porque eu já tinha uma história, pô, o Israel era, era, era o campeão, então eu tinha uma história com ele e isso facilitou, né? A minha, a minha chegada até, os, até disputar o título e, pô, fui campeão e acho que foi todo um trabalho muito bem feito. Well, if I had told the Alex Pereira from then what everything that happened obviously be surprised because it was too fast, but also everything that happened was consequence of the work that I did before the organization to the history that I had, to the history that I had with Israel Adesanya that led me to get where I got here right now. E o Potan, como é que é para você dividir o card com o Charles? Tem até aquele vídeo, se eu não me engano, foi na porta da Shootbox lá em São Paulo, vocês ali em algum momento da carreira. Como é que é dividir esse momento com ele, que assim como você é um grande astro no Brasil, você acha que as histórias de vocês têm algo parecido e por isso vocês são tão cativantes para o público brasileiro? E o que é que você acha que você parte da carreira que o Charles Oliveira é parte também? Eu tive um vídeo há alguns anos atrás, com alguns caras, lá atrás, treinando a chute de boxe juntos. Ele também é um grande artista para o público brasileiro. O que significa para você estar na mesma carreira que ele tem com ele? Assim, da onde, da, da onde a gente saiu, né? Bom, aonde a gente chegou? Claro que o Charles já está um, uma longa caminhada aqui dentro do UFC, né? mas é, 
pô, ele conseguiu, né? Pô, conseguiu o cinturão. Eu cheguei depois também, pô, conseguiu o cinturão. É, dentro do UFC é um pouco diferente a nossa história, né? Mas lá fora as dificuldades, tudo que a gente passou, acho que é um pouco, é um pouco similar. E eu, pô, eu fico muito feliz, né? Pô, acho que aquele vídeo foi, acho que cinco anos atrás, né? E de lá para cá mudou muitas coisas e estou muito feliz com tudo. Não, man, it's good because you know we both came from similar beginnings, like humble beginnings, and even though that he's longer in the UFC than me, you know what I mean. But he became a champ, I became a champ. Different, different histories, different pace, but we both came from humble beginnings. That video was made, I think, five years ago. We were in a way different place in life than we are right now, so that makes me really happy to see. Alex, right here. Alex, a lot of fans are, uh, they really enjoy your relationship with Poliana Viana. What is it about your personality and hers that has worked together so well, so quickly? Muitos fãs gostam de, da, dessa interação que você tem com a Poliana. Né? Vocês são duas pessoas muito, muito engraçadas, assim, parece que é, é legal, os fãs gostam de ver isso aí. O que você acha assim, que deu certo assim, entre você e ela, assim, por carinho dos fãs? Bom, acho que pô, a nossa simplicidade é... Pô, a Poliana é uma pessoa assim muito simples, pô, tá conquistando o seu espaço, vejo muito potencial nela e pô, a gente estava conversando esses dias, né? pô, quem está no UFC lógico, o sonho é se tornar é, campeão, campeã e ela falou, pô, esse é meu sonho, e eu falei, pô, posso te ajudar, a, a equipe pode te ajudar se você quer, então assim é uma pessoa que é, é carismática e é por isso que as pessoas gostam dela, assim. Pô, eu não sou, talvez, carismático, mas eu, sei lá, tenho o meu jeito e as pessoas gostam. Well, I think the fact of her simplicity plays a big part of it. And I think that's what the fans like. I talked to her the other day, you know what I mean? Like, she's very humble and asked what she, what she looked for in the UFC. She said that she wanted to be a UFC champion. So I told her that me and my team can maybe help her get to that goal. You know what I mean? I think her charism, she's very charismatic. I'm not as charismatic, you know what I mean? I think just... Fans like how I act, but it is that. Alexia, so, champ, can I ask, you said you will win this fight easily and then go back to Brazil and headline you and there, and who will be next opponent for champ? Você falou que ganhando essa luta aí, dando tudo certo, você lutaria no Brasil. Se lutar, seria com quem? Bom, não, não tem ninguém em mente, não. Uh, pô, quem eles quisessem colocar? I have nobody in mind, whoever they want to put on. Alex, um, with a victory this weekend, can we expect more English in the cage from you? Com a vitória esse final de semana, dá para gente esperar um pouquinho mais de inglês seu no, no, na, na entrevista? Não. <laughs> Chama.
Hi guys. Som, som, som. É o seu, não tá não. Hi. Hi. Que isso, voz, voz de locutor, né? Opa, bom dia. Bom dia. Jessica, right here. You've had a lot of big moments in your career, big fights, big cards. What does this one mean to you and the storied run of your UFC career? Você teve tantos momentos na tua carreira, grandes momentos, grandes lutas, grandes lugares. O que que isso, UFC 300, significa para você na tua carreira? É um momento histórico para mim, né? É, é um... Quando teve o UFC 200, eu queria muito ter participado e aí eu não, não tive a oportunidade. E aí, dessa vez, eu já tinha lutado, já estava bem, já estava descansada, e apareceu a oportunidade de lutar o 300. Eu falei, ah, mas é, não tem nem como correr dessa oportunidade. Então, estou muito feliz, muito honrada de poder fazer parte desse card, né? porque eles podiam ter escolhido qualquer outra mulher e eles me escolheram. Então, eu estou muito feliz, muito honrada. E espero é, suprir todas as necessidades do UFC nesse evento e superar todas as expectativas. Um, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity. I actually wanted to be a part of UFC 200. I really wanted back in the day, but I just, I, I mean, I wasn't called for that. So when the opportunity came knocking for 300, I said, well, I can't run away from that one. I mean, how, how can you not? I mean, I, I feel very happy. I feel honored to be a part of this, a historic moment. And I hope I'm able to, you know, just uh, fulfill all the, uh, the needs of the UFC on this particular card. We're very honored and very happy. This is your sixth fight since January of last year, so about 15 months. Just how are you holding up physically and getting through these camps and keeping this activity while trying to maintain performance? Tu a sexta luta no UFC desde janeiro do ano passado. Então como é que tá, é, como é que tá a tua forma física? Como é que você está sentindo e como é que você tem conseguido manter esse nível de atividade, nível de saúde durante esse período? Ah, eu acho que é muito, muito Deus também, né, na, na causa, mas é, eu, eu venho, antigamente eu não tomava suplementação, eu não tinha esse acompanhamento que eu tenho hoje, que estar aqui em Las Vegas tem feito uma diferença muito grande para mim, né, ter o acompanhamento do PI, dos nutricionistas, preparador físico, é, a parte de fisioterapia, então isso faz uma diferença muito grande, toda vez que eu sinto alguma dor, eu vejo que eu vou ter alguma lesão, eu estou lá dentro do UFC, já vou ali correndo para fisioterapia e já dou um jeito nisso. Então, assim, é, eu acho que eu poder estar lutando sempre é muito por conta de ter esse, é, esse suporte que o UFC dá para a gente. E eu costumo dizer para a galera que vem do Brasil para cá, eu falo, gente, se vocês não sabem o que é bom, fica aqui, fica aqui que vocês vão saber o que é bom. Então, acho que isso, isso é o meu diferencial, é o... Eu acho que estando aqui eu vou poder lutar até os meus 40 anos e eu espero conseguir fazer muita história ainda dentro do UFC e chegar aos meus 40 aqui dentro da organização. Um, I think that this it, it's uh, obviously the, the there's God in the cause. I mean, it, it's it's been blessed about this and also be, being able to like for, back in the day I didn't even supplement like and now look I'm Being in Las Vegas has contributed a great deal. I mean, you're here, you're eating right, you're training right. Look at the access that we have to the PI. I mean, I take full advantage of it. So um, the, from the nutrition side to the athletic training side to also physical therapy. I mean, if anything is hurting, I go to physical therapy right away. I'm always using the services. So this is, it's a big It's a great part of actually being able to accomplish this is actually have access to that. And that's why I tell everyone, um, for everyone that's coming from Brazil. Like, if you don't know what's good, like, you're about to find out. Like, stay here and take full advantage of these services. And I feel that if I continue to do this, uh, I can fight until my 40. Like, I, I, I'm, I, I want to still do a lot, you know, make a lot of history in this organization, I, sincerely. With being in Las Vegas and using the, all the full scope of services of the PI, I think that I can definitely fight until my, until my 40s. And that's kind of the physical side. As far as the, the mental side, ahead of the last fight, you talked a bit about you know, what you're going through personally with the divorce and maybe not fighting for all the right reasons. Do you feel in a different, maybe better headspace now, or is not a lot change between now and November? E também, isso que você mencionou é muito do lado físico, claro. E tem o lado mental, o lado psicológico. Você, antes da tua última luta, você mencionou bastante, e depois também, você mencionou sobre o, o que você... 
as coisas que estavam passando na tua vida pessoal, você mencionou o divórcio abertamente, você disse que talvez não estivesse lutando pelas razões corretas, você... Como é que está é tá esse espaço? Como é que está a tua cabeça nesse momento? Como é que você está... Você acha que você já está mais removida disso? Como é que, que momento que você está na tua vida? Ah, eu acho que depois que eu me converti de novo para para outra religião, né? porque eu era do Candomblé e da Umbanda, e agora, hoje, eu sou de Deus, <risos> eu escolho Deus. Então, acho que isso fez uma diferença muito grande para mim, porque estar tá dentro da igreja e buscar a fé me trouxe muita força mental, muita sabedoria. É... Eu venho orando todos os dias, pedindo a Deus para me dar essa sabedoria, e Ele tem me dado, então eu venho treinando cada vez mais e melhor. E eu acho que tudo que eu passei foi motivação para eu crescer, e, e me, me tornar melhor, né? Eu acho que as dificuldades da nossa vida elas vêm para nos fortalecer. E com certeza essa questão do divórcio veio para me fortalecer, para me mostrar quem são as pessoas de verdade do meu lado. E eu tenho certeza ainda vai ter muita novidade ainda. Vocês ainda vão saber de muita coisa que está por vir. Eu ainda não vou falar para vocês, vou falar só mais à frente. Mas tem, tem, tem muita coisa, eu acho que a galera vai olhar para mim e falar assim, Jéssica, como é que você conseguiu passar por tudo isso e fazer uma luta tão incrível, porque é isso que vai acontecer no sábado, eu vou mostrar a, a Jéssica Andrade de verdade, não só a Batistaca lá dentro, mas a, a Jéssica que está pronta para tudo, para enfrentar todo mundo. Um, I think it starts with, you know, you know, some conversion in religion, I used to follow some African matrix uh, uh, religions in Brazil, now um, uh, I'm a woman of God, and so uh, I think that my religious belief now and the fact that I'm, I'm praying, I'm focused, and, and it has helped me, it has, being in church actually has helped me and has motivated me to train better, to pay attention to myself better and everything else. And also, I do believe that, you know, the hardships and the challenges that we have in life, they help us, they help us become better and they help us improve. And these are things that just, they're hurdles that you need to overcome to become a better person. And, and I think that's what divorce uh, taught me. And, you know, um, I think there's more to come, and believe me, let's just say that you haven't heard the full thing yet, you're probably, when you hear about my life in full, you're going to like, how did you, how did you go through this, and how did you have such an amazing fight, which I hope to have on Saturday, uh, and, and you hear that there was, a, there was a lot into it, but that's, I think all those things, this, uh, they, they have helped me uh, just show the, the real Jessica Andrade, not just the, you know, the pile driver that you guys know, just the, the real one in and outside of the octagon and a, and a better person, a better fighter. And just last one, um, your thoughts on Marina Rodriguez in this matchup. Um, she's been in the UFC for a while, and even when people beat her, it's kind of hard to look good. It's like decisions, things like that. Um, what do you just think of this matchup and how you can win here? É, pensamentos gerais sobre a Marina, uma lutadora dura, uma lutadora que quando as pessoas ganham dela, é, nem, nem, nem na vitória fica bonito, porque ela consegue deixar, levar para a decisão, é uma luta dura, é difícil, então como é que você vê ela como oponente? Olha, eu já treinei algumas vezes com a Marina, né? a gente é da mesma agência, né? É, ela já foi no Rio treinar algumas vezes com a gente, então eu conheço o jogo da, da Marina, a Marina também conhece o meu jogo, eu, eu acredito que a gente evolui a cada luta, mas a estratégia da luta só acontece mesmo depois do primeiro soco, né? depois que o primeiro soco entra ali dentro do octógono, aí é que você vê a dificuldade que vai ser durante a luta. Então eu, eu acredito que é, eu estou mais do que pronta para essa luta, eu não quero deixar para decisões do, dos juízes, assim como eu tenho certeza que ela também não quer. Então, eu sei que ela vem treinando muito parte de chão também, porque eu acredito que ela imagine que eu seja pior do que ela na trocação. Né? Eu não, não tiro a evolução dela e nem o Muay Thai dela, que realmente é exímio, mas eu sei que eu também evoluí muito na trocação, eu sou muito forte. E é o que eu costumo dizer, aonde eu bato, não nasce mais cabelo. Então, pode ser que depois do primeiro soco, a estratégia dela mude e, e eu acho que ela que vai querer colocar a luta para baixo. E aí eu estou em casa. Um, I, I know she's a fighter, we, we've trained, uh, we've sparred, we've trained, she's come to Rio, so I've had an opportunity to see her. Um, so, and also, we're under the same agency, so obviously. But, you know, there's a, there's a lot of strategy that goes into to these fights, but, you know, we like to, I like to say that a strategy goes only so far as the first punch. Once the first punch connects, I mean, strategy goes out the door. So I believe that she would be uh, I, I trying to, I know she's been training and I, I know she's been um, improving her, her, her ground game, um, but she would, 
I mean, I, she's probably trying to training a lot, so expecting that I would take her down um, because she feels that I probably feel that I'm not as good as she is in the striking. I know how how well she's in the, in the striking range, but um, you know, I, I've, I've improved my striking a lot, and I think that when my first punch connects. I think that she's probably going to think is a good idea to go down the ground because I like to say, where I hit, hair don't grow no more. Just go, uh, right. Just, uh, right. Um, when, you, when she made her just pro debut, even before she was 0 and 0, you were already in the UFC for two years. So are you kind of realizing now, looking around at all these divisions, that you're kind of running out of fresh opponents because you're starting to lap all of these other girls? Quando ela começou no UFC, ela estava 0 e 0, eu já tinha dois anos de UFC. Ela, quando ela começou no profissional, né? Quando ela começou no profissional, você tinha, estava 0 e 0. É, como é que você se sente olhando para todas essas divisões, todas as categorias, todas as mulheres que estão lutando, e você basicamente está chegando no momento e fala assim, não tem carne fresca para bater aqui, porque eu basicamente já estou dando volta em todo mundo. É bem isso mesmo, né? Dentro da nossa categoria ali, praticamente as top 5 eu já lutei com todas. Né? O Eli, a Ian Jonan, a Tatiana Soares, a Lemos, depois vem eu, depois aí para cima eu, ah, tem algumas ali que eu ainda não peguei, ainda, a Virna, é, agora a Marina. Então eu acho assim, eu tenho muita experiência, né? É, eu não subestimo os meus adversários porque eu sei da capacidade de cada um e quem está aqui no UFC não é qualquer lutador, é, a gente está falando dos melhores do mundo. É, mas eu já tenho muita experiência, né? são 26 lutas dentro do UFC, é, eu já lutei com todo tipo de estilo, com todo tipo de altura, com toda a categoria que tem aqui dentro, só não, não lutei ainda com meia meia porque ainda não me deram a oportunidade, mas é, eu acho que eu sempre estou pronta, estou sempre pronta para tudo, para para enfrentar as adversárias, eu acho que ter mais experiência não significa ser melhor, Significa que é, eu tenho que evoluir cada vez mais, porque quem está chegando agora tem mais força, tem mais vontade, tem mais potencial. E eu tenho que continuar evoluindo todos os dias. Então, eu não posso dizer assim, ah, porque eu tenho mais experiência, eu vou chegar lá e vou ganhar a luta. Não, porque pode ser que aconteça ao contrário. Mas é, é, é bom ter experiência, você saber o que você está fazendo e... e Saber que se entrar um soco muito forte, você tem que se preparar para aquilo ali. Se for um, um soco fraco, você já vai se sentir confiante. Então, é, eu acho que isso é, é muito importante. Eu estou feliz de ter todas essas lutas dentro do UFC e poder estar tá lutando com a Marina. né Ela tem 36 anos, é mais velha do que eu. Então, acredito que também a, a, a idade também conta bastante. É, eu tenho certeza que eu vou chegar com muita vontade de vencer essa luta. Um, I fought, I mean, very much I fought, I know, I fought a lot of people. I fought, uh, I mean, I've had 26 fights in the UFC, and I think about what, like the top five, John Wayne Lee, John Wayne, uh, uh, um, Tatiana Suarez, Amanda Lemos, I, I fought, fought pretty much all of them. Plus, there's a lot of girls out there that, I, that I've fought still, but there are a couple of them that are missing. Let me think about Marina. Uh, is one, qualquer outra que falou que você mencionou? Uh, uh, Verna, no, yeah. Of, yeah. Verna, and fight that hasn't happened against Verna. Um, but you know, there's, it, I, I've seen every kind of height, I've seen every kind of strength, I've seen every kind of style, I've seen every kind of momentum as well. I've seen all those things, and I think experience, listen, I don't underestimate any opponent. And I think experience, um, it, it, it goes a long way, but it's not the whole thing. It just doesn't matter, oh, she knows everything, she's seen it all, so she's gonna win. Um, I, I think that it, it's only an opportunity for me, actually, having the experience sometimes counts Uh, against you in the sense that you have to train more. So it, it, there's this, this new generation of women that are coming up. That they're, they are uh, uh, they, they're hungrier, they're stronger, they're faster. They, they're, it, it, that you have to just, I need to improve my skills. And as far as age is concerned, I mean, she's 36 years old. So I think that plays a part to, I mean, younger than her. Um, but it's an opportunity for me to, to continue to improve and, and yeah, uh, Uh, different fighters. I've, I've, I've faced them all. I've seen them all, but always respectful and um, um, always improving myself and becoming a new person. And there's the, the BMF fight on this main card, and I think a lot of fans, when they list you know, female BMF fights, you, you're usually in one half of that fight against whoever they think just because you fought in all these weight classes against everyone else. So I guess 
would you want them to add like a women's BMF, and who would you like to see standing opposite you if that fight does happen? Uh, just by the way, uh, there was one thing missing from the last one. I only, I did not just fight up in a, in a, in a, high, in a, uh, a heavier weight category because they haven't given the opportunity yet. Because I, I would have. Uh, tem uma luta pelo BMF entre Justin Gage e Max Holloway. E quando se fala do BMF de mulher, você geralmente está na metade desse card. É você. Ou seja, como é que você se sente de de ser é, cortada para você, porque você já teve todo tipo de luta, você já lutou contra tudo com o estilo. Como é que você se sente de ser considerada assim? O pessoal fala, ah, olha, se fosse BMF de mulher, ela seria, ela seria convocada. Olha, isso aí seria muito legal. Eu estava comentando com o Bruno ontem sobre isso. Falei, nossa, bem que o UFC podia colocar né, um cinturão do BMF para a gente, né, para o feminino. Eu falei assim, só que dentre todas essas mulheres que a gente tem, eu não sei se eu me encaixaria nessa categoria. Aí o Bruno olhou para mim e falou assim, como não, já, você já lutou em todas as categorias, você é vida louca, entra lá na, na luta batendo igual uma maluca. Pô, com certeza você se encaixaria ne, é, nesse grupo aí. Eu só não sei quem provavelmente seria minha adversária, né, porque a gente tem aí Valentina Jevchenko, né, tem o Elisang, tem é, a, até a Amanda, se ela voltar. É, vixe, tem muita menina boa, meu Deus do céu. Angela Rios, que também luta pra caramba. Nossa, eu, é assim, eu, eu espero que esse... esse que eu continue dentro desse bolo aí para poder ter a oportunidade de fazer essa luta, mas seria muito legal, seria muito legal ser campeã do BMF. Uh, actually, I was talking to Bruno yesterday about this very subject. Like, what if the UFC actually had a BMF for 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 the women? I'm like, and I I just don't consider myself like all these names in such tough fighters that I would be considered in this category. And he told me like. No, like, are you kidding me? You're like, a, you're crazy. You just go out there and just go out bangers. Like, you're always just swinging for the fences. Uh, so, but look at, I mean, I would love to, to have that opportunity. That would be really cool. So I'm just thinking of who would be the opponent because you got Valentina Shevchenko, you have uh, Zhang Wei Li, you have Amanda if she decided to come back. I mean, that was something. Angie Hill's fight for everyone. Uh, and because of the fact that I found all these different categories, but it, it will be an amazing thing. And I hope that the UFC continues to consider me in the pool of candidates or something like that. It would be really awesome if the UFC had a BMF female. And last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event and that fight between Justin and Max? É, então, a minha última pergunta. Pensamentos gerais sobre o evento principal entre o Pota e o Jamal Hill e também uh, essa luta do BMF entre o Justin Gage e o Max Holloway. Bom, eu como uma boa brasileira, né, claro que eu vou torcer para o Boatan, né, é, apesar que eu gosto muito de Jamal Rio, a gente se encontra sempre lá no UFC, é, é, praticamente todo dia, é, eu sei das dificuldades que ele teve para poder estar nessa luta agora, as lesão, a lesão que ele teve no tornozelo e tudo mais, e eu vi ele ficar muito grande, muito gordo e agora está magrinho, então, tipo, ele se dedicou de verdade para estar para essa luta, é, mas o meu coração é brasileiro e o Poatan né, é igual eu, né, onde a mão bate não nasce mais cabelo, né, o bicho é brabo mesmo. E eu acho que a luta do BMF, é, eu acho que o Max Holloway é, agora está voltando à ascensão dele de novo, né, ele ficou um pouco, é, não estava muito confiante com as vitórias, com as lutas dele e agora ele está voltando melhor. É um cara muito bom de, de trocação, tem uma envergadura maior. Só que o adversário dele também né, é pequenininho, igual eu, assim, de, 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 de distância, e não precisa de muito para poder acertar. Então, eu acredito que o Holloway não, acabe não vencendo o cinturão, mas vou estar tá torcendo pelo Holloway, que eu gosto mais dele. Um, as far as the Pereira Hill fight, I mean, I, I'm a Brazilian, as a good Brazilian, I got a root for, for Alex. Uh, I mean, he's pretty amazing. And, and, But the thing is, like, I really like Jamal, and I see Jamal all the time here at the UFC. So I see him, and I, and I saw him. I remember. I look at all the stuff. That I, I saw what he went through. I saw the injury, and I saw the recovery too. And I saw that he, me, he's a big boy. And I saw me. He was chubby, and all of a sudden he's like skinny and ready to fight. So um, it, it, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool to see that he. he I know that he put an effort to being into this fight. But Paul Tan just like me, where that hand hits. Hair don't grow no more, and I, and I, he's a badass. That's what he is. So, and as a good Brazilian, I have to root for him. As far as a uh, uh, Gage against Max Holloway, Max, he's back into a rise. Like he's just go, coming back. It feels like he's got some confidence, but after uh, some of the fights that he probably wasn't happy about before, um, 
and he's got also a, a lot of range on him too. So that that may be um, that may play a part. But he's fighting a guy who is just tough, and it doesn't need much distance to actually do damage. So even though like I do like Max, I'll be rooting for Max, but I do think that it's it, it's, it's it's a tough ask against Justin. Jessica, what does it mean to you that more of the experts and personalities around the sport are saying one day Jessica Andrade needs to go into the UFC Hall of Fame? O que, que significa para você que tantas personalidades, tantas pessoas conhecidas, tantas pessoas famosas aqui do UFC importantes falam a Jessica Andrade ela precisa estar no Hall of Fame no UFC? Olha, quer fazer eu chorar, né? You want to make me cry, man? <laughs> é, eu acho que tudo que eu passei na minha vida até hoje, é desde quando eu entrei na categoria do 61, que quase não tinha mulheres lutando, é, de ir para os campeonatos de jiu-jitsu e não ter luta, mas continuar insistindo, continuar persistindo pela, pelo meu sonho de ser uma lutadora. E numa época que nem o Dana White cogitava em ter mulheres lutando dentro do UFC. Então, para mim, é muito importante escutar isso. Eu fico muito feliz de saber que, que um dia eu posso me tornar a Hall da Fama. Eu acho que por tudo que eu fiz dentro do UFC, né, de mais nocautes, de mais lutas, de mais finalizações, é, de ser a primeira brasileira a pisar no octógono do UFC. Então, acho que eu consegui conquistar a minha história aqui dentro. E aí eu fico muito feliz de saber que eu vou ter essa oportunidade de entrar para o Hall da Fama, que é o que todo mundo quer, né? Quer ser Hall da Fama do UFC. É, mas eu sei que eu ainda vou, vou levar mais um tempo para me aposentar. Quem sabe, se o UFC me der o Hall da Fama antes da minha aposentadoria, eu vou ficar muito feliz. Mas, se não, eu vou esperar a minha aposentadoria daqui mais uns 5, 6 anos. E aí, beleza, aí pode me dar o que quiser, que eu estou pronta para receber. Eu vou me fazer chorar. É só... Eu olho para tudo isso que eu passei para ser parte disso. Então, eu vou para o tempo you go back into the times that I, I was trying to get into weight divisions. That, I mean, they didn't exist. I was fighting um, in, in different competitions because I wanted to be a fighter. And you going back and even Dana said, like, the, the, no women would ever fight and people didn't think of it. And I was able to break that, 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 that do that groundbreaking in that sense, to be the first Brazilian to step into the octagon and, and also just all the records and you start getting the like, most fights most uh, uh, knockouts, most, uh, most finishes. Uh, it, it, it's, it's such a, it, when you look at all these, the, the body of work, it just, it's very rewarding to be able to be considered like that. And um, I, I hope I have this, this chance. I would love to, to, to have the chance to go into the Hall of Fame, but you know, watch out. Like, I would love to have the opportunity, but if the UFC obviously considered me to be in the Hall of Fame while I'm still fighting, if not, I'll hold back on that because uh, I got still five, six years on me here. So, like, if uh, it'll be, it's, it's awesome to actually hear that so many people consider that that I would be honored to be. Uh, it'd be an honor to be a part of the Hall of Fame because every athlete wants that. Thank you.
So it's in Josh. Yuri, welcome to Fight Week, but not just any Fight Week, UFC 300, massive event. How excited are you to be able to showcase your skills on an event like this? Very excited. Very excited. And uh, have a great day. Have a great day to everyone. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be back in, uh, in that fast way, in that fast time after my last fight. And uh, right now, here in Vegas, everything is settled. I'm healthy to the fight. Not like last time, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> and everything is, everything is on the great way. So I'm happy and I'm looking forward for the Saturday night. You mentioned you weren't very healthy last time. I'm sure you don't want to get into details, but maybe give us a percentage. How much of your full self were you in there that night? Like the last fight? Yes. Well, I don't want to repeat that too much, but uh, I was not in, in a, my camp was not that, uh, for, with Pereira, it was not full. There was already just one week of training, like, like a true training. So, so, but it doesn't matter. Happen, happen. I'm taking that and let's go for this Saturday. So how excited are you therefore now to be able to go back in there on Saturday with that full preparation and show everyone, hey, don't forget, I'm very, very good. Great, great. I feel, really, I, f I feel great. And uh, I have to keep it down a little bit right now because uh, I feel like there is a too much energy, especially when I see the cage where I uh, win about the race. And uh, when I feel that energy, it brings me to... Uh, to the action. <laughs> it kicked me to the action, so I have to be calm. Alexander was in here earlier, and he said this is a fight for the king of Europe. I'm curious if you agree with that sentiment. <laughs> he, he's, he's talking too much. So, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a normal fight. Yeah. He, he, it's a, it's a, for me, it's, not, it's a next, next fight. The, for me, is not to be like the king of the Europe, because I'm not looking to be the king of the Europe. I'm looking to be the king of the world, not the king of the, of the world, but the champion, the top, the edge. And I am able to, to show that this Saturday, that's all. You mentioned he's talking a lot. He also said, you're a fake samurai. You can't be a samurai just because you read a book your coach gave you. Are you surprised he's coming out with these words? He's, he said that here? Yes, he did. What he said? He said, uh, he doesn't consider you a real samurai, you're a fake samurai. You can't be a real samurai just because your coach gave you a book to read. You know, if, if you want to be a samurai, it can't just be for the last two or three years. It needs to be basically a lifetime of that sort of energy. And what's the question? I'm curious if you're surprised he's coming out with this sort of pre-fight trash talk or if this was something oh. you expected from him. I understand, I understand. Uh, Alexander, he's talking too much, like I said. He's talking too much. He don't know me, and he he will he will know me in the cage, who I am, where I am able to to go, how true I can go to take a win, and uh, he don't know me personally. If you don't know somebody personally, how you can speak about him something, what, whatever. And I never said about myself, I'm, the, I'm a samurai or whatever. Yeah, because I'm respecting all the warriors from all the history and I'm sharing with the people, with all the world, every time, the best ideas and best thoughts what I ever have, which helped me to improve myself on the way, to keep myself on the way. And he, <laughs> you, you will like that. He don't know nothing about me, how I'm living. Yeah. I don't, I can't, I can't say what I sacrificed because I accept the way. And when you accept the way, you will live whenever, do whatever. Uh, that's it. Yeah. So he's talking shit. <laughs>
Is there a risk if he's trying to attempt to maybe play mind games with you that actually he's making a mistake and might just motivate you more this weekend? No, I'm not fighting because uh, somebody's saying something. I'm fighting because I want to be the best version of myself. And he's, what he's talking, he's talking. He have to prove that I'm who, what he's talking. And <laughs> I will prove that just I'm the better version than my last fight. And win about this, this guy who's trying to be tough, who's trying to be tough gangster, but he's a normal sportsman. You're right, right here. Do you believe that Alex Alexander believes what he's saying, or is he just trying to sell the fight and make fans more interested? Maybe he's, maybe he's, uh, he's believe in what he's saying, but he's missed. So that's that's happened. The that we are believing in something what's not true. Yeah. So I'm a little bit a little bit sorry about him. And uh, that's only one thing what I, what I can say, so. He, he also said, in the fight, you are very good at creating chaos in there, but he's just very good at calming the chaos down and making people fight in his style. I'm curious what you make of his skill set actually in the octagon. What his? What, what, what do you make of his abilities in the octagon? How I see him, yeah? Uh, he's a, uh, and uh, that's the good point, because he's a, uh, Like uh, he's working like too much in a fight. Yeah, he he make uh, a lot of work, make a lot of action, and uh, with a lot of power. And he believes something uh, will find a target. And uh, I'm not just making the the chaos and uh, the a lot of movement, but all this movement with some meaning, because I see the reaction, I see the free space, where is the weaknesses of his weaknesses, and for that I will attack, especially to know his strategy. No, last one for me, can I get your thoughts on the fight between Jamal and Alex and uh, Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway? Yeah. Uh, Hill versus Pereira, I think uh, there is a more weapons, like every time I'm saying the same in every interviews, because I'm, I don't change my, my thoughts. Uh, there is a more weapon on the side of the hill, because he has more, more experiences in MMA, but uh, <clears throat> there is a, so there is a more chances on the start with the of the hillside but when the fight will go to more round to one two second fourth round doesn't matter there will be more chances of the of Pereira I think because he he knows how to be patient how to how to wait for the right moment like with me yeah uh, can I get your thoughts on uh, Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway um, <laughs> Max, Max is my like teammate from same management, so um, I'm for Max. But they are great guys. Max and uh, Justin is both are great fighters. So let and I'm saying that every time. Expect uh, that mean like in my fight, let the better win. Let the better win. In my fight, I believe in myself. Yuri over here. Um, what did you make of Alex's performance against Jan Blahovic? It ended in an injury, but how did you think he looked prior to that stoppage? Uh, thank you for a question. It, it showed me a lot about, uh, about uh, Alexander's stand-up. And... Uh, he did a great work with uh, with a tough opponent like uh, Jan Blachowicz. But there was two... 
I don't want to be, say that. But there was too much un, 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 uh, unuseful action of him. And uh, from both, from the from both guys, that was like uh, like sparring. It was it was like sparring. Yeah, it was uh, if somebody wants to end the fight, he have to risk something. That's why my fight is uh, looks a little bit risky. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm giving all in my fights. Yeah. I saw a photo with you and Glover Teixeira. What did you two talk about? Um, obviously, you, you fought him. Uh, I, I saw you saw Glover Teixeira um, uh, the other day uh, uh, in Vegas. What, 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 what was what, that like? Well, great uh, reminder. Great reminder to, because they asked me for, uh, for the every round. So from one to till the fifth round. So. Uh, and some rounds I didn't uh, didn't rem remember. So, <laughs> so uh, great to hear that, to see that again, to to know what's the what to not repeat in the, in the, in the fighting. Yeah, and uh, and be ready to 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 take a chance in every moment because that that last uh, choke was for me like i didn't understand how i how i did that mm -hmm. so for this fight with alexander and after the fight with glover i'm open every time i'm saying i'm open to every chance to end the fight no matter what and that's why I started to to connect a little bit, a little bit more the wrestling, wrestling and jitsu and ground and pound with uh, with my stand up to be a one piece. And, and just last question for me: um, We were talking earlier about some of the things that Rakic said. Do you wish there wasn't any trash talk in MMA? It seems like you'd rather just you know do a regular media and, and go into the fight and not be asked questions about what your opponent said. Do you wish we, we had more of martial artists not talking trash? That's the only way to to see the true true warriors. Yeah, if there is. Listen, the, if there is something what's really the, like the problem between me and uh, if I had uh, some like real problem with Alexander, I will go to his home and, will, and I will knock to, to his door. And that, that, will be, that will be my attitude if there will be some problem. That's all. That's all. If, if there is just, this is just some like... He's talking some 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 bullshits and and uh, everybody uh, ex expect I will be man that's not true and I am samurai and you will die for the for what you say man this is <laughs> this is uh, I will show him just just that's <laughs> will she have no shots and nothing. I'm going for a win. That's all what I can say. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Enjoy the weekend.
Sadiq right here. Uh, obviously a massive card here, UFC 300, uh, fighting Diego Lopes. And so I guess what are the emotions now that it's fight week's here, all you got to do is weigh in, training camp's done, and then get in there and fight? Exactly. It's like you said, hey, all the preparation is already done. Now it is a lot closer. It's starting, I'm starting to see the, um, like the thrill of it. You know, when you first get the announcement, all I'm really thinking about is the opponent at the time. But with 300 and all the festivities and everything that's going on around it, it's, it's pretty dope. Has it felt the magnitude of this fight card just gotten bigger the closer the, the date has come, or has it always felt pretty big? Even like, cause no, they all, it, it, actually, it actually didn't feel that big before. You know, when I got here and you start seeing, like, the more spotlight that there is on it, it's like, okay, this is a little bit different. Uh, is this, uh, I guess, is, is this the type of fight card you want to be on, or is it like you just want to fight whoever, whenever, as much as possible? Uh, uh, half and half. Half and half, because on, on one side in my head, I always think as long as the check gets signed at the end of the day, you don't care. But to be honest, for legacy and for when all of this things is over and you look back on it, I will very much appreciate being a part of historical events. And Diego has been pretty popular lately. You know, he's last fought in Madison Square Garden. He's had a pretty long career before he even got to the UFC. So I guess when his name uh, came across your desk, what went through your mind? Uh, I, I didn't, I couldn't care less, you know. I, 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 um, I really only knew him from the Musvar fight, so I didn't um, realize how big he was, you know, until the, the UFC announced the fight, and then you start getting, like, all the comments on the Internet. It's like, he's a pretty popular guy. I, I think it's because of the hair. His, he has very cool hair, so it helps out. Has, uh, have his fans been nice to you? Because usually when you get, like, Brazilian and Mexicans. <laughs> uh, I, to be honest... His um, the Brazilian and Mexican fans are pretty nice. The surprisingly is the American fans that are that are like the the bad ones is the one that speak regular English. <laughs> Whenever I have to click like translate on like an Instagram or a Twitter post, it's usually um relatively fine. It's the ones that just troll you regularly. That's a problem. <laughs> Uh, how's life been now that the Disney show is out? Oh man, it's it's really cool, man. It's um being a part of a Disney show is like, is is definitely not something that I would have checked off my bingo card from last year. But it was man, it was very very dope. And being a part of a a, a show that was so representative of my culture, of my tribe, it was man, it's very very cool. And last ones for me, two quick ones. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Yeah, man, Alex and Jamal is a good one, man. I think a lot of people are um, they're downplaying how much of a factor Jamal's power plays into this fight. You know, this is mixed martial arts, and Jamal has that <laughs> has that one hitter quitter. You know, that that great equalizer, and of course, um, all the um the accolades that Pereira brings into the fight, it, you're going to want to overlook Jamal, but I, I actually think Jamal has a very, very good shot of winning this. Hey, Sadiq, over here. Um, oh, snap, James. Nice to finally see you in person, man. Yes, I'm a real person. I'm not AI. Um, <laughs> Sadiq, uh, I'm curious. You are known for your unprofessional breakdowns. How would you do an unprofessional breakdown for your fight? How would, how would you assess that? For my fight... Man, you, you can't you can't get the sauce right here, man. I got I got to sit down and break that down. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm curious. Uh, you have been a big. You know, we see a lot of fighters going into the YouTube space. You were one I felt who did it a bit earlier than others. Yes. Who are some of your favorite creators? Like, who are some people that you watch? Because I do see you lurking around the live chats every now and then. Yeah, yeah. I watch I watch a lot of different YouTube channels. To be honestly, um, it's, uh, it's gonna be stereotypical, but Mr. Beast is a very big one, you know, just because I'm a big fan of, like, philanthropy and, like, stuff like that, and I think he does a good way of mixing it in. And this week, random shout-out to a DMV YouTuber. His name is Peaks100. That's all I've been watching for, like, the past two weeks because he does food reviews, and around this time, all I'm really thinking about is food. So shout-out to Peaks. Yeah, and, and is, like, do you have any goals with your, with your channel? Like, we asked, Moikano was here earlier, we were talking to him about, you know, is this something you see as, like, a career? Do you ever see this as something that could be bigger than what it is now and, and doing, you know, this is a potential second career to, to fighting? Yeah, definitely, because I feel like um, before I started doing, like, um, YouTube and the uh, Substacks and newsletters, people didn't have a real account for my actual character, you know? They just see a tough guy fighting, so they didn't get a good gauge of who I am. But now that I've been doing stuff like that, it's been... been able to branch out even more and like you guys see like me getting into like the act and stuff i think showing my personality more will help me do that 
And just last one for me, um, you know, we talked a bit about the popularity of Diego Lopez and, you know, obviously he's the betting favorite in this fight and I know you and I talked about you being the underdog and all that, but I have seen a lot of people kind of mention your fight as, you know, you being the guy that, that I think people are overlooking. Have you felt that from the fans going into this? That there, I think there is a sector of fans that really feel like you are being sort of overlooked in this fight and that you could play the role of spoiler. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've been getting that a lot, you know, I, I'm... I'm not gonna say I'm I'm surprised because the the odd makers are the odd makers, so it, it is what it is. I've been an underdog before, and every time I've been an underdog, I've been able to shine bright. So, so dude, just a phone room for me. If you if everything goes your way and you put yourself in the running for a bonus, what would your reaction be if you receive a Mr. Beast type of check for a bonus? Man, what that I I heard Max say something about um asking for five hundred. I was second that motion, man. Like please, like. This is a special. This is a special event. You guys know the way I fight. I always, I always look for the bonus. You know, so if I could get some type of 300 k bonus or five hundred k bonus, whatever, whatever they agree to in the back, I'll be very happy to get that. Thank you. So, do you kind of going off of that? Uh, it might be hard getting fight of the night with Max and Justin. Man, fighting. what man? It's gonna be hard getting a fight of the night. But a performance of the night may not be that. Matt, to be honest, hey, what, whatever Diego want to do, man, we could we could we could aim to aim to climb that ladder. But like you said, Max versus Justin, that's a that's a crazy fight, man. That's a very crazy fight. I think that's one of those fights where guaranteed both of them are gonna be checking into the hospital afterwards. Sadiq. On that notion of being underlooked, do you feel just overall that your fight with Lopez is being overlooked on such a great card? Uh, not, not really, because um, like you guys were saying before, he's a fan favorite, and because of the way I fight, I'm naturally, a, I, I've never had a fight that you could skip before. So I don't think our fight is being overlooked, it's just there's a hundred fights, you know? It's like every fight on this card is, is, is a barn burner, so I think we're getting the equal respect that we deserve. And have you thought about that as an opportunity for more exposure now that there are so many people that are going to be watching this car? Yeah, a absolutely. You know, if you could stand out on a car like this, that man, the sky's the limit. And and I, I think I've been hearing some rumblings about um, UFC having like a DC card or something like that. So if, if I could get a good spotlight on this on this card, I'll, I'll ask to try to get on that DC card if main event or co main event. Thank you, sir. Super, was it good at all? Or just a quick one to go from... Uh to, to like acclimate this type of way from talking about 25 to a 15 minute and be able to like adjust and be like all right cool i don't want to uh, main event thing 25 minutes go hard uh the the time um the acclimation for the time it doesn't really change much i guess what changes might just be like the preparation for the actual fight but um the mindset for the actual fight still doesn't matter hey you're in a fist fight in your underwear in front of a million people you better <laughs> you better lock in right on thank you sir hi city back here one thing that I really admire about you is you always have a positive attitude. It seems like you're always smiling, yes. <laughs> which in this sport is kind of rare because it seems like trash talk and drama is encouraged. But yeah. do you think that you can achieve the same level of success without participating in all that trash talk and doing things like what you're doing? Man, that's a great question, man. I, I, I actually... The older I get, the more um, secure I am in just being myself. Because I'm not going to lie to you, uh, that was one of the things that ran across my mind a lot. Especially even talking to like teammates and coaches and managers, they always um, told me sooner or later I would have to play that role. But I'm glad I've, I became secure enough in myself to the point where no matter how my career goes, I'll be happy knowing that I was able to stay myself, you know. And... I, I try to represent my family. I try to represent my mother. I try to represent um, the people that that raised me. And I've always been this guy, you know. If I could leave the room in a positive light, I'd rather do that than try to fake trash talking. And to be honest, man, there are some fighters. Uh, GSP was my favorite fighter growing up, you know. He wasn't the biggest trash talker, and he was still able to see, um, accomplish a lot of success. So hopefully I won't have to switch up on y'all. And and. I've been around so long now. If you guys see me playing that role, you, you, you'll know it's fake. <laughs> nice.
Jalen, over here. Obviously, a uh, big fight week here before UFC 300, when like a milestone event. So I guess what are the emotions now that like hard part's over and you just got to weigh in and then go fight Saturday? Um, shoot, the hard part hasn't started yet. <laughs> the the weighing is the hard part, and then then I get to have fun. Well, I'm curious, what's life been for you since that Bobby Green fight? Because obviously you took that fight short notice and it was such a spectacular finish. And from just the outside looking in, it doesn't seem like you've ever been as popular as you have been now after that performance. So I guess, have you been recognized more? Have you been getting more opportunities? So just what's life been since that performance? I mean, if I'm getting asked a question like that, then I guess, you know, it's a testament to that in itself. Because I, I haven't paid attention to it. I haven't noticed too much of a difference. But hey, I mean, that's a good outlook. Is that a conscious thing? Like, do you just try to block that out? Or do, do people do come up to you and try to, you know, tell you these things? Um, nah, I just, I just, yeah, I'm just not, I don't know. I'm not that, I'm not that kind of person. Like, I don't really pay attention to it, you know? Like, I know it's going to come with it regardless. So, yeah, it is what it is. And your fight against Hanato, I believe, was the last fight added to this card. And when he was in here, he didn't think he was going to get added to this. So I'm curious, was it a surprise when they called you to be added to UFC 300? It was a little bit of a surprise, yes. Um, I thought it was going to be put on a later date, but they ended up making it on this card. So I was like, okay, cool, let's do it. Were you happy with to be added to 300, or would you have liked more time between fights? Um, I'm happy. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty consistent in the gym, so I'm always pretty like fairly ready. So, yeah. And in terms of Hinato, uh, he's also probably never been more popular, uh, you know, cutting his Money Moicano uh, promos and everything. So what do you make of him as an opponent? Um, he's, he's another opponent. That's, that's what it is at the end of the day. And then, uh, last two for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Um, both are going to be spectacular fights. They're definitely going to be stand-up battles. And the best man is going to win both those fights. That's it. Hey, Jalen over here. How's it going? Um, I remember when we spoke ahead of this fight, you were talking about how people don't give you enough credit for your striking. Do you feel like this is the exact type of matchup that could really showcase that and remind people just with the fact that you have knockout power, we've seen Moicano get knocked out a few times. Do you feel like this is a good opportunity, especially on this big card? Nah, I feel like he's going to try to grapple me. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely going to try to nullify my striking in any way, shape, or form he can and you know, probably drag the fight out. But if he's willing to stand and trade, then I will be there. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, your ground game's pretty, you know, obviously well established as well. Like, if it does go to the ground, how comfortable do you feel down there? I feel pretty comfortable getting up, and you know, uh, my submission defense feels really on par. I started training jujitsu and the gi again, so I feel, you know, I feel good. Everything kind of aligned, you know. So, yeah, I'm ready. I'm real, well versed for this opponent. What about the implications of a victory? Jose just mentioned, you know, how popular Morcano is. Uh, obviously, um, you know, this is a huge card as well. Is this the type of fight that really gets you, you know, a notable opponent after this? I mean, it seems like uh, the UFC, you know, likes you. They're putting you on this card. Yeah, you know, um, I would like that, you know, but also sure. in the grand scheme of things, like, I, I, I have no say, you know. Like, I, I do want to go in there and perform and get a spectacular win. And at the end of the day, you know, i got to figure out what happens after that. That's it. Just last one for me. Any fight week rituals you like doing, like things to just keep your mind off fighting and, and all this stuff? Is there anything you like doing while you're here in Vegas? Um, no, nothing in particular. You know, I just kind of just cruise through, just, yeah, just, I don't know, just sulk in the moments of doing this, you know, like sitting here doing media because I know, like, at the end of the day, like, the career is going to end. I'm not going to be in front of the cameras, you know what I mean? So I just sulk and bask in these moments, you know. Jalen over here. It's the return of the T-Mobile Turner once again. This time perhaps the biggest stage of them all. So when you got your fight put together as the last one, what, what did you make of Renato being the guy that you're going to share the cage with for this big occasion? Um, yeah, it was cool. I mean, you know, he said my name a couple times. So I, we tried to make it happen. I don't know why it didn't work out. But now this time it worked out. So I'll get to see him on the, on the other side of the octagon Saturday night. And how did it feel fighting in Austin compared to fighting at the team all so many times throughout your career? Um, Austin was actually pretty lit. Like, it was cool. It was a cool atmosphere, and it was different. Like, the whole process was different. It was like a cool little refreshment. You know, I felt like I was like, like a hungry young fighter again, like fighting somewhere else. Like, it felt good. A lot of talk about this card is the bonuses, potential bonuses, but it's going to be hard to get one given how many fights and amazing fighters are on this card. So. How are you going to separate yourself from the rest of the card in order to score a big bonus potentially? 
Um, you know, I got a couple things up my sleeve, and I got to see if my opponent allows me to line them up, and then, you know, we'll see. But I definitely plan on getting a bonus. <laughs> and given your, the way you fight and how to fight, do you think that's a big possibility of getting a fight of the night for you, too? Mm, nah, I think fight of the night is going to go to uh, the BMF belt, and there's too many fights, man. There's too many, fight, too many good fights. Bobby Green and Jim Miller is going to be a barn burner, too. You know, there's too many good fights to get fight in the night. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to get the performance. Speaking of Bobby, did you run into him at all during this fight week so far? And have nah, you, you know, it's funny. I haven't. I haven't ran in, into anybody. That's kind of, it's kind of. I was thinking about that the other day. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jalen, right here. Uh, Jalen was wondering. You just recently did the Jackson podcast. Just wondering, how was that experience recording with those guys? Uh, it's cool. You know, they're one of my sponsors, so they're, they're, they're cool. I like it. And then, obviously, you've been part of so many big cards, but like 300, does it feel like, hey, it won't get bigger than this one? Or do you feel like, hey, after being part of so many pay-per-views, T-Mobile, all this, it's like, you know what? I do think it could still get even bigger. The biggest card I'm going to be a part of is the one that I get to headline. Jalen, here in the back. You fought many different styles in the UFC so far. Do you feel like Moicano's is reminiscent to anybody you've already taken on? Yeah, he kind of reminds me of Callum Potter. Um, you know, just because like Callum Potter was a, a black belt also. And yeah, I don't know why. There's, those are the only two that, that correlate to me. I'm pretty sure there's other people that I've fought that have like the same accolades. Like uh, I, would prob I don't know how durable he is, Dan Hooker was definitely the toughest fighter I've ever fought in my life. I don't know if Moicano is that durable. So, you know, I won't know until I fight him. Um, but, yeah, you know, body-wise, body, body wise, you know, styles kind of similar to Dan a little bit, but not, not as well versed in the striking, I would say. So, you know, we'll see. You know, we'll see. Thank you. Hey, Jalen, um, what's it going to take for the UFC to put on, like, a skateboarding competition? It's, uh, you know... There's a couple skateboarders uh, in, in in the promotion, and we all know that she loves to uh, get down. Man, yeah, we definitely need to do that. That could be a cool little spinoff. They could make some money doing that, you know? A little game of skate, you know, have the barracks sponsor it or set it up, you know what I mean? I definitely think I could win that. Cool, thank you. They've been doing skating in here. Have they? they have, they've been doing some stuff in here. Oh, what? That's lit. I didn't even know. That's it. Thank you, guys.
Oh, Bo, over here, other side. Right here. Got you. Uh, obviously, a big marquee event, UFC 300, is upon us. So I guess, uh, what are the emotions now that, you know, fight camp's over, you just got to focus on weighing in and fighting? Yeah, now uh, is the least fun part and then the most fun part, right? You know, all uh, rolled into a week. So I feel really excited to compete, obviously. It's been a little bit of time since I was able to get in the cage. And so, you know, I'm just very grateful, very appreciative of this opportunity. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go out there and be myself and put, him, put on an amazing performance. Well, you had mentioned it. You know, it's been a while since we had seen you. Were you expecting a call sooner? Or do you think they were trying to hold you for, like, a big event like this? Well, it, w it was part of my plan to take a little bit of time off. Um, you know, at that point last year, uh, with uh, my last fight, I had taken five fights in 365 days and just been on a basically a year year's worth of training camps. And I wanted to take some time and focus on my development and you know, training for a fight and just training to get better and improve are uh, a little different. And so I think it, it made sense. And then when I was looking at the timeline for what events were coming up, you know, this fit in perfectly uh, with that plan. Well, I know you famously said, you know, you want to be on pay-per-view main cards, but I guess people were a little surprised given the amount of marquee names at UFC 300 that you were still on the pay-per-view. So were you surprised that they put you above guys like Yuri and Alex and everything? Yeah, I didn't expect it. I think that um, it's a big honor for me to be where I'm at on the card and just to be on this card in general because there's so many amazing fighters and so many guys that have a ton of experience and who... Um, are just doing big things in the sport. And so I feel like it says a lot about, um, about me, about the UFC and our plans. And I think they align. And I, I think that, uh, you know, I'm just grateful to be where I'm at and grateful to, uh, you know, have this platform to go do my thing. When they brought Cody Brunson's name to you, know another guy with an extensive wrestling background, not at your level, but he obviously wrestled it at, for most of his life. So what did you make of when his name when they approached you? Yeah, I was excited for that. I think that, um, just getting to compete against uh, another wrestler is a new challenge for me. Everybody that I've fought thus far, you know, hasn't had a wrestling background. And so um, this will, I think, present different problems for me to solve in the fight. And um, that's going to be a big part of my development is just continuing to get different looks and improve and feel different things in the cage. So you know, hopefully he can uh, give me a little resistance in there and I'll figure it out. He was in here earlier, and he said he was glad he was getting you now. Like, he thinks right now is the perfect time to get you because you're, you haven't developed quite as m m some of the other fighters in the division. Do you think he's kind of overlooking you, or is he just kind of talking that to kind of sell the fight? I think that makes perfect sense what he's saying because, you know, I'm only going to improve and get better, right? Like, you know, I think if it were up to him, he would have loved to get me, like, a year ago, right? So, you know, everybody knows that um, my capability and what I was able to do in wrestling, and I think they obviously assume that that'll translate over to fighting, and it has so far. So for him to say that, I think, makes perfect sense. And, you know, I think for me, it's just continually improving and moving forward. And, you know, my goal isn't to win. I, I obviously want to win this fight, but my goal is to be, the pound for pound number one fighter in the world and UFC champion. So, you know, this is a, uh, a part of that process. And you were obviously in the headlines for, you know, your comments about Jordan, Burrow and everything. So I guess what's the wrestling community uh, re reaction to that and the reception to your comments? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I definitely expected the wrestling community uh, to be maybe taken aback by it or a little surprised, just given, you know, his standing in the community. Um, but I've gotten a lot of support from people um, that are actually like in the community that, that you know, wrestlers, coaches, people that are, that are in, it, in it, not just fans that are kind of watching from the outside. And uh, everybody is kind of on the same page as me. So that, that was interesting to me. I, it's not something that I expected, but uh, yeah, I, I just pretty much was frustrated with what he had to say and let that be known. The final one for me, uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Yeah, you know, both fights uh, are going to be amazing contests. I think um, those guys are extremely skilled in what they do. And, um, you know, looking forward as a fan of the sport to watching both those fights. Um, definitely, uh, I would say, like, kind of dream matchups, if, if you will, um, for guys that go out there and they're going to get after it and they just put on amazing shows. So, you know, I'll be tuning in probably from home at that point. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, excited to watch those fights. Bo, right here. Um, you talk about you know how the UFC is positioning you on this card, what Cody says about your potential and things like that. It seems like everyone knows what you can be capable of, and maybe the only thing that could stop you is yourself at this point. So how do you keep 
grounded and make sure you're training properly, dieting, focusing, all these things and not letting any of the outside stuff seep in? I think it starts with why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, I'm not doing any of this for outside attention or for money or you know, any of this uh, external kind of stimulus, external reward. It's all because I love it. You know, at the end of the day, I could probably go do a lot of different things, a lot of things that are easier than being an MMA fighter. And, uh, but this is what I'm choosing to do. And so obviously take that very seriously. I'm very motivated, very disciplined. And you know, that's probably a uh, testament to the people that I've been able to be around, coaches, teammates, uh, my dad, uh, people that have had a, a positive impact on me and been good examples for me. And uh, yeah, basically, you know, to sum it up, I do this because I love it and not for any of the extra extracurricular stuff. Is it important though that you keep, I guess, setting new goalposts and keep finding ways to be pushed? Because, you know, complac complacency can be like the worst thing for fighters in the sport. Um, do you see that and know that there needs to be collaboration with the UFC to continue this in a way that keeps you focused with everything you just said there? You know, I think that, yeah, there's, there's definitely collaboration. I feel like when I look at the UFC and myself, um, I see us as we're, we're on the same team, you know, we, we want the same things. And uh, so, you know, that's something that I think has uh, been a really positive relationship thus far and we've been aligned. And, uh, you know, I think that will continue moving forward. Um, that being said, I feel like um, I'm fighting better and better guys every single fight, which is good. It's what I want and I want to continue, you know, fighting better guys and, you know, soon enough I'll be fighting ranked guys fighting guys, you know, for the belt and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. You can find yourself anywhere between minus 2,000 and minus 3,000. Good value? Yeah, I, I think the math checks out um, to me. Um, I, if I'm being honest, any, any number on me, like, is basically just free money at this point. So um, I uh, have had some people asking me, you know, predictions and things like that for the fight. And it, it's really tough to predict a fight, but... I know I'm going to win. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm really sure of. Hey, Bo, and just sort of piggybacking on that, um, do you feel like you have the most pressure on the card because of the betting odds, right? Uh, you look at some of the other fights, no one's like a minus 2,000 favorite. Do you, do you feel like you have the most pressure? You know, pressure is such an interesting thing because it's, it's really just all of your perception. And all the pressure that I feel comes from uh, internal. You know, it comes from myself. And, you know, I, I put pressure on myself because I love what I do. I care about it. And I train really hard. And really, that's, uh, that's all I feel, you know. I think that um, my, my coach uh, at Penn State, Kale Sanderson, he, he's talked to us about pressure a lot. And, um, you know, to sum it up, it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to feel pressure. It's just not good to be nervous about that. So for me, I, I know I'm going to feel this pressure because I choose that. And uh, I'm the one that signs the contract that decides that I'm going to go out there and fight. And I do it because I love it. Who did you get to work with for this camp uh, leading into the fight with Brundage? Um, fortunately, this camp, um, I've had a lot of really good training partners. Um, obviously, my two guys at home in Pennsylvania are Anthony Kassar and Musa al Sulaimani, both uh, national champions, one in wrestling, one in boxing, so high-level guys and you know, two of my best friends. So those are guys that I'm working with on a daily basis. And then I was also grateful that I was able to go down to Florida, train with some really high-level guys um, down there at American Top Team, Johnny Eblen, uh, Marvin Vittori, you know, are, are a few names that I was able to get some rounds in with. And so really, you know, feel like I have a, I feel like I had a really good camp and feel well prepared. Does that give you confidence, obviously, working with a guy like Eblin, who, you know, Bellator champ and, you know, competing at a high level, Vittori's a ranked middleweight. Like, is that a good way to kind of gauge where you are in, in the division? Yeah, I think so. You know, for me, uh, development is very important. It's important for me to push myself against the best guys. And I think that, you know, obviously it's cliche, but people talk about, you know, train hard and fight easy. And th that's, that is the way I see it, though. That's been the way I've seen it since I was a kid. And I always, you know, traveled to get the best training partners when I was in middle school and high school. And then going to Penn State for college, obviously I had the best training partners in the world. And, uh, you know, I'm taking that same mindset into MMA. And I want to work with the best guys, best coaches. And I feel fortunate and grateful that uh, they're, you know, wanting to work with me as well. And if all goes well, like you're saying, and you get a finish, and it's another impressive performance, is this sort of the last fight you think before we start getting you to fight maybe like a ranked opponent or like a more notable opponent in the division? Do you feel like this is kind of the last one? It's possible. You know, I think that um, that's a conversation between uh, 
myself and the UFC and we'll figure out uh, what we want to do. But I'm not in a rush. You know, I'm only 28 years old. I just turned 28. And I, I got a, a lot, uh, a lot of uh, more time to continue to improve and develop and get better. But again, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again, the goal is to be the pound for pound number one fighter in the world, you know, and I want to continue to fight better and better guys. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, focus on the improvement aspect of it. Like I need to get better uh, to get to where I want to be. And so whatever the development looks like and the process, then that's what, that's what it'll be. And just last one for me, uh, Hamzat Shumayev now looks like he's a mainstay at 185. He's fighting Robert Whitaker coming up. I know this is down the line, but you got to be a bit excited about that potential matchup just with both of your styles. Definitely excited about that matchup. You know, I think um, obviously Hamzat's a little bit ahead of me in terms of position in the organization and rankings, but I feel like, you know, that's a matchup that a lot of people want to see. And, uh, you know, that fight with Whitaker is going to be an amazing fight. Two guys that are competing at a very high level, and you know, I'm looking forward to watching it and definitely looking forward to uh, that fight down the line. Bo, hey, Bo. You, when, uh, when you were eight years old, you told your parents that you wanted cauliflower ear. Is that a moment where you know you're going to dedicate your whole life to the world of combat? I think, you know, it was. I think that I was just around it so much. Um, my granddad wrestled in college, you know, he was a wrestling coach. My dad wrestled his whole life, was a wrestling coach. And so it was just something that that's what you're around, right? And the guys that I looked up to were you know, high school wrestlers, college wrestlers, and they had it. And so for me, um, that was just my path. And, and th again, there, there was other things I could have done and it was never like something I was forced into, but I felt like it was my choice and what I loved. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be involved in, in combat sports um, forever, you know, even even when I'm done competing, I think that I'll I'll coach at some capacity or be involved somehow. And touching up again, touching up again on the main card placement, I know you're probably more aware than anyone that some people weren't really too fan of that. So does that add an extra chip on your shoulder or motivation to go out there and make an even bigger statement? You know, it's interesting because I guess first off, it's not really me that decides that. I know that a lot of people, you know, pull up the quote of me saying like. Oh, I'm, I'm a main card guy and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like that um, at the end of the day, the UFC made a business decision and it made sense for me to be on the main card. Um, that being said, as far as the opinions of others, they're not super relevant to me. I feel like um, those are gonna ebb and flow and I'm you know, confident that in a year or two, once I've uh, established myself more and built my reputation in this sport more that People will have uh, will think it's a no-brainer and look back on it, and you know it'll make a lot more sense. Last one for me, a fellow fighter under the same management, Ilya Topuria, had his big title win in Anaheim a couple of months ago. What did you make of that performance? So happy for Ilya. You know, he's a he's a guy that I have been watching for a long time, um, and just you know, you could see it as as a student of the sport, I could see it coming almost um, just with his skills and his mindset and being able to be around him. Um, you could tell that he just had that. He just had a championship aura around him, you know, probably even before he got into the UFC. And so uh, I was so happy to kind of see his dreams be realized. And it's definitely motivational for me seeing somebody uh, come up and, uh, you know, achieve his goals that, you know, it's now I feel like I'm, I'm the next guy to go do that. Hey, Bo, I was wondering how has being a father changed any of your mindset and just that approach to competition now, just having that, you know, proverbial something more to fight for? You know, it's interesting. Um, I think that for me, I've always been very competitive. I'm always somebody that I'll do uh, whatever I need to do in the competition to, to win. And, um, you know, having a son, I feel like more than anything, I, I just want to be a good dad to him. I don't think it really like gives me any extra motivation. I already feel fully motivated um, internally, but I definitely feel excited just to to spend time with him and get to know him as he grows and gets older and you know i, I want to be a good fighter and uh you know i have big goals um within fighting but it's more important for me to to be a good dad so whatever that looks like it could be you know outside fighting that's my priority two parter what was it like taking him to his first wrestling match and two have you already thought about what college you'd like to make him an offer uh that's funny um I was, it was a really cool, you know, kind of surreal moment um, to be able to bring him to a Penn State match at, uh, I guess at that point he would have been, you know, two months old and, uh, you know, just, just a cool, cool experience. Obviously I had a lot of great memories um, 
at Rec Hall in the in the Penn State uh, arena, and um, to bring him there was special. And as far as you know, him going to school or what he's going to do, I think that uh, I would like I would love it if he chose to do something different than me, just because I feel like you know he can be his own person and figure figure out what he likes. And if it's wrestling, then that's great. I'll obviously support him, but um, you know I definitely want to leave leave that up to him and let him figure that out. You mentioned Penn State. Real quickly, what are your thoughts on them breaking the uh, tournament record scoring points that's been since like 1997? Yeah, amazing. You know, I think the team this year at Penn State was you know, extremely special. A lot of special individuals, you know, comprised that team. You know, had two, obviously you mentioned the uh, team scoring record, but also, you know, two four-time NCAA champions um, in the same year, which there's probably no way that's ever going to happen again. And so, you know, for me, I'm just grateful to be able to uh, be around those guys and still be in there and, and training with these guys on a daily basis. They obviously helped me a ton in keeping my wrestling sharp, and I'm grateful that I, I just get to be around high-level people. It's something that I feel like you know, is, uh, is a big blessing. Bo, uh, can I get one more? You are very dialed in. I heard you on the Rogan podcast. You're very regimented. Uh, uh, very wise beyond your years with your schedule and your training and all of that. Uh, Cody was in here. Uh, he was saying that some people around him they they said that you're like the Jesus of <laughs> Jesus Christ of MMA. Uh, I, I believe that as you keep climbing the ladder, people will try to pick at that cool, calm psyche. Uh, one, what do you think about that? And two, can you walk on water? Well, I definitely, uh, I don't love that um, comparison as a Christian, you know. I think it's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really feel like that about myself at all. Um, I think that I'm just trying to do my best out here. And, uh, you know, the, uh, I, I'm, I'm a little confused by, by the question, I guess. But uh, I feel like, yeah. I, I Are you prepared for people to, as you're climbing right. the ladder, to pick at your, gotcha. your yeah, calm, yeah. cool demeanor? Yeah, yeah, I feel fine, you know, with uh, people saying whatever they want to say. Of course, you know, people are going to try to get a rise out of me or, you know, say things that to, to throw me off. But I'm just trying to go out there and accomplish what I want to accomplish. And if what, however they want to go about it is, is really irrelevant to me. It makes no difference. And you know, people want to sell the fight. People want to build the fight up. And I get that. But for me, um, no matter what's said in the lead up or the fight week, like we're going to get locked in the cage, so that's what I'm focused on. And anything that uh, is important will be uh, will come to light right in that moment.
got, I think, a knee injury. I blew my knee out or something like that, and I had to have surgery. And so that happened. The second time we were both to fight each other, um, his opponent fell out. And so they asked me, like, on two weeks' notice to do the show. I'm sitting on the couch smoking and fat. I had to cut, like, 30 pounds. I, weigh, like, I walk around with 85, you know, and so cut 30 pounds in two weeks. I did it. I made the weight. But then I went to go see the doctor. I was like, just feeling out of breath. I couldn't get my breath behind me. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, and the doctor's like, calm down, calm down. And that's you know, I just fucking passed out. My fucking lung collapsed, uh, kidneys failed. I was in the hospital for like a week, you know? And so that shit happened. And then uh, the third time I was supposed to fight this guy, everything's going great. I was going to whoop his ass. And, uh, I was watching this guy on, on, on YouTube. His name is Dr. Eric Berg. Little white guy, you know, smart little doctor, white guy. You listen to everything those guys say, you know? <laughs> and so I was listening to this guy, and he's like, uh, I've been watching for about a year. He all about different stuff with your health. So like, hey, if your eyes are looking a little yellow, maybe you're lacking in this uh, deficiency. Maybe you need more B vitamins. Maybe you need more D vitamins. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm learning about health because I'm getting old as shit and I better keep myself, you know, keep this train going. So I'm trying to like learn and shit. This is something I do on YouTube, just fuck around on YouTube. Be on my health shit. Well, he had this one video and the shit said, uh, how to lose weight in your sleep. I'm like, what? Lose weight in my sleep? I don't got to work hard? This sounds great, you know? So I'm watching the video, and he's like telling you different shit. Like, oh, yeah, take this, do this, you know? And so on his little whiteboard, he had the five things to take. And I think it was like uh, vitamin D, vitamin K, potassium, magnesium, and then this last one. But those four are good. I know those four. I'm like... Those are all fucking healthy. They're going to say, I'm not going to get, it's not doing anything, you know, take a shit. But the last one, it said D-H-E-A. And I didn't know what the fuck that was. I was like, I don't know what that is or where to find it or anything. But, okay. And so, I'm going to the store. I'm at Walmart. Little, little Walmart. Not behind the counter where you got to talk to, like, physicians or anything like that. Just in the vitamin section. So, I'm getting the D and I'm getting the K. And, hey. There's that shit right there, DHA. I wasn't even going to get it. I didn't even know where to find it, but I saw it. I said, oh, shit. So I got it. I looked at it like, what is this shit? And on the front of it, it said sugar metabolism. I'm like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that does. Okay. It's in right here where kids can get a hold of it. It's not like it's banned or it locked up because Walmart has things locked up too. The stuff that is more expensive, things that are actually costly. And so I'm like, Okay. Grabbed that shit and started taking it. They came and pissed at me. And they came like three days later. I was like, what the fuck? Like, why are you guys still here? Why are you bothering me? Y'all just pissed at me. I guess I pissed hot, you know? I didn't know. So I'm cursing them out and fucking with them and shit. And really, they're like, hey, we coming to get you. I got the notice and shit. I'm like, oh, fucked up. But I don't take shit. So I'm like, what the? There's no way. And they're like, bro, you popped. I'm like, there's no way. And so they said, what are you taking? And I sent them everything I'm taking. And I'm like, it's that one right there. Oh, fuck. And so I fucked myself on the last one. And shit happens. And now we're here at the fourth time, but maybe it's meant to be, you know? Maybe it wasn't worth it for 40 grand. Maybe it wasn't worth it for 80 grand. Maybe it wasn't worth it for 100 grand. Now we're getting closer to 200s, you know? And so maybe it's closer to there, you know? Yeah. And can you just tell me a little bit about the transition from the last fight into this one? I think a lot of people think the referee did you dirty in the last one. I know you took it like a champ, but... Um, to come off a result like that and transition to a camp, is there anything you had to do special to kind of look out for your health and just make sure you are ready to go on Saturday? That's crazy. Um, I never took anything in, into account. I mean, I took everything into account, but one thing is fighting, you're going to go, I'm going to go on my shield. This is what come with this shit, you know? It's some warrior shit. I came to die. But, like... I'm going to get knocked, pow, all right, I'm down, and all right, maybe I'll take a shot or two, and that's cool. But one thing I didn't prepare for is like, hey, that ref could let you get too much damage where you might not come back the same, you know, just because he let you go a little too long in there, you know, their, their job is to save our lives. So a bit of me was like, uh, 
I don't know about that part of it, you know? Like, damn, I did sign up for this shit, but I don't know if I signed up for that part where I'm like, bro, I wouldn't even fucking awake no more. I was just, my body was just moving, but it's like, bam, 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 bam. All right, is it enough? Bam, 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 you know? I'm like, fuck. But shit, it's part of this game, you know? It's part of this game. The ref's doing his job, and shit happens, I guess, and I'm a warrior. It's part of this shit, and keep it moving. Bobby, I got one for you. On a lighter note, last time you were here in Vegas, you had an incredible finish, but you walked out to Sexy Red. So I'm curious, are you going to do that again this time around? <laughs> hell no, hell no. Uh, Jamal Hill yelled at me and won't stop yelling at me about that to this day. You know, like, that's my big dog. And every time I, we run each other, he's like, bro, you came out to Sexy Red. Like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? What the fuck are you doing? He always, like, when everybody else is like, oh, it was cool, it was cool. Jamal's going to be the guy that tells me, like, mm. Nah, bro. Nah. He's always on the other side of everything else. He's going to give me the straight, raw truth. You came out to a stripper, bro. <laughs> you know? And so, nah, I won't be doing that. I always want to do something new every time. So what's, do you have any ideas yet for this go-around? I'm playing with a couple of different songs, but I think I figured the one. I think I found the one. Bobby. Hey, Bobby, here. right um, here. Can I get your, how do you think Jamal gets it done against Alex? That's my dog. Uh, I've been getting a lot of flack, you know, for saying... I'm riding with him and stuff, but I ride with my niggas, and, and, and I stay true to myself more than anything else. Um, I think he's going to put Alex out. There's something weird about Jamal that people don't understand, and I watched him, and I'm like, the way he's throwing these strikes, the way he comes and covers distance, if you're not ready, you will go to sleep. Ask Johnny Walker, you know? He wasn't ready for that shot. He put a nasty beating on Glover, you know? where I think he just took so much life off of, of Glover. That guy is nasty, you know? And so the way he does certain things, I think people are not, are not prepared for it. It's not the average, like, Pajeda's been fighting, like, the standard striker type of guys. And don't get me wrong, I love Pajeda too. He's fucking sick, nothing but love. I love Glover, really. And so all up to those guys, but... I'm just going to call out like I see it too, even though I have a little bit of bias for my dog. But I'm, I'm telling you, none of these people that he fucking dropped, they had no idea where they were getting hit from. He throw in different ways, and it's just not the average, like, orthodox striker where I'm hooking like this. And no, what if I hook you over the top? What if I hook you a little under? And that's the, the difference. In, in your weight class, what do you think about that BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, I'm happy for both of those guys, you know. Um, those are the two of my favorites, you know, fucking true warriors, guys that really stand on these shields, guys that go out there and put great fights on, you know. Um, those are, are the brothers of the sport, and I'm happy for both of them. Um, Max is, is a perfect example of my uh, code is to jump on every opportunity. When you see us all the time, we're going to fight as much as we can. We're trying to fight all the time and stay in front of that before our time is up, and so... You got to respect that about them, you know? The other guys like Islam are taking their time with, with stuff, you know? Guys are taking their time. Like, no, no. If you want to be that star, you want to be that guy, you got to go out there and take those chances and those risks. Volkanovski, another guy, you know? Gets out there, take the risk. And sometimes you may come up short, but fuck it, I did what you motherfuckers weren't were too pussy to do. Hey, Bobby, over here. Uh, Bobby, I was watching your IG, and you put this up uh, a couple weeks ago on your story. You said, I was just going to show I'm better than him. Now I'm going to hurt him. Uh, can I ask what changed and what brought out that mindset for this fight with Jim? Um, I'm, I kind of like, when fighters talk about me, uh, it's kind of like, uh, I'm kind of like Michael Jordan. If I find that little edge where, like, oh, I can get psycho with myself, and I'm like, oh, you know? And the last time somebody said that was Nazareth. He was like, oh, Bobby Green won't stand with me. So I broke the record on how many strikes I could hit him with, you know. Um, and then Dawson said the thing, too, like, I'm here for it, just a check. So I knocked him out, you know. I put these certain things in my head, and I'll go crazy behind it. Like, now I'm mad at you, and I got something to prove. Normally when I fight guys, it's just like, I just want to prove I'm better than you. I don't want to hurt you because I want you to have a prosperous career. But I just want to show that I'm the better fighter of the two. Jim was saying, like, when our fight came out, he didn't want to do this because all the different obstacles of all the bullshit. But I'm like, bro, I took that fight on two weeks' notice for you. I jumped in there, and I fucking went to a hospital for a week, and now I put that shit in my hair. Like, oh, I got something I could, 
I'm going to show you something now, you know? And, and the fact that we got it washed and washed and washed, now this is what you're fucking waiting for, bro. And I promise you, it's going to be vicious. Cool? All right, guys. Wait, Lee. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, obviously, a big marquee fight week here before UFC 300, uh, before your fight against Yan Xiaonan. So I guess what are the emotions now that, you know, fight camp is over and you just have to weigh in and then fight on Saturday? Uh, I'm very happy, very relaxed, and I'm really looking forward to the fight. You fought on some big cards before in, in Las Vegas, uh, Madison Square Garden, in Boston. So I guess where does this fight rank? Do you, do you feel the magnitude of this fight week? Ni 然后我也非常喜欢拉斯维亚斯。Um, of course, because this EFC 300, um, it's a historic moment. We have 12 um, former and also current champions on this card. Um, also, the first time two Chinese fighter fighting to get the belt, champion belt. Also, um, last time I was fighting in Vegas was against Yolanda, and um, we had the best performance, so I'm super excited about this fight. Do you feel the importance of this fight, given what you said, two Chinese fighters fighting for the title? Do you feel how important this is to your country, or do you also kind of just view it as just another title defense? 
这次就像你说的，呃，是第一次两位中国选手争夺这个冠军的头衔。那你觉得这是一个有特别的意义，尤其是你为你的国家啊、呃、在战斗，还是说这就是另一次卫冕而已？我觉得对，呃，从我个身个人来讲，肯定是我觉得这是一场比赛。从不管从小男孩从我来说，肯定是一场比赛。但是我觉得对于中国 MMA 来说，肯定是一个一个新的一个进步的台阶吧。This is another fight for me, but on the other hand, this also means so much、um, for the MMA sports development and growth in China. Yan was in here and jokes that more people back in China support you than her. So why do you think that is? Xiao Nan said, "In China, people support you more than they support her." So what do you think about this? Actually, every person has their own fans. I see many people who support her. I think there are people who support her. Every person who supports her is also supporting me. Every person who supports her is also supporting me. Um, I do see a divided fan base, but everybody has his own fan base. In terms of her skill set,、uh, does she present anything that you haven't faced before in the octagon? Um, 每个人都有自己的这个格斗的方式和长处。那你觉得小南他具备的一些特质有没有你所之前没有见到过的？我觉得小南这两年他的摔柔和他的力量进步了非常多。Um, I see Xiaonan that、um, she has grown a lot,、uh, especially in, in her strength, as well as her grappling on the ground and everything. Yeah. And final two for me.、Uh, can I get your thoughts on the fight between Alex and Jamal and Justin and Max? Uh, 你可不可以讲一下你对朱卡、啊、几个比赛的一些看法或者说预测？我其实一般很少去预测比赛，因为我觉得在赛场上什么都有可能发生，而且就是看谁的状态更好。对。嗯、um, ，I don't really like to predict outcome, um, because anything can happen, and a lot of factors contribute into the outcome of the fight. 然后这也就是 MMA 的魅力，一切都是不确定性。This is the beauty of、uh, mixed martial arts. Wei Li over here.、Uh, Wei Li, you were recently featured in Harper's Bazaar, China. I was just wondering, how did you enjoy that experience of the photo shoot and the article they did? Do you mind to repeat that question, please? Yes, she was recently featured in Harper's Bazaar magazine in China. How did she enjoy the article and the experience of the photo shoot? You 好像有你好像有上过那个巴沙的杂志，然后他想问你一下你的你对那边。描述你的文章是怎么看的，然后感受是什么？对那篇描述我的文章，那篇文章描述了些什么呢？我要想一想。<笑>对，然后那篇文章描述了啥来着？那你就说说你当时给巴沙的，就那个整个的经历，你的感感受吧。啊，我觉得巴沙它是一个非常专业的时尚的一个呃杂志，然后那次拍摄也是非常知名，在中国非常知名的摄影师帮我拍摄，也是我很早很早就之前的知道的一个摄影师陈曼，然后他帮我拍摄，对。And that's a very professional fashion magazine. Also, the photographer she was very well known in China, so that was a great experience. And then、uh, we know we've seen you obviously grapple with Francis Ngannou and picking him up, but you also got some work in and were、uh, training a bit with Marab. I was just wondering how was that experience? You have to put that T-shirt on Ngannou. 把他他说的是把他举起来过。他说的他说的是纳甘诺吗？还是啊？还是另外一个摔跤的选手。他说两个人。哦、oh, ，对对对， okay. 然后也说你跟那个梅拉布也有、oh. 也有练过，所以说想问你一下，对这两个感受是什么？我觉得不一样的感受。我觉得呃，抱纳甘诺的时候我没有觉得那么重，但是我跟呃我跟梅拉布训练摔跤的时候，他的交感非常非常的好，他的那个打摔结合也非常非常好，我也跟他学习到很多。I did not feel Nagano was that heavy, but when I was when I was training with Marab, I was really surprised by、um, how good he was on his ground game. Yeah. 
Totally. Um, speaking of showing your strength and that, you also picked up Shaq back in September. Um, can you tell us about that experience with him and how difficult was it to pick him up? He said, I put Okay. He was quite surprised I was able to lift him up. Um, I guess that maybe he was being lifted up by his mom when he was little, but never after became adult. So he was pretty surprised I could do that. Um, and of course, focused on this fight, rightfully so. But do you feel like Tatiana Suarez is the next contender after this, or is there someone else right now that you think is more deserving to fight the winner of this? I'll let UFC to do the matchmaking. Right now, I just wanted to focus on my fight. Wally, you've had an incredible rise, becoming the first Chinese champion in promotion history right over here. Can you speak about your journey and your rise up coming up to UFC 300? Uh, Wow, long story, Megan.呃，其实我就是，其实我我简短的说一下吧，就是我把一个大的目标分成很多小目小的目标，然后不断完成小的目标的时候，我发现大的目标离离我很近了，然后我也非常感谢UFC的平台，然后可以让我实现
Hello. Justin, uh, you've had a lot of fights, you've had a lot of big fights, but UFC 300 for the BMF belt against someone like Max Holloway, this one must feel pretty special. They all feel special. It's um, such a great uh, little adventure that I put myself on, you know, a long time ago when I chose to, you know, take this path. I uh, never would have thought it would have led me to UFC 300, but here we are. You mentioned ahead of this fight that, respectfully, you would like to finish Max, but maybe not put him out cold, just finally be the first person to sort of crack that chin we talk about so much. For him, do you think he's going to have to have put on a lot of size to be able to match you for power to keep himself in there, or do you think he can come in this fight in other ways and find success? Man, it's a lot of what-ifs and what I think. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, I love getting in there and finding out. Um, you know, I'll know early if he's punching hard enough for me to take chances or be more cautious. You know, I'll find that out early. And I think uh, this is very different than the time he fought Poirier, as that was a late replacement. I think he's had this whole camp, you know, being able to keep and maintain that weight. And I do think he's going to be as big as me and as strong as me. Yeah. You mentioned he's quick to disregard that fight with Dustin for the reason you just said. Do you even look at that fight and think, well, there are things I can take from that? Or do you have to think, no, no, no I can't really relate that max to this one? If, if I'm watching that fight, it has nothing to do with the size or, or anything like that. It's all about technique, you know, and I can find his technique in, in all of his fights. All of them, you know, he's a very different fighter from fight to fight. Just as all of us are, you know, we're all constantly making adjustments. And, you know, I won't be sure which Max I'm going to fight until that bell rings. What would it mean to you to be the first guy to drop him? Yeah, it would, him? it would mean a lot. You know, um, I have 25 wins, 19 knockouts. Um, I've really taken pride in that, you know, since the beginning of my career. And, you know, to be the first one, I like being first. So, yeah, I'm ready. What are the stakes for, uh, in this fight for you? Obviously, there's a BMF belt on the line, right? But we're hearing talks that maybe Dustin could be fighting for the lightweight title next. Are you even thinking about that, or do you just have to think, hey? No, I know um, with the win here, I fight for the belt. I know with the loss here, that all goes away. So that's, that's what I'm fighting for. Is there a chance, if Islam were to fight in June, you could end up being called to fight back in Abu Dhabi? And is that something you'd even consider? Uh, I don't play what ifs, but um, you, know, you don't pass up a championship opportunity. You know, I do want my time. I do think... June would probably be impossible for me as every time I fight is a traumatic life experience and I need to go home, I need to, you know, unwind, take care of my body, take care of my head. But I have coaches and a manager that ultimately make those decisions. So if they say go, I go. This one right here. Uh, throughout media day, uh, the general consensus is that no one else is competing for a fight of the night amongst the fighters. They're all like, we have to get a, a performance bonus because Justin and Max are fighting on this card. Yeah. Like, do you kind of take pride in that, that like even your fellow fighters are like, we're yeah. not even going to try for this? Yeah, I mean, um, having the respect of your peers is something I think we all, you know, shoot for. Um, not just that, but the respect of the UFC to give me this opportunity. Every time you see someone in this thing, you only see the Gaethje versus Holloway thing on the television. So it looks like it's the main event. Well, kind of going off of that, was there any chance that you would have just been the actual main event uh, before they added Alex and Jamal? Wrong, wrong dude. I don't know. Um, what do you make of the, uh, the custom fight kits? I love it. Yeah, they called me. They said, what do you want? I said, I want to represent the United States of America. Um, if I ever had a chance, that's what I asked for a long time ago. You know, I didn't want, um, I didn't want to go full Apollo Creed because I, I don't like to be flashy. Um, and, yeah, I mean, anytime I can represent my country, you know, this is such a worldwide sport and not a lot of people truly represent this, this country. And, you know, I'm, I'm that guy. Speaking of the custom shorts, Max had input on his design on the floor. Did you have any input on yours or was it just you told him, hey, I want this, this and this? And I said I wanted to look like a U.S. flag and then I sent them a picture of, a, you know, those shades, those colors, black and gray. You know, I wasn't looking for anything special. I don't need to be shiny or flashy. I do my talking with my fists. Fair, fair enough. And there's also a footage of you uh, celebrating Dustin Poirier's win over Benoit Saint-Denis when he got the knockout. Is that a guy that, no matter what time you're in, is he, he's going to be like one of those guys you always have respect for in and out of the cage? Yeah, I mean, for what I'm always going to cheer for my fellow Americans, you know, and especially um, I love to see these vets and us old guys holding off this young, these young, young lions. They're coming for us, but the longer we can hold them off, the better for me, the better for all of us. The longer I stick around. 
Justin, just curious. Uh, after we spoke the other day, a couple of the things were, you know, maybe Mark Coleman wrapping the belt around the winner of this and some $300,000 bonuses. Any word on either of those things might happen from what you've heard? Oh, I haven't asked. I won't ask nobody. I think the $300,000 thing is a little bit, you know, a little bit far-fetched, but I think $100,000 is, is probably hopefully going to happen. They did it for UFC 100. Can't see why, you know. We're all making a lot more money now than from UFC 100, so I think... Uh, I think 100 G's is good for every finish on the card. Justin, down here to your right, um, you fought a lot of high caliber fighters throughout your career. Where does Max Holloway rank in that list? Um, I mean, Tony Ferguson, Dustin Poirier, Cowboy Cerrone. I mean, these guys are all, you know, future Hall of Famers. So it's huge. It's huge for my legacy. It's huge for my resume. Um, you know, I've been watching this guy. I'm older than him, but I was watching him way before I ever thought about being in the UFC. And yeah, this is the guy that I, I looked up to. So it's cool to see where how far I've come and where hard work will get you. And I remember after your interim title win, you didn't really want anything to do with the belt, but with this BMF belt, not to say that you're parading around everywhere with you, but obviously you hold it in, seemingly in high regard. Would, yeah. would that be a fair assessment? Uh, again, I think it's awesome. You know, I wouldn't, if I didn't have the respect of the company that I fought for, I would not be in this position. That's what I'm most proud of, you know, and also the fans. The fans respect it. The fans in turn respect me. Um, it adds a little bit more of a spectacle to my fights. And this is the entertainment business. So, you know, I like, I like that much. Thank you. Over here, Justin. Um, back to the shorts. Do you think Bryce Mitchell should be upset or proud for paving the way of fighting for custom shorts and how easily you guys got them for this card? I don't think it was easy. I've been working a long time for this. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Sure, I'll give him credit. I like it. I like his camo shorts. Justin, you win on Saturday night in spectacular fashion right over here. And... To your right, right here. Justin, you went on Saturday night in spectacular fashion, and for some reason they don't honor the title belt next. What is it, just next man up, or is there someone in mind? No, there there's, like there's going to be two contenders coming out of this, this fight night. You know, this, this pay-per-view, the winner of Saruki and Oliveira is going to be a contender, and the winner of the Holloway and myself is going to be a contender. I believe Makachev is going to fight at least twice this year, and so I think we'll both fight him. Are you looking forward to any of the fights in the card besides yours? Is there I mean, I'm a huge fan of the sport. You know, I wish, I don't wish, I'm glad I'm on it. But if I wasn't on the card, I would certainly be in attendance. And there would be, I love fights. I love fighting and I love watching fights. I love the atmosphere. Um, you know, I love that um, people understand what they're going to get when I walk out and the atmosphere kind of changes. I can feel the intensity shift. And, you know, I love being that. Justin, have you gotten out to the uh, the Vegas links? Golf? A specific golf club? I don't know. Are no, I played uh, Cascada and I played Rio Seco while I was here last uh, Thursday and then Sunday. And then, unfortunately, I have to do a bunch of interviews so I can't golf these how'd, days. How'd you hit it? Not bad. I shot a 93 and a 90. Uh, my swing is disgusting, but, you know, I shoot well. Excellent. Obviously, adding Max to that stack list of opponents you have faced in your career. And I know you want the crack at the title next, but before you do hang it up, whenever that is, is there any other guy you want to face and say, yeah, I faced him and added him to my stack list, list of opponents? I'm a quarter mile at a time kind of guy. Um, I do not look too far ahead. I honestly have no clue what the future holds. Um, I don't usually plan on being alive the day after my fight, so hopefully I'm there on Sunday.
Cal, over here. Uh, obviously, big marquee fight week here before UFC 300. So I guess what are the emotions now that you know fight camp's over and just gotta you know make weight and then fight on Saturday? Man, yeah, just grateful, grateful for the opportunity. It's been 18 months, and excited to get back in there. So kind of going off of that, physically, how long did it take to, you know, to get comfortable to get back in there and like first kick and actually feel like, all right, you know, I can get back into a full camp now? They say like four to six months, but wow. yeah, which is pretty quick. But they say it's like a honeymoon phase of being healthy and you're really not as healthy as you feel. So just had to listen to the professionals and go off the timeline that they recommended. And when they came to you for, you know, 18 months and they still wanted you at UFC 300, did that kind of, you know, give you a boost of confidence in how the, the promotion views you? Yeah, I'm always grateful. They, they, you know, I, I'm grateful every opportunity they give me. And um, I was excited uh, when they were coming to Boston in August, although I know that it had been eight months post-op. But it was a good way to just jumpstart, you know, the comeback. And things work out the, the way they do for a reason. And I feel like the timing's right for UFC 300, such a historic card. It's an honor to be a part of it. And when they came to with uh, Al Germain uh, to, to welcome him to the featherweight division, a New Yorker, obviously, Boston guy, so there's obviously a built-in rivalry there. Well, I guess, what, did that get you even more excited that they were still giving you these former champions after 18 months? Yeah, definitely. Uh, big opportunity fighting a former champ. Just if you want to be great and uh, you want big moment opportunities, those are the guys you got to compete against. And I'm, I'm grateful I have another opportunity to step in there against a high-level opponent and show why I'm amongst the, one of the best in the division. And when he was at Bantamweight, obviously, he cut a lot of weight to get down there. He was just one of the physically bigger uh, 135ers. Do you think his, his grappling can translate to 145 pounds? I mean, I'm planning on fighting the best Al Jermaine Sterling that steps foot in the octagon. So in my mind, he's going he's gonna to be at his best version, and I'm prepared to go wherever the fight takes me. In terms of the division, what do you make of you know kind of the development since your last fight? You got a new champion. Volkanovski's lost back-to-back -back, uh, knockouts. Brian Ortega's back in the win column. So what do you make of the 145-pound division? To me, it's great to see the movement within the division. Um, just that they're competing again. Like I said before, I think Yair was dealing with either a suspension or just not fighting for a few years. He had some issues. And then Ortega being injured, myself being injured. Um, there was a little bit of holdup and bottlenecking at the top of the division, so it's good to see some movement. And um, yeah, it, it's great to see. The final two for me. Can I get your thoughts on both the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? The main event and the people's main event? Oh man, I'm excited for both. I hope that our fight gets over with soon enough that I can go out back and I, I'm hopeful I'll have a chance to just watch it with nobody interrupting me. But um, yeah, I'm really excited about both matchups. Hey, Calvin. Calvin, right here. How's it going? Good. How you doing? I'm uh, doing well. Um, so, obviously, uh, a lot of time off, and we talked about the injury and all that. Anything in particular you've kind of worked on since, uh, since we last saw you? Because, obviously, it's not like you're sitting on the couch. Anything you're looking to maybe showcase on, on uh, Saturday? Just an updated version of myself. Uh, every time I step in there, I'm always looking to do that. So, nothing new this time around. Um, Sterling had referenced that you two had trained together when you were amateurs or something like that. What do you remember about uh, that time? I was basically an amateur. I never fought an amateur. I went pro right off the bat. But the time he's referencing, yeah, it was forever ago. And uh, I made a trip out to Cortland, New York, I want to say, and uh, trained with the Bomb Squad guys. It was a cool experience. And um, yeah, it was very brief. And I don't even know if we were really trained together at that moment, but we were in the same gym. And uh, you know, credit to New England MMA kind of seeing itself at the highest level here at UFC 300 this Saturday. It's been almost four years since your last three-round fight. Uh, is, is the preparation any different just to, you know, maybe... Because, again, you've got to get it done within three rounds, right? Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, get, getting going early and um, being disciplined for 17 minutes. Any golf in between the last time we saw you uh, compete and, and after that? Have you been getting in the range at all? No time for golf with the comeback coming up, but on the back end, I'm really looking forward to the change of pace and, uh, and getting some rounds in for sure. I can't wait. And uh, just last one for me, we got a new champ, obviously, Ilya Teporia. Um, I know it's a bit of a ways away, but just, you know, looking at your style and his, uh, two really good strikers, um, just how excited are you for sort of this new regime at, at 145? Yeah, credit to him. He made that fight, uh, you know, look relatively easy, although we all know the level of opponent that the former champ is. So that's credit to Teporia for getting the job done like that. But uh, it's just great to see movement within the division and... I'm excited to uh, go out on Saturday and stake my claim why I'm 
belong amongst the top of it. Calvin, over here. Just a quick one. You're not only one of the world's best at 145, but you're also a CEO and president of a fight promotion, Combat Zone. So for you, how is that balance like, and what's your favorite part about it? Yeah, thanks for asking. We have a show next month after the fight. And I, it, it really, the best thing I can say about that is having a great team around you, man. It's not even just in my personal fighting, but for Combat Zone, if, if I didn't have a team uh, around me at, for my personal fighting, I wouldn't be at this level. And I sure as hell wouldn't be able to focus on this as well, having a show next month if I didn't have a great team at Combat Zone. So it's, it's really motivating and reinvigorating when I, I, I get to be at the show next month where I made my pro debut, you know, and fought nine times for. It just puts things into perspective. And if it wasn't for Combat Zone, I wouldn't be in the UFC. It was the only promotion in New Hampshire, longest running in New England. So a lot of the New England greats came out of that company. And I feel a lot of pride in carrying the torch and just providing a stage for the local guys to get the opportunity that I have in front of me now and just show it's possible for the New England, New England guys to get to the next level. Any names that you think we'll see soon in the UFC? Definitely. Uh, Nick Fiore, uh, big combat zone guy. He did get his shot not too long ago. You'll see him back soon. Uh, Tom Pagliarulo, he's another up-and-coming guy. Uh, these guys have fought main events for us several times back-to-back. -back. Connor Matthews just you know, fought a couple weeks ago. He was, uh, he did the looking for a fight with Dana for us at the Encore last year. And it was great to see him get his shot. And um, Brendan Murat, another kid. You know, it's good to just see these guys who are gracing our octagon and uh, making, making their opportunity to get to the next level. And I'm just happy to play a small role in that. And uh, it's great to see, man. It, it's, uh, my, my coach manager, Tyson Charlie, talks about it too. It's almost more fulfilling being on that end, making people's dreams or being a part, small part of their dreams coming true, man. It's, uh, it's a great experience. Calvin over here. Uh, Calvin, I was a really big fan of your skits that you did recently with uh, Tommy Guarino. Uh, I loved your little Rocky moment at the deli. Can you just talk about being a part of that and, you know, just having some fun and just the comedy side of entertainment? Yeah, those guys are good shit, man. Uh, shout out to Tommy and Prosciutto Papi. I love me some Prosciutto, too, after this fight. But uh, those guys, man, they're, uh, they're doing their thing. It was great to be out there, be a part of that. We were promoting uh, a Valentine's Day promo for the upcoming combat show, the past one. And, uh, man, those guys are, are professional but funny as hell. And uh, yeah, they're only growing, man. It's great to see just, I, I like supporting just New England guys just and girls, you know, just, I like to see New England people just rise, man. I, I like to see the success. I like to get behind it. And, uh, yeah, those guys are a riot. Do you feel like the Celtics will be able to win it all this year? I think so, for sure, man. They got a hell of a team. If not this year, then when, right? Um, yeah, I'm really excited for the season they have. Hopefully I can catch a game, man. It's just when you got these fights coming up, it's tough to tap in anything else. But on the back end, man, uh, I, I'm a big fan of New England sports. And even just watching where the UFC is at, you know, people uh, you know, like to think it's a Las Vegas-based company. Right? The headquarters are out here, but its roots are in New England. So uh, great to see just the growth of everything coming from our area and uh, proud to be a part of it. Thank you. Calvin, one here in the back to your left. Yes, sir. Uh, we have a lot of tape on Al Germain. You've been able to see a lot of it. Are you expecting the same Al Germain at 145 pounds or a different one? I'm expecting the best version of Al Germain that presents itself on Saturday. You know, uh, I, I don't see him changing things up because I don't think he really has to. It's worked for him well, you know, to, to get to the point he's at in his career. But I'm sure they'll have things in mind on how to take me out. But... I got things in mind for him as well. We'll see who gets theirs off on Saturday night. Thank you. Calvin, uh, this is your first three-round fight since, since UFC 249. So I guess, was it, how was training camp? Like, was it not as, you know, uh, not working on your cardio as much, or, or, or were you still a beast in there? No, I dog it every single camp, man. I, I push myself harder than anybody can push me. And uh, almost to my detriment, man. I, you know, being this experience at this point in my life, you know, I try to listen to my body and, and pull back when I can, but that's always the issue. It's never putting in the work. And I always say, if I ever fall short, it's not because I didn't work hard enough. What's up with the Patriots? What is it? What's up with the Patriots? Next question.
So all my zones. That's Charles right here. Uh, obviously, you've been in some pretty massive fight weeks, but you know it doesn't get much bigger than UFC 300. So I guess what are the emotions now that you know fight fight camp's over and just got to make weight and then fight on Saturday? Obviously, you've already been involved in in numerous events and events sensacional of UFC, but this UFC 300. And what is the emotion now to be in that final part? It just needs to hit the weight and hit. Cara, de verdade, feliz demais com tudo que vem acontecendo. Já lutei como você mesmo falou, grandes eventos. Mas um evento como esse aqui é um evento mágico, é um evento que fala muito daquilo que eu venho falando sobre deixar o legado. Com certeza isso aqui nunca vai ser apagado. I mean, just very happy, as you said, like I've fought in numerous events, but you talking about an event like this, which is like magical and something that we always talk about, which is actually a legacy. This cannot be erased. And when they came to you with Armin, uh, did that get you excited, or were you, were you excited to just have a fight in general? And what do you make of all the things that Armin's been saying about you uh, leading up to this fight? When it surgiu o casamento da luta e te ofereceram o Armin, foi você ficou empolgado pelo fato de que era o Armin? Você ficou empolgado com o fato de que era uma luta que queria lutar? E o que você pensa de uma maneira geral do que o Armin tem falado? Cara, na realidade, foi um contexto geral por ele, pela essa proporção que ele vem trazendo com esse boom que ele vem levando, que é o novo garoto, então isso aqui é bom para mim, né? por ser um evento como esse. Então, na realidade, é um algo gigante. E sobre o que ele fala, na realidade, eu nem ligo. É mais um dos que falaram, e todos aqueles que falaram, vocês viram o que aconteceu. Uh, actually, it's like a general context. The, the fact that he is uh, coming up, uh, an up-and-comer in, in, in the organization, that he's, he's kind of been on a boom. Um, and, and it's taken more, like a different proportion, this, 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 a fight with him. Uh, what's at stake as well? And um, also, just to be in an event like this and be part of this, uh, this, 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 this event, this organization. As for what he said, I mean, everyone has said the same thing. People have said this many times. And look at what happened to every single one of them that said something like that. He was also in here, and when we asked him if it was actually personal with him, he said he's just trying to sell the fight. It's not actually personal. So what do you make of, like, he doesn't necessarily believe what he's saying. He's just trying to, you know, build the interest in the fight with the fans. É, quando ele esteve aqui mais cedo, perguntaram para ele sobre essas coisas, ele falou, só estou tentando vender a luta. Não é nada pessoal, e eu acho que eu só estou, eu só, eu quero, só quero é, aumentar o interesse nessa luta. Com certeza, isso aí eu aprendi. São 14 anos aqui dentro. Algum deles falam para tentar vender, alguns falam para tentar entrar na mente. Na realidade, para mim, não faz diferença nenhuma. Eu só vendo a luta de uma forma. Depois que fecho o queijo, depois que fecho o queijo, eu vendo a luta. Você sabe como que é. Eu só ando para frente. Eu sou um leão lá dentro caçando. Um, I, I think this is something I've learned. I mean, it's 14 years here, so I, I completely understand. Why. Some people sell the fight um, in a different way. Um, Some people are going to say things, and it doesn't matter. Like, I saw the fight in just one way. When that door closes, I'm a lion hunting. That's what I do. That's, that's, that's my style of selling a fight. And I'm curious if you saw, he did a fan Q&A in Miami before UFC 299, and a lot of the fans uh, antagonized him, and they were very pro-Charles, and said, like, you know, Charles is going to choke you out, Charles is going to do this to you, and they didn't have many positive things to say. So I'm curious, like, Do you see these fans that even even though he trains in Miami, they're still on your side? E quando estava na coletiva de imprensa e nos eventos que teve lá de, de pré é, UFC 300 no 299 lá em Miami, geral caiu em cima dele. Falaram um monte de besteira. Tava todo mundo a galera lá era completamente pro Charles. É, ficavam falando coisa quando ele falava. Falava, pô, Charles vai dar, vai 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 pegar você, vai finalizar você. Não tinha nada positivo. Como é que você se sente com o fato de ele morar em Miami, treinar em Miami e a galera ainda gostar de você? Eu amo todos eles. É o amor que a gente sente. É um carinho gigantesco, eu respeito todo mundo, todo mundo me respeita. Eu estava muito feliz. Eu não estava no local, mas era como se eu tivesse. É, eu não postei, lógico, isso. Eu não vendo dessa forma, mas eu vi. Milhares de pessoas me mandaram esses vídeos e eu fiquei muito feliz, fico muito contente. Isso aqui vai acontecer aqui também, eu tenho maior certeza. Coletiva de imprensa, pesagem, luta, é o Charles Oliveira, é o Charles do Bronx. Uh, it's the love that I feel, it's the love that I get everywhere. It, just, it, it was so amazing to see that. It's the, the love that you can feel. So, um, I, I, I saw it, I was, I was extremely happy when I saw it, but you know, I wouldn't There, there's no, I, I wouldn't post it because that, I wouldn't, I, 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 that's not how I sell the fight. But I saw it, I was aware, it's just, it, 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 that's, how I, that's how I feel with people, the fact that they were with us. And it's going to happen here again. It's going to happen in the press conference. It's going to happen at the weigh-ins, and it's going to happen on Saturday. It's, it's that, that's it, the love for Charles Oliveira, Charles the Bronx.
Justin Gaethje was just in here, and he said that there are going to be two contenders coming out of this fight card, the winner of your fight and the winner of his fight against Max. And he expects Islam to fight both of you guys, the winners of these two fights, by the end of the year. I'm curious if you're in agreement with that kind of scenario Justin laid out. Justin Gaethje estava aqui e falou que basicamente vai ter dois é, candidatos a uma disputa de título saindo desse sábado, ou seja, o vencedor da tua luta contra o Armin e o vencedor de Gaethje Holloway. É, que, os, que o Islam vai lutar contra os dois, eventualmente. É, como é que você vê isso, que ele acha que é um mata-mata eliminatório? Cara, na realidade, é muita gente falando muitas coisas. Né? Todo mundo sabe que o próximo da fila sou eu. Né? E o Darren White mesmo tinha falado isso, eu sofri uma lesão, voltei. Agora diz que o Islam também tinha sofrido uma lesão e está voltando agora. Então, cara, na realidade, eu acredito muito que o próximo da fila sou eu, não tem como mudar. Vamos esperar. Vamos pensar uma coisa de cada vez. Vamos pensar sábado agora, vencendo agora, a gente vê o que faz para o final. A lot of people have been saying all these things, and I think it's just, I mean, Dana even said it, that I'm next in line. And then I got injured, and then um, Islam it, it allegedly is injured as well. So let's, it, it's a lot of people are going to say things, but let's let's wait. Let's take one thing at a time. Let's get this win on Saturday, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. And last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the, the fight, of the, the main event between Jamal and Alex, and then the BMF fight between... Uh, Max e Justin. Minha yeah, última pergunta aqui, duas coisas, dois palpites. Um pensamento geral sobre a luta entre o Pota e o Jamal Hill e também a luta pelo BMF entre Gage e Holloway. Jamal Hill é um grande lutador, só que eu acho que toca o cara que lutar contra o Alex uh, na parte em pé é muito perigoso. O Alex Batan chuta muito bem, né, se movimenta muito bem, então eu creio que pode muito nocautear, mas creio que vai ser uma grande luta e acredito muito na vitória do Alex Batan. Né? E da luta do BMF, eu acho que ah, são dois grandes lutadores, dois grandes nomes, mas eu acredito muito no Dusty Gate pelo fato de ser um verdadeiro 70 quilos, um cara que pega duro, um cara que se movimenta duro, mas vai ser uma grande luta. Uh, as far as Alex and, and Jamal, I mean, Alex is, is just a force, so he, obviously, he, he's so strong, and even though Jamal, I like Jamal, Jamal is a, a strong guy, a good opponent, but... Alex is just so, if you, anybody, anyone that faces Pota, if they stand with him, they know what they're facing. Just a guy with a heavy hand that, you know, he will, he will strike with you really well. He will kick you a lot too. So, it, you know that it, any strike can happen and he can just end the fight right there. As far as uh, uh, gauging a Holloway, uh, Gage is a true lightweight. So he understands things. He knows how to move around the octagon. He knows how to, where he puts his punches. Like he, he, he knows his power. He knows how he can do, do things. So I think he's the favorite. Charles, over here. You and uh, Armin share some common opponents, one being Benil Dariush. What did you make of Armin Sarukin's performance against Benil Dariush? Você e o Armin é, compartilham de algum, um, um oponente em comum, que, é o, que seria o Benil Dariush. O que, que você acha da luta entre o Armin e o Benil? Foi uma grande luta. Ele saiu com a vitória. Uh, aproveitou, aproveitou a oportunidade. O momento que ele teve, ele foi e fez o trampo acontecer. Um, great fight. Came out with the win, took advantage of the opportunity. And the moment that he saw, he just took advantage of it and, and made it happen. And after you beat Darius at uh, UFC 289, you surprised a lot of the fans by pulling out the English. So if everything goes your way on Saturday, could we expect to see a bit more English from you? E depois de 299, você, uh, de repente, do nada, começou a falar inglês. Então, vai acontecer a mesma coisa? Deveria esperar isso de você uh, no, depois de 300? Não, não, na realidade eu só estou tentando aprender um pouco, tentando entender um pouco, tentando me comunicar com meus fãs, essa é a minha realidade. Eu não quero sentar aqui e dar entrevista em inglês ou qualquer coisa, outra coisa do tipo. Na realidade, eu só quero poder me comunicar com as pessoas que gostam de mim, do mesmo jeito que eu, me comunico, como eu, que eu sempre me conecto com as pessoas que são brasileiras, que eu posso mostrar o meu carinho, não tem outra pessoa podendo falar aquilo que eu quero falar, aquilo que eu quero me expressar. É só por isso que eu quero tentar aprender inglês. I'm just trying to learn, you know, to communicate with people, to actually engage with the fans, to, to give back the love that I get from people, talk to them in social media, engage with them, because I just want to be able to do that and, and be there for them, just like I am with the Brazilian fans. Uh, and, you know, when you don't have somebody to, to help you out with, because I just want to be able to actually engage with them and, and show my love for them and my appreciation. And speaking of the Brazilian fans, you're a big fan of uh, Corinthians FC, so how, do those fa how have those fans treated you in the build-up of this fight and just in your career in general? Falando sobre os torcedores brasileiros, você é um grande torcedor corintiano. Como é que a torcida corintiana trata você? Como é que você é bem-vindo lá? Como é que é a tua relação com a galera? Cara, de, de coração, eu sou muito bem tratado. 
Todo mundo sabe que eu sou um verdadeiro corintiano de verdade, não, não é porque é patrocínio nem nada, não, sou um verdadeiro corintiano de verdade. A torcida me trata muito bem, do mesmo jeito que eu trato eles, então ah, somos loucos, né? É igual a gente fala, essa corrente jamais será quebrada. Um, you know, that, that, that crowd, they just, that, they, they, they know me, they, they know I'm a true Corinthians fan. It's not it's about a sponsorship, it's not anything of the sort. I mean, I treat them the way they treat me, it's just a lot of love and... and And as we said, like we're we're a bunch we're a bunch of crazies, and what we like to say in the fans is that that chain is never going to be broken. Nobody go. Charles, I'd like to go back to the fan support that you receive. Uh, Charles, there's a lot of exciting contenders on the roster. What do you think it is that fans connect with you so much? Because you are one of the most popular guys on the card. É, voltando a essa questão de amor da torcida, tua relação com as pessoas, você é um dos lutadores mais populares do UFC. E especialmente nesse evento. Oh, tem tanto lutador bacana, tem tanto lutador que traz muito, que é, que é empolgante, que faz ótimas lutas, mas as pessoas se conectam com você e você é uma pessoa muito querida. O que, que você acha que traz isso? Por que essa atração? Por que, que as pessoas gostam tanto de você? Primeiro que eu sou um cara iluminado por Deus. Sou muito grato por tudo que isso que eu venho viver. Né? Pelo amor, pelo carinho que eu trato com todo mundo. Homem, mulher, criança, velho, não importa. Ah, se é meu fã, eu trato muito bem. Se também não é meu fã, eu também trato muito bem. Então, acho que é esse amor, esse carinho que, que cada vez mais as pessoas vão vendo e a gente vai se crescendo cada vez mais. Então, é essa felicidade que eu tenho. Uh, you know, just uh, being very thankful for God for, for actually, you know, the relationship that I have with them and, and, and just the happiness and, and engaging with them. And always being respectful to everyone and, and always treating them with the same care that they treat me, always with the same love, uh, it, always very grateful for everything that, that's happening. Every time I get that love, I give that love back. And we're just, we're growing, we're growing in numbers and this relationship is just only growing and this, this group of people is growing with me and as I grow, they grow as well. Charles. Charles, you are very well known for your grappling You are a third degree black belt. You have the most submission wins in UFC history. But I feel like a lot of times, because you're so good on the ground, people forget that you have excellent Muay Thai technique. And do you feel in this matchup that you're more dangerous on the ground or in the striking? Você é. A gente sabe da tua força no chão. A gente sabe o quanto você é condecorado. A gente sabe da tua faixa preta. A gente sabe o que você traz para dentro é, na tua luta é, no chão. Mas você. Também é um cara que traz de pé cada vez mais uma ameaça. Ou seja, você acha que hoje você é uma pessoa que traz tanta ameaça porque você melhorou muito, você é uma pessoa que tem feito muita coisa na trocação. Hoje, o quanto de uma ameaça você é no chão e em pé? Onde você ameaça mais? Olha, de verdade, sou lutador de MMA. Eu sou um perigo tanto no chão quanto em pé. Já falei isso milhares de vezes, algumas pessoas ainda não botaram fé. Eu sou o problema dessa divisão. Se você quiser vir trocar porrada, eu vou trocar porrada em pé com você, não tem um problema nenhum. Se você quiser me botar para baixo, pode voltar, eu sou o maior filosofador da história. Então isso não é se gabar nem se achar, é simplesmente ter confiança. Treino na maior equipe do mundo, chutebox Diego Lima. Estou pronto para lutar contra qualquer um, em qualquer lugar do mundo. Um, I'm an MMA fighter, and, I, and, that, and that's it. It doesn't matter. You want to take this down to the ground, we'll do it. You want to you want, you want stand up and you want to strike, we'll do it. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I am, I said this, I have the problem of this division. I will fight anyone, anywhere. It does not matter. Um, as a complete fighter, I can, I can go anywhere with this fight. Charles, aqui, aqui atrás, Charles. A gente viu na semana passada que você anunciou, né, que você vai ter seu segundo filho, né? A gente sabe que quando a Tayla nasceu, você meteu 11 vitórias consecutivas. O que a gente pode esperar dessa versão, Charles, pai de dois? Uh, <laughs> last week, you announced that you're actually going to have uh, your first son. Uh, and we know what happened last time uh, when you had Tyler. After Tyler, 11 straight wins. So what's going to happen? Uh, Charles on a streak 2.0? Fala, irmão. Tranquilo, vamos te ver. Cara, na realidade, uh, eu já estava muito motivado. Né? Estava muito motivado, muito focado querendo continuar essa história gigantesca, essa história linda que Deus me proporcionando para mim, a se tornar campeão mais uma vez, deixar o um legado. E aí Deus me deu, vem me dê esse presente maravilhoso junto com a Vitória, né, que é meu filho, Dominique. E então, cara, você imagina, na metade do camp vem, vem essa notícia maravilhosa. Então, por que não? Por que a gente não embalar com uma sequência gigantesca de vitórias? Sim, 
Eu estou muito motivado, eu estou muito feliz, eu estou muito grato a Deus por tudo isso que vem acontecendo. Sou muito grato a Deus, muito grato a ela, por tudo que vem fazendo na minha vida, por tudo que vem me abençoando, me ajudando. A palavra-chave é gratidão, sabe? Eu estou muito grato por tudo que tem vem acontecendo. E eu só estou no caminho, como eu falei agora nas últimas vezes, de verdade, algumas pessoas estão falando que eu já tenho tudo. Não, eu não tenho nada ainda. Tem muita coisa para acontecer, tem muita lenha para queimar, tem muita história para acontecer, tem muitos sonhos para se, se tornar real. Um, I was already motivated. I was already focused. And, you know, midway through camp, I was ready in camp. And we're, we're halfway through camp, and all of a sudden I get this blessing. And I get these news that this is happening. So it, it, and it just, I get this gift uh, uh, that, that I'm getting from God and from Victoria. And it, it, why not? Why not rock this boat? Why not use this and turn it into a streak? Um, I'm just very grateful. I'm very grateful for the opportunity God has given me, the opportunities that, have got, that God has given me. Uh, throughout, and then what uh, the Victoria has has brought to the table as well. Um, it, it's just the, the word is uh, being grateful. The word is to being thankful for this opportunity, and just and people say, I don't know. Some people say uh, sometimes, he's got everything. You got everything. Now I do not have everything. There's a lot to be gotten yet. It's still I mean, I, we still need to get a lot of things. There's a lot of dreams. There's a lot of aspirations. Um, and uh, there's a legacy in history to be put in. Char Charles, you haven't lost a non-title belt since 2017, yet still people write you off. Does that motivate you to keep proving them wrong? Você, oh, can you repeat that? Because I, could, I couldn't hear what you said. You said you lose something since... So, Charles, you haven't, you haven't lost a non-title belt since 2017. Sorry, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Você, você não perde uma luta de, que não envolve uma disputa de título desde 2017. Muda alguma coisa agora, tão, nessa situação? Como é que você se sente? Você é uma pessoa extremamente confiante. Lutas são lutas. Todas elas levam aquilo que você quer. Quer que o seu braço se levantado se torne campeão. Então, não importa se ela é pela disputa de título ou uma luta normal como essa, eu quero que o meu braço seja levantado. Eu quero continuar aumentando esse ligado. Quero levar a vitória para a minha família, para todas as pessoas que acreditam em mim. Lutas são lutas. Fights are fights. It doesn't matter what you're fighting for. You want to get that hand raised at the end. Um, it, it really doesn't matter what's at stake. Uh, what you want is to win. You win for yourself, win for that legacy, to, to, to grow that legacy, win for all of those that have been with you all throughout, um, and, and, and for your family as well. So fights are fights. It doesn't matter. Charles, um, on this card, the UFC has brought out all the records, the history behind every fighter on this card, and you could make a strong argument of the 26 people competing on Saturday, you have the best resume, you have the most records. What does it mean to you that you have all that behind you on a card like this, you stand out among all these fighters with all this history behind them? É, justamente pela ocasião, por ser o UFC 300, o UFC está soltando o currículo de todo mundo e mostrando as credenciais de todo mundo. O que, que as pessoas fizeram no UFC, os os grandes conquistas e feitos, e se você pegar aquele currículo, você olha que talvez você seja o que tenha o mais tarimbado de tudo. Como é que você se sente de talvez ter o currículo mais completo e ter o um maior histórico num evento como esse, cheio de gente, desse jeito? Cara, são 14 anos aqui dentro, né? 14 anos que eu me entreguei na minha vida, 14 anos que eu acreditei num sonho gigantesco, então tenho, tenho que ser grato. Recordes, bônus, finalizações, Número um do ranking, campeão. Eu sou muito grato, tenho que ser grato às pessoas que acreditaram em mim o tempo inteiro, que nunca deixaram eu desfocar, que sempre me manteram meu pé no chão, nunca me deixaram voar, sabe? Porque tem cara que não ganhou de ninguém e se acha tanto. Então, poder chegar aqui num UFC como esse, num card como esse, né? Ter um gabarito como esse, então, é como eu falei, é só o começo, tem muita coisa para acontecer. Eu sou muito grato a Deus, muito grato às pessoas que sempre me ajudaram e sempre me ajudou. Um, obviously very thankful and, and it's 14 years in the UFC uh, it, that there's, there's a lot that has a lot of I done it, it's it's all the work that was put in so you know it's all the the wins all the records all the finishes all the bonuses and everything else it's just it's very thankful for um, the opportunities and and for the, the fact that I was able to accomplish all these things and for all the people that believed in me and the people that were there all the way and people that actually kept my feet on the ground. They didn't let me just like, fly away. Um, there are a lot of people out there that haven't even once anything, and they're already talking a lot. So you have to be very grateful. The words is grateful, um, and to continue to be humble and, and uh, uh, be very thankful for the opportunity and for being considered and 
Well, that's how all those credentials come about. Thank you. Hi, Holly. Hello. Welcome. The final of 26 fighters are going to take us home today. Yeah. Um, this is obviously a huge fight. You've been no stranger to moments like this. Just uh, when you got Kayla Harrison's name on this card, what was your first reactions? You know, I didn't Microphone. Thanks. <laughs> it's a long day for me, too. Um, you know, I didn't really, I didn't know who they were going to have me fighting I, we had been calling 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 and just seeing who there was because it had been a while and I was wanting to get back in there and um, you know I saw a lot of people getting scheduled a lot of the girls were already having fights coming up and I was thinking who else is there you know um, we saw 300 was getting full uh, with all the announcements and um, you know, I think one time in passing, uh, my manager was like, you never know, I mean, it could be Kayla, and which isn't something, I always kind of thought maybe at some point in my, you know, martial arts career that it possibly could happen, but really wasn't anything that I really actually thought, you know, would be close or, or really come to fruition. But um, when they called, and that was the first I heard of it, was about probably an hour before everybody else heard about it, and I was excited. Why did you decide to bring Chris Cyborg in for this camp? How did you find that beneficial, given that they kind of have different stances and different styles? Yeah. You know, having another girl that's strong and my size and competed at the top level is always going to be a good training partner. So um, it's obviously she didn't come in to just stand as a righty and try and throw bombs or anything like that, but she's a very well-rounded fighter. and. It was, you know, I have great training partners at home. I always have. I've, I've been very blessed with being able to have good training partners and a good camp and a good team. Um, but to have another female that's my size and of a, you know, a strong um, physique and give me that feel was great. Um, I have nothing but positive things to say about uh, training with her. And okay, well, so let's get this one out of the way now. Uh, Ronda Rousey has released this book and she's made a lot of revelation. She said she was concussed when she fought you, uh, had many concussions before. She should be known as the greatest fighter ever, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what's just your reaction when you hear this? Do you feel like she's trying to take away from your win all these years later? Uh, do you think this is accurate? Just give us your thoughts. Well, so everything I say, which I'm sure people will just take parts of what I'm about to say and make it sound how you guys want. But I say this all out of respect. In order to have a big upset like that fight was, you have to have a dominant champion. So without her being so dominant, then I couldn't have been able to have such an upset. But with that being said, I was the better fighter. I was the better fighter that night. And every, I mean, every fighter at this point, if you've made a career of fighting, you've had a concussion at some point. You go back and look at some of my boxing fights and some of the things that I've done, I've definitely had some concussions. Um, so I'll never sit here and use that as an excuse for any loss. And I think that it's probably just hard for her to really um, want to like maybe admit that I was just the better fighter. Was she so dominant and a good champion? 100%. I give her that. But she wasn't better than me, and especially that night. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, last thing on this fight, if you win this one, uh, spoil Kayla's debut, the division's wide open, we've had title changes, Amanda's gone, do you feel like you're right there? I mean, everyone's talking about what Kayla's going to be capable of doing, but what are you capable of? I'm capable of holding that belt again, and no matter who is there, um, 
even if Amanda was still fighting, I would want to get that rematch as well. So no matter who has the belt, I know that I'm still capable, strong enough, healthy enough uh, to be able to hold that title again. So that's my goal. Actually, sorry, one more. Um, what's your thoughts on Mike Tyson coming back to box Jake Paul? Um, I know a lot of people are worried about Mike Tyson. Some of them are saying, what about his age and stuff like that? But I think it's awesome. You only live once, and it's not like he hasn't been in there. He knows exactly what it takes to get in there. He knows what a fight is, and I love that he still has this passion that he wants to put out there, and I'm excited to watch him. I mean, he's still, he, he definitely is like, he's the fastest and most powerful at, uh, you know, being like a heavier weight. You look at his like actual like speed and power. Um, so obviously it's not the same as what he was, you know, <laughs> when he was in his prime, but I'm ex I wanna watch it. I'm curious to see how it comes. Holly, right here. Uh, looking back, I think before Kayla, you were really the last big like marquee free agent that they signed that was a female fighter from another sport. And you made your debut in LA as the co-main event mm -hmm. against the current champion. And then now Kayla's making her debut at USC 300 against the former mm -hmm. champion. So I guess, what do you think is going through her mind? Like, as because you're pretty much one of the only fighters that has done what she's doing right now. Um, from my mindset, I know the nerves that I felt going into it but I still feel them to this day um, because I feel like if you, if you really don't care, then you maybe you wouldn't be nervous and that's when you need to worry. Um, I know that there's a lot coming into it, not knowing exactly what to expect, but there's a reason why she's been at the top in more than one aspect of you know her journey is like, she's been in the Olympics and she's been in the PFL, so in, in order to be at the top and, and be a winner, she obviously knows what it takes. It takes hard work, it takes dedication, and, and she's a strong athlete. So I'm, I'm expecting a, a strong, tough Kayla. I expect her to be the best she's ever been, and I'm ready for it. You said you always thought there might be a small chance that you'd face Kayla, but did you think you would be at 135 pounds given that, you know, her career's been 145, 155? No, I, I definitely didn't think it would be, you know, this soon or at 135. And I never even put that much thought into it. I just, you know, sometimes I would watch and just think, hmm, wonder if her and I ever, you know, cross paths because that's happened a lot through boxing and MMA. I watch from the outside and I think, hmm, I wonder if I'll ever do that. And then you know, I did it. It's, uh, when I first started boxing, it's like, my wonderful ever fight for a title. And then I fought for a title and then three different weight divisions and they say 19 times. I don't even know what the, I don't even know exactly how many times I, you know, uh, defended and fought for belts. And um, that was crazy to me to think that. And then I said I wanted to be a champion in also MMA and I was the first female to ever do it. And the only, actually, I still think I still stand as the only one to do it. Um, so I definitely have that in me um, to want to just conquer whatever comes my way. And so maybe because of having so many opportunities that came my way that I wasn't really sure if would even happen, did happen, I think maybe that's why I always leave space for it. So I would see her fight and think, hmm, I wonder if I'll ever fight her. And was there any hesitation to take it at 135 considering you know, she's never made this, she hasn't made this weight in years? Uh, no, there was no hesitation. I feel like an athlete, especially a professional athlete, they know what they're signing up for, so I expect her to be on weight and be ready to rock and roll. Final one for me, two quick ones. Can I get your thoughts on the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Gosh, Justin and Max, I feel like it's just, let's roll the dice or flip a coin. Those guys are so explosive and, and can win in, in multiple ways that it's just kind of, uh, I'm definitely excited to watch it. And uh, the main event, I mean, Especially with the bigger guys like that, you always wonder if and when a knockout might happen. So I feel like either of those fights is definitely going to be, you know, sit on the edge of your seat type fight. Holly in the back. Mm -hmm. We've seen you get ready for a high level judoka before. How much different was the camp and the approach to the camp for Kayla? Uh, these are very different camps. Uh, their styles very different. Different stances. Different. Uh, strengths, di different weaknesses. They're they're definitely two different fighters, and so there's there's a few things that I took over from what I learned with my you know training camp uh, for Ronda. But uh, this is a totally different fighter. I'm not fighting Ronda. I'm fighting Kayla, and she has her own her own strengths and things that we needed to really sit down and depict and um, or to pick apart 
and that's what we did. And there's so many comparisons with the Ronda fight to the Kayla fight with them both being judo players. How much different of a fighter are you now from UFC 193? I'm definitely a different fighter now than I was at UFC 193. I learned a lot. You know, UFC 193, that was only my third fight in the UFC. Um, and I had some fights before actually getting signed with UFC, but not a lot. And considering that the very first time I even trained any mixed martial arts was for my first fight. It's like, this is how you get up. And I just repped that over and over and over. So I was still uh, fairly green um, with a lot of, you know, the clinch and groundwork and things like that um, when I first signed with the UFC. And I'm obviously I was training and learning this whole time, but I'm, I'm better and more well-rounded now than I was back then. Thank you. Holly, just over here. Um, have you taken a look at the betting odds? Uh, Hull, or Kayla's like almost like a four to one favorite in this fight. And nothing's new there. I've been the underdog more than once. So uh, I think a lot of people just look at it. Oh, she's strong. She's been dominant, but she hasn't fought anybody like me. And that's the bottom line. Um, you mentioned Chris Cyborg. I believe she reached out to you and that's sort of how that came together. I also understand too that she was only supposed to stay for a little bit. She actually extended uh, time at camp. Um, is that something you see happening in the future as you two training together? I definitely see us training together again. It was, it was great to train with another champion. Uh, she's like-minded. She works hard. Uh, she's there to be a good, a good positive training partner and the fact that you know, you can get training partners that almost don't want to push you or, you know, you're too friendly. And then there's ones that want to go in there and, and, and go too hard. And you're like, well, I'm, I'm trying to get to the fight healthy. I don't want to have injuries, you know. She was a great training partner. She goes hard. She trains hard, um, but in a good way. And with the goal of this fight, you know, not, not there trying to kind of get her own gain out of things. You know, she definitely got good training while she was there, too. It goes both ways. Um, but I definitely think that... Uh, we'll be training together again at some point. She must have also gave some good insight as well, because it looked like her and Kayla were going to fight in, in PFL, so I'm sure she had a good understanding of her as an opponent as well. Was there any sort of strategy there as well, too? Yeah, we definitely talked with them about what they'd seen and, and what, you know, just... Uh, I, I have a whole team. I've, I've got great teammates that have always been there. I've been with the same team my whole life, and obviously people have come and gone as far as teammates, but some have been there pretty much the whole time. And... Um, it was nice to have Chris there and just be, you know, there with as well as, you know, training with my, my other training partners that I have, but also just kind of coming together and kind of just talking about the fight because she had been, you know, preparing for this and um, had already done a lot of, you know, kind of scouting on their own. And I actually think that they had talked about an exact date that they were supposed to fight. Uh, I know she was wanting that fight as well. So, um, but, you know, she's... Uh, Honestly, I've, I've never really gotten to really get to know her outside of just, you know, I fought her, competed with her, and then since then has been, you know, some things on, on social media, just, hey, good luck in your fight, or just responding here and there. It's not like, I, I'm, not like I've had a lot of in-depth conversations, but just a little bit of communication. And, um, you know, to be able to get to know her outside of fighting, um, I have nothing but positive things to say about her. She's a stand-up person and um, a, a positive person, so... I think she means uh, well in life with, like I said, inside and outside of the cage. And just last one from me. Um, the division's wide open, and, and obviously a win over Kayla would be huge, and you know, there, there's sort of uh, you know, a lot of uh, opportunities after this. I was curious, do you ever want to have a rematch against Misha Tate? Would you ever want to get that one back? And I don't know if that was ever even discussed prior to this fight. That was a fight that we had asked for, actually, on multiple occasions, but... It just hasn't come together, and I also don't want to just go out of my way if it's not something that is ever going to ha happen. I'm not, I'm not trying to grab it, just something that isn't even... I just don't want to put all my eggs in one basket and like, get stuck on one thing. I, I want to go after who's the best, and so that's really my main goal. But I think any fighter, if you give them the chance to go back and avenge a loss, they're going to do it, right? So, yes, I want to... I would like the rematch just for the simple fact that I like to avenge my losses. But also, I want to fight whatever path gets me to the belt because that's, that's who's going to be number one. Holly, back here. Um, was it tough watching UFC 297, just knowing that you, know, uh, you have two wins over Raquel and she went out there and just beat down Myra? There's a lot of frustrations when I see stuff like that. Um, but every fight has its own journey and... There's little things that I've gone through here and there and, you know, certain fights that I've been all in or, and, or had, you know, things that have 
like kind of had you know had setbacks with and so it's frustrating to watch but it's always on me uh, I don't ever look back and make excuses if I've ever had something that you know wasn't successful it's my own fault for not preparing um, what for not performing uh, my preparation has always been good I always have the best teammates the best coaches and I'm always ready um, if there's anything that I fall short on I, I take full responsibility um, but yeah, that was frustrating. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going into that fight with Maida, but like I said, that's, I'm not going to sit here and make any excuses. And then to see somebody who I have been a victorious over holding the belt, sometimes it's frustrating, but also it's just a reminder that that's where I belong and I'm still in this game. So you can look at it both ways. Thank you. So, sorry, Holly, just two prongs off that. Right here again. Um, Myra obviously did pop after that, and the win was overturned to a no contest. When you reflect on that, do you like still look at it as a loss, or like when you process that, how do you go through it? For me, a win is me winning in in the fight. Um, it being a no contest, that it every fighter knows the rules. So when you get caught with something, that's on you, and you have to live with that. But I'll never sit here and use it as an excuse. But I also, um, I just look at myself. It, everybody's responsible for themselves. She has to deal with her own self for, you know, taking something and popping. Um, and a lot of people, it d depends on how they put it. It's, it. it's a banned substance for a reason. So that's something that she just has to deal with. Yeah, and uh, lastly on Raquel, um, I know you weren't thrilled about like the action in your previous two fights. When you think about maybe a third fight with her over five rounds, do you kind of dread that a little bit? You know, uh, my fights with Raquel, the, f the first one was my first fight in the UFC, and she was the most skilled at a lot of, you know, out of all the girls I'd fought, she was definitely the biggest challenge at the time. And going into that fight, Raquel can make, she can make a fight like messy. She can make it kind of like a dog fight, you know. So going into that first fight, my goal was to try and keep it clean and not get into a dog fight with her. But a lot of people are used to seeing that. So when they don't see it, they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if that, it's just not what they're, they were expecting. Um, and then the second fight I went in, a lot of what she was good at is being good in the clinch and, in, and, and making, if she can grab on you to make it, a, make it a messy fight and make it scramble-y and... Uh, kind of make it messy, you know, um, and I was able to keep it clean and dominate. So as much as other people didn't like the fight, for me, I was like, well, I, I was able to control this fight. And um, if you come from a background where that's your style, then it's good, right? You come from a background where you have knockouts and then you don't knock out, then they're like, well, that's not what I was expecting, you know. I think a lot of times people can go into fights with a, already like a preconceived idea of how they feel like a fight should go, but... Um, the second fight, whether it be the most exciting fight or not, I dominated the fight. Thank you. Thank you.